PKA 635. Our guest Nick Ricotta is coming, I don't know, hour and a half, two hours in. Taylor? This episode of PKA brought to you by Freeze Pipe and Death by Gummies, realdbg.com, their website. So check out those links below. We'll tell you more about their discounts later. Two great ways to get high. So guys, you filled me in, or you started to fill me in, and then I said, da, 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 uh, <laughs> on, on Finster. There's something troubling going on in Finster's world, and I hate that because he's a great guy. Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> He's a stand-up dude. Can you show this uh, Reddit post, Zach? Yeah, so apparently, Kyle has his own news, but mine, he is the first male to be banned for female presenting booby streaming. And the details are this. While fixing his bra, he was seen as prolonged touching of female presenting breasts. There's two rule sets, and Twitch doesn't warn you if they see you as a female... Or, or as you a female presenting as a man touching your chest is now bannable depending on how feminine Twitch sees you. Yeah, if you Art, turn Art, on it. the ad. No, that makes sense. They, they ban you. No, I, I like see that makes sense because I remember I read an article recently where a trans woman went into uh, to get her driver's license changed over. She's like, I wanted to say woman, and they're like, absolutely not. So she's like, so I'm a man. Like, says it right there. So she walks outside and takes her top off. <laughs> and arrest her for indecent exposure because get those titties out of here, man. And that I mean that I see that as a haha, but it seems like they created that's a bigger justice. problem. That's, hey, called that's called just, justice. That's called street <laughs> justice. Look, 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 look. You can't have your cake and eat it too. That's that's all I'm saying here, Kit Taylor. I heard there was a trans woman being discriminated against that around these parts. Look, if if you're gonna be female Western presenting, justice. you gotta take the good with the bad. I've eaten I, some needs part to be of every cake get, I've ever had. I, I, I want Fincer to get a Tampax sponsorship. Like, like <laughs> I, that's what I want because I've I've seen that happen. I've seen where like trans women or pr- promote um, menstruation, you know, pads and stuff like that. What? Yeah, yeah. But that's befuddling. Why? That's, no. Well, wait. Because they they don't have periods. Trans women don't. You're right. Trans yeah. men can. I'm on the. I I, I got. It. I had it yeah. backwards. I'm sorry. I, I flipped it around. No, you you're right. You bigot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, no, oh he slipped up. Cover his job. He yeah, shouldn't no, be able to put food on his family's table. Uh, actually, also, the, the, the fact gotta, that a, a conversation this confusing is required in our society means that we have it so good. Everybody always wants to make it seem <laughs> like the other way. They're like the downfall of society. Look what they're doing. No. First of all, I agree with y'all. It's nonsense. It's silly, Billy. <laughs> We're all just fucking playing along every step of the way so we don't get yelled at, right? Because I hate getting yelled at. That's all it is. It's the same reason I vacuumed the floor when I was a kid, goddammit. You think I oh, care true. if the toys get picked up? I don't want to get yelled at. That's why mm-hmm. I do things. Yep. <laughs> that being said, the fact that we can have all of this silliness going on and be worried about it so much, it means that we have it really good. Yeah, the really water's good. still it, running. It means that we're not having to go out and fight for our food. We're not having to go out there and like really fight for anything because we got so much free time and so little stress, apparently, that we got to stress about those things. And I mean that in a good way. I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I mean, I think it literally is an example of why of us because here's the thing. World War Three happens next month. Six months later, we won't be worried about any of this. We won't care if you're a man, if you're how you present. We're going to care how you operate that firearm soldier. (laughs) <laughs> like, I was like say the how same good thing. are you at digging trenches ma'am that's <laughs> the all the second we don't have enough food this is not a problem that we're talking about the second that the water yeah, stops exactly. running mm-hmm. no one's talking about dead naming or pronouns or we any don't have that. time for it yeah <laughs> we don't have time for it like literally the, there's not enough Crops seconds Get real. it's not even uh, it's not even, you're not even being figurative in your speech when you say you don't have time for it. it's like hey we got so much that so we, got, we got this much daylight then it gets cold you know how cold it gets these days since the clouds you know, it'd be something like that. Speaking of clouds, dude. All right. So the other Fenster news, I, I want to go. I want to go to the Ohio thing because I'm just, yeah, I, I've been getting so much Ohio devastation. Uh, uh, oh, you missed out the other Fenster news when you changed it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I want to go back to Hit Fenster and then come back. Oh, and hopefully, okay. this is positive news. I hope you led the destruction. The negative, yeah, dude, dude starting an OnlyFans. He's starting his OnlyFans. He's firing that bitch up. Um, let's let's t- make predictions on how much. Um, Dude, I hope his oh. dick is distractingly big. That'd be hilarious. He's not going to show his dick, dude. He's not going to show any dick. He's going to be in, like, panties and stuff and, like, showing his ass and thighs. And he's going <laughs> to, like, creep up until he's showing, like, uh, Until man. he's selling 
<laughs> man piss on the internet in a jar. Okay. There you go. There you go. It's like, ah, it smells like beer. So Gross. This, this should be safe to safe for work, safe for YouTube. I think. I think. Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he does all this stuff. I'm waiting for Zach to pull it up. I think he. Yeah, he does YouTube. Yeah, he, that's where he started. He's like, got like Twitch several is, big YouTube huge channels. on Twitch. Now. This is his OnlyFans page. Thus far, no posts, no media. Some... World's number one fin boy coming soon. So there go support is. friend of the show Finster. Yeah, check man. him out. Tell him good <laughs> job. Tell him p- horny post and say PKA sent me. <laughs> Twenty bucks so a month is no joke. I I guess he's right ish. I mean I don't know. It's a uh, he's coming in real post? high. Well, look, all right. So like the business model varies. Um, he's not your average lady who's getting something fired up though, right? Like like you would mm-hmm. start with this broad social media campaign yeah, and like lots audience. of free content initially if you were firing one up. But if you but he's already like this established thirst trap. So like I think he's gonna he can start off at 20. He may even be going low. I think I think 20's fine. Um, it really depends on his content. Like like it depends on how much he's gonna post, how often he's gonna post. And just how racy slash entertaining it's going to be. Because, like, his fans will love it if it's just silly, fun stuff. Yeah. And they'll love it if he starts showing a little bit more skin, unfortunately, for him, <laughs> I guess. I think he um, should play into the silly, fun stuff first. Save save the skin stuff. What he own. should do, what he should do if he wanted it, like, like, I think the deep end of the pool for him would be banging his girlfriend or whoever, like a lady, while dressed up as a lady. Like, like, be in his Finster character, which needs a name, by the way. I guess mm. there's Finn and there's Finster, her. Um, <laughs> I guess maybe that's the deal. But in any case, um, that's just, that's the deep end of the pool, I hope, for him. <laughs> <laughs> you hope? <laughs> you, well, I mean, you never know. Like, like, all you need is one of these Saudi, like, billionaires to come in and be like, I think you need to suck the dick. And he's like, oh, <laughs> oh, I don't know about all that. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> like, you know it happens would you be able to resist some guy uh, comes can? up in his bugatti fucking megatron suit gets out what of it your, and then yeah what color is your bugatti i don't have a bugatti and he's like because you haven't sucked my dick and, yet and then yeah right that's the thing yeah. i don't care how much money he has i care how much money he gives yeah that's an that's andrew tate matters. that's an andrew tate joke i like, would like, make I, him shower the bugatti color yeah yeah have, have you heard him talk about that taylor uh andrew tate about the bugatti thing I, I guess I've never. I, like, I'm going to get the story Tate. wrong, but but all that matters, like paraphrasing, is he was somewhere and someone was giving him shit about like he's got an oddly colored Bugatti, and, and they're like, oh, you got that one because you know this one is the good one because X Y, and he's like, oh really, oh really, what color is your Bugatti? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like that's such a yeah yeah. What color is your Romanian prison cell? Oh uh, no, that's <laughs> just mean. Well, that's just mean, Taylor. What's what's it in there for been, again? I, I don't uh, know. Oh, human trafficking and rape. Oh. Well, is he still? You know what? I actually, I didn't even. I I don't like burn orange rape, right? I like the car a lot. I I never thought Bucatti's look sporty enough. Somehow, like the front grill to me reads a little. I I mean, I guess it's functional for letting the air in, but something about it just isn't pointy, piercy enough for my that thing. The the look of it is fucking sick, but that burnt orange, imagine that in like hmm. white. Like pearlescent white, like hey. it would pop. Are you really? Are you, anyway, um, if he was having an argument over the color of the car, and he was like, "What color is your Bugatti?" It's like, well, I bet you got burnt orange because that was the one on clearance. You fucking loser. Oh, well, that's not nice. Enjoy individual pieces of white bread, moron, in your Romanian <laughs> prison cell. <laughs> Probably some boiled eggs. Yeah. Boiled eggs for sure. We'll no, see how this no, lands. No I, I, I've been finding it interesting what's happened to Andrew Tate's online presence, right? Because you go back, whatever it was, two months ago, he's king of the world. Somehow simultaneously canceled and one of the biggest online names on the planet at once. No platform, huge. He's somehow in my feed every day through like drips you know how, and drabs do you on other tell you people's how, channels. Like, what the Andrew Tate model is? He went and did a ton of podcasts oh yeah in yeah. one month and then waited and then everybody diced up those shorts and they exploded across the internet everybody mm-hmm. did the work for him it's a good way to do it i'm aware yeah so now though it's the opposite all the tate content i see is ripping on him he has a weak chin he does a weak chin is one where it's like it's a little backwards like people it, it, it's not attractive but it's not that bad 
on his worst poses, it looks worse than otherwise. You know, like I, I've been there with a double chin. Was my double chin really that bad at my fattest? Eh, on my worst no. poses, it was. You know, John Candy. <laughs> when I looked down, it, just wrong, it looked bad. I'm and say, uh, if you're gonna bully this guy for something, physically is not the root. Like I this know, guy's man. jacked. He like, also he's... claimed he was bald by choice. Now that his hair is growing in in that Romanian prison, it's not his choice. He is bald by genetics. That could he have meant that he could have been hair if he wanted? Shave. Could he have meant like, like like I could pay to have a, a child <laughs> scalped? I will have your child scalped, and I will wear his scalp. I have that kind of money. <laughs> that's like, maybe funny, that's but what the he context meant. was he was claiming he didn't lose his hair, and he clearly did. But you know how the uh, algorithm there works. That's yeah, not a guy. That's, that's ultra thin. Here, that's a black. That's a half black man though, so he's got different hair than us. I'm looking at a guy that's not bald by choice. I'm looking at a biracial man who's who who like with the help of a good black barber would like fill oh that my in God. nicely. Black barbers are magicians. They're it's like, craftsmen. It's like a cake building show. <laughs> a cake building show. I've been to a black <laughs> barber fondant around the side. That never because, happened to me. I, I cannot believe you went twice. That where is my fondant haircut? <laughs> how, do you, how do you go into a black barber shop the first time with that fucking candy stripe thing spinning outside and you go in and it's a bunch of black guys and then you do it again? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you get the they're all in there eating hot wings and shit, licking their fingers, looking at Taylor. Their you make a mistake one time, there. it's an anecdotal evidence. You do it twice, it's a scientific experiment. That's why <laughs> I needed a, a control. Experiment. Yes, I'm Bizarre. doing a social experiment. After this, I'm going to dress as a terrorist and throw briefcases at people at the ball. Yeah, <laughs> I got a hot take a on Ohio. Scientist. I've got a hot take on Ohio. Um, all right, I'm I don't know. I look. I think I've got as much information as like. A, fucking person who watches the internet and television can get can glean from what little they've given us everybody's like can you believe they're not doing anything i saw this post they were like um they were they were like uh in a communist society when chernobyl happened they did this for everyone in the blast area and it's like you know they paid their medical bills for life they re they put them in new housing somewhere else x y and z and it's like yeah well they were the, the alternative was instant death or immediate death more or less and then and then they're like what have they done in ohio five dollars per resident so, all right first of all we're three days into the disaster in ohio second of all they is the railroad company and like, like how are you making this a communist argument mm. like reddit is just so fucking disgusting sometimes i gotta try to stay mm -hmm. away from it like some of the retardation mm. there i think it's chinese bots just trying to make me mad anyway there's mm. no american that dumb and we have terrible education so there's uh, lots of uh, that dumb. all of that being said we both know american that dumb Here's, oh, yeah. I, I, I always focus on. I talked last week about how um, that article in Missouri, uh, where, where they, um, they 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 moved two words around and made the article completely different because they mm -hmm. were they were like, ah, now they're going to let fourteen year olds carry guns in public. No, they're not. They're going to let. They're going to continue yeah. to allow fourteen year olds to carry hunting rifles yeah. on public hunting lands. Completely different things. Yeah. They're trying it's to lie with propaganda. Yeah. So when I see every single post about this thing. Mention the dead livestock and then mm. stop there. Full stop. Dead livestock. Move along. All right. Well, show me the cows dead in the fields. Show me the hundreds of dead cattle. Show me the dairy farms where the milk has to be thrown out. Show me the foxes. Show me the entire ecosystem that's dying. What did you they see show the me? river? They show clips? me four chickens in a fucking cage that somehow died. OK, I'll believe you. Some fumes got that's it. Killed bad. it from this. Show me. Show me some fish in a, in a pond. How many? Did I, how many dead fish did I see? four tops right like hell that's a day of fishing and i throw them in there and i i clip it real quick there, now i've got you, the uh, only proof of dead fish on the internet no I, I will add to the the dead fish thing like i watched a couple clips that just happened to come across my feed like it was not being like look a dead fish this is fucking biden's america it was literally like here's a dead fish here's a dead fish here's a dead fish under this bridge here there's hundreds of dead fish I, I watched a clip today of someone be like, they're like taking a video of the water in one of the, the creeks and they throw a rock into it. They're like, it looks pretty normal, doesn't it? They throw a rock into it and immediately, you know, the look of gasoline, the, 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 the like multicolor on look. The surface. Yeah, that yeah. lumen. Like, and it, refracts it immediately light. refracts light and turns multicolor. The whole thing is multicolor. Like that I it, saw. Like I, I think saw this is too. Like, I want to comment not on ideal. it. Yeah. I, I, I saw that too. And for all I know, it's real. 
but I don't know it's real. It is so easy to go on the internet and see this picture of a storm system and they're like, this is next week's hurricane. Yeah. Bullshit. That picture's seven years old. I've seen it before. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to go on the internet and say, like, look at this survivor of a building. Not that is not the earthquake that just happened. That is from seven years scary ago. Scary cloud. Beirut or whatever. Scary cloud. Whatever. So when I saw this woman throw a rock into a polluted river, might be true, but I've watched enough Project Veritas shit to be like, that guy didn't even work there. That guy, this, you're acting like a pimp and a hoe went to this office when really you've clipped together two different videos, one taken in your own office, the other taken at the Planned Parenthood, and the answers aren't even the questions that you're splicing in there, right? <clears throat> yeah, that... It, so I just don't know what to make of internet proof. I saw pictures the during the, like, people were putting, I'm almost done. People were putting bricks all over like BLM riots. You know, oh, look at these bricks the government supplied. Meanwhile, those fucking brick pictures are from like six months before the BLM riots and completely unrelated. They're not arming rioters with bricks. That's just for you know people to buy into. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I don't know how to verify all this proof. I'm just always suspicious now because somebody's there's constantly not trying to lie. <clears throat> there's not enough like evidence. Um, um, we do so know that, that what is burning is tremendously toxic. Yeah, but they're burning it, so now and it's that it's on different. Yeah, burning it apparently isn't isn't like making it just harmless campfire smoke. Like no, it's, still it's it, I, I mean I mean I mean the, the you know the thing you probably saw agent Asian science man say was like uh, you know when you burn the uh, vinyl chloride. Uh, which is, uh, you know, an ingredient in PVC, which is what all our pipes are made out of, right? Mm -hmm. um, when you burn it, it makes another chemical, and that combines with water vapor in the air and and creates acid. Well, nobody's talking about acid. Nobody said anything about acid. They're like, oh, we're poisoned. I saw a kid. I saw they were. She, this lady was like, his eyes turned red, and he started coughing, and we knew we had to leave. And it's just like, look, I want to feel sorry for these people. They've been poisoned. I hope they get every fucking dime. I hate when when that shit happens. I, I'm all for that Aaron Brockovich, get them all kind of kind of mm -hmm. thing. I love when a big company pays through the teeth. But I see both sides trying to politicize this thing, and I see no evidence that anything has actually happened other than there was a big old smoky fire. Yeah, uh, well, so... The director, Zach here, who is a better post than most Reddit pictures, a better source than most Reddit pictures, Mary Mance, the director of Ohio's Department of Natural Resources, said on Tuesday that an estimated 3,500 fish have been found dead in local waterways. Nothing. I, I, you, that was Actually, that's right where I was headed when I read yeah, it. That, that's very little. Fish. Is that a lot? No, that's like nothing. But well, that's also one of those things where they, are, they, meet out, they meet out how extreme things are sometimes. Well, where they go, you know, found fish might be indicative of thirty-five thousand unfound fish. I'm making this I'm, up. I'm sure it is, but also like you know how when these things happen, there's like always trickle truth. Where initially, when this plane or not train plane train derailment happened, it was like I saw an article from the New York Times, and this was after days of like largely not being discussed in, in the media, and the the op-ed was like concerns are growing over the potential health impact of the uncured polychloride or whatever the fuck burning and it's like and then a little bit later they release articles that are like new evidence supports this you know some animals are getting sick like before you know it they'll be releasing <clears throat> stuff that's like it's so much worse than we thought like that's totally possible Who's fault like, this kind of stuff is? happens all the time i don't know apparently train derailments happen all the fucking time it's just we're talking about this one because it's so bad and it, it caused a big chemical problem Mm, that's like I think I our railways are actually right. kind of dog shit. <laughs> I, I want to answer the question too before you go, Kyle. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Taylor said there were train derailments all the time. <laughs> uh, that makes me wonder. I have seen like three or four more train derailment stories since this one, and I'm like, is there a, is this normal? And we just don't normally talk about it, or is something wild happening here where these trains can't stay on the tracks? Yeah, I'm, I don't know. But you know, they know. make those train uh, derailers that you can just buy, right? And it's you can throw in a backpack. That's horrifying. Throw them. <laughs> yeah, I love that. There's that great post you see every now and then on Reddit, and they're like, something about gun control is irrelevant as long as as long as the 305 train from Boston travels at 194 kilometers <laughs> down the L pipe. <laughs> And you can fit Jesus. a train derailer and a basic human backpack. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's got a picture of it on the tracks. And a train derailer basically guides the train right off the tracks. It like just in, it derails a train. That's it's a threat to the people like Chiz. I don't like that. We need oh, to take that would, seriously. Oh my <laughs> people like Chiz. Yeah, That's train terrific. Terrible. 
yeah, if you're trying to pull one of those, you know, that was the whole premise in uh, uh, Unbreakable, right? The whole train derailment thing. Um, well, I, I, I saw the, the multiple train derailments too. I don't know. None of them. I, I, it's weird that things like that pop up. Um, I think the, the news media becomes hyper focused on anything like that. And some, I, I don't know. I didn't, in the other train derailments, here's the thing about like internet evidence. I don't just see an image. And then they were like, this truck fell over and nitric acid spilled out. And I've got eight seconds of video on that from a guy's car. And it's like, did it? Cause it looks like a yellow smoke bomb to me. Like, are y'all just, is any of this real? Am I in the fucking simulation? <laughs> like, well, not you wanted to evidence. ask whose fault it was. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like a damn Did, conductor. You have an answer? No, we, uh, I don't I know. know. I, I've seen process. two things. I've seen, here's yeah. what I've seen. I heard that like the Trump administration lowered regulations having to do with better brakes mm -hmm. on trains carrying hazardous materials. And then yeah. I heard the Biden administration came in and there were a host of Trump, like, you know, rules like that, that they rolled back, but not that one. So it's hard to blame Trump alone when the Biden administration kind of in a backwards way approved it. Like, yeah, that makes it's sense. It's probably just that our rail system is sucks and is old. Like, I'm sure, I, I'm sure that kind of that apart. contributed to what it. What caused um, it? What caused this one um, from all right? So I heard a report where they said that, um, <laughs> well, they, they said that one of the, uh, what do you call like each individual a train? On a train. A tie? Uh -huh. Like, like each, each a there was a tie? wheel on the train, a wheel, oh, oh, not a, no, wheel. Um, on fire as it was like approaching the area. And the, I guess the suggestion was that maybe the brake was locked down on that part of it. It continued to overheat until it completely failed. And then you got a derailment caused by something like that. We need to use nicer trains okay. for the dangerous stuff. Like if we, like if we need to ship <clears throat> saltines, throw it on a dangerous, like an old train, it really doesn't fucking matter. But yeah. this stuff, we should have at least a couple nice new trains. I disagree. I disagree. Did you see that? I don't know why Zach doesn't show the good pictures. No, you're right. When he, you're right, you're right, Kyle. <laughs> did you see that picture that was from an airliner looking down at the cloud? And it looked like oh. it looked like Saruman was down there, like you getting did. some darkness cooked yeah. up. <laughs> Tens like, of thousands. <laughs> dude, if, if that had happened near where they where one of those satanic abortion rituals was being conducted, Woody would start believing. It, it, I like, think I have to start believing. Look, like, like that looks cool. Like I, I, I'm not sure this hasn't been doctored it. in some way or another. Because oh. when I look at it, the tree, the the blacks are all smushed. Like if I look in the trees, it's like how? Why is it so black in the middle of that tree? It's like yeah, you've you've made sure the blacks pop here. Um, I'm, it doesn't matter in this shot, but in the previous shot to make it more ominous, I was thinking. But yeah, this is pretty wild. You know they they uh, talk to live there for a That's while. They had those containers cooking. You know, in the flames of ruptured containers. So they. They blew them up. They 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 placed charges and 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 blew holes in them to immediately uh, to, to safely release the chemicals into the atmosphere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. The atmosphere to to scientists like me, we call it nature's dumpster. Yeah, we call it. <laughs> <laughs> call it from which you came, garbage <laughs> disposal. <laughs> you send the evil chemicals up into the sky. God takes care of it, and we're good. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, how that's this it. like Nature's i'm no i'm no genius but when <laughs> when when i hear that a train car with dangerous chemicals is spewing stuff into the atmosphere my plan isn't well it's gonna happen eventually blow the rest of them up <laughs> like, Taylor, oh, that's where you're wrong eventually this is where stars come from eventually this will congeal and we'll have a second moon a glowing moon <laughs> oh, it was a uh, always sunny in philadelphia better tides right? yeah when if you keep going um, so yeah, I got I got no problem with any of this. I don't know. Maybe I'd feel differently using my back. <laughs> <laughs> this is fine. This hey, you know like... what? To each their own is my. <laughs> I just think it's being blown out of proportion. It's like who cares? Like 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 like. I don't think so. I, I, it, it, I feel think like one bad. of these happens every weekend. We get it, like, like remember when that pipeline got blown up and we were trying to figure out who done it. Yeah, uh, the Norfolk. Yeah. Uh, you know, we no, found uh, out who done it, right? I mean, they, yeah, they told, it was us. they told us last week, right uh, about obviously. the time that <laughs> last week, right about the time the UFOs and Ohio exploded, <laughs> um, yeah. they told us that we did it. Of <laughs> course, I, I yeah. remember reading that, and I didn't see where it was from. Like we, we absolutely did. Like from the you beginning, say that was no made... evidence. No, but I mean, like the you can just look at it. The statement was that and we had placed the chart. You can that, just that, look that, at it, make your own guesses. For here's the. I mean, I read it on the internet. And you, you can you can read it, like, and also there's like. You can look at that situation with the Nord Stream. It made zero sense from the start that Russia would use their 
their pipeline, they just invested tens of billions of dollars into a key infrastructure that happens to be their bargaining chip with Western Europe, because Western Europe was relying on Russian gas, to bomb your own infrastructure you just finished, which removes your ability to hold that over the head of a current wartime foe, is retarded. Like, no nation would we- do that. Who's the chief beneficiary of that? Well, if Russia did do it, what they did was push Western Europe into the dependent arms of the U.S. to, to you know, get oil from tankers over through us yeah. or to buy through other people. So the through theory India. is Russia's trying to sell energy. So why would they hurt their ability to sell energy? Correct. Yeah. yeah. And why it gives did them Russia cut their production by 5% then? Well, it, I mean, 5% is, is definitely not destroying tens of billions of dollars in infrastructure. Why, why did Russia... Well, Russia cut their production because the U.S. after the Nord Stream came in and is now providing a higher percentage of energy to uh, to Europe. I I just want to hear any good reason why they would blow up their own. They they wouldn't. It doesn't make sense, dude. The theory is that they're trying to break the will of Europe by increasing the price of their energy. So instead of turning off the faucet, they destroy their entire bar. It's just ridiculous. Like, it doesn't make sense. They also turned off the faucet this week. Wait, so they're willing to turn off the faucet, which, which like, reinforces like, that they would have done it initially instead of destroying their infrastructure. Well, like, the it just doesn't make sense. That, yeah, I don't know. It, see, this is the problem. Like, if you ever take a nuanced position that's not, like, the obvious one, it's incredibly hard to defend. Often because you kind of have to twist yourself in loops to defend it, which is where I am right now. Like, I Yeah, I just it. can't think of a good I, reason. Like, a false flag yeah. would make sense. But, here, but remember what happened when it happened? Russia went, ah, damn it, why? <laughs> That's what they did. They didn't, go, they didn't like blow up one of our pipelines. They, yeah. They, they, but um, the, the report- We just did a little wartime we, attack in international waters, little, little US stuff. I mean, I, I, I thought there was a matter of record that we placed the charges and that Norwegians detonated the charges because they weren't in the, uh, um, um, the EU or whatever. Not the yeah. EU, the um, um, whatever the fuck. The European Union. Yeah, was I reading the funny paper? Or NATO? Is that not yeah. like an official release, like on the record? That, I that, that read something facts. about it, but I didn't see that it pointed to America. And I'm open to the idea that I'm wrong. Yeah, what I read was that America placed the charges. Like, like I'm picturing La- Lady Liberty herself wading mm-hmm. through those frigid waters, placing them, and then a third, a neutral third party in Norway or whatever the fuck uh, detonated them via a plane that was flying over. Or dolphins, wartime dolphins. Yeah. Oh, my God. If they used those those Navy dolphin seamen. Yeah. You'd have to salute them because, of course, they die from the, the poison of the ecological disaster. That how do you was... feel about how do you feel about like <laughs> police dogs being treated as officers? I'm fine with it if they wear a hat. <laughs> they will. They will. I've seen them in doggles and I'm and, in and a helmet. You know, that, that that's pretty cute to me. Here's my problem, though. Whenever a cop like forgets and cooks one in his car they don't they don't they don't go you cooked officer mcgravy (laughs) (laughs) you're under arrest you murderer they they go damn that was an eighteen thousand dollar (laughs) dog that's what they get that's what they do (laughs) but if you if you fucking throw a right cross at cujo because he's eating your ankle you have assaulted a police officer you can't have it both ways barney having their cake and eating it keenly like this is a cop but he's not a cop but he's a cop you know like oh and but like he's not he's expected he's to ex- show any restraint he can go and bite your arm bite your fucking face off all the cops think it's fantastic but they're not really responsible for what the dog does because it's a dog it's an animal it doesn't know what it's doing but mm. it's a police officer if you dare like push the dog off of you now you're resisting a mauling or something yeah. that's against the rules but if they're at your house and they shoot your dog because it barked at them too wrong it is no longer an officer a civilian a person it's the it's, it's, it's a thing it's that's a civilian employee. dog yeah yeah it's a it's a the, the 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 government always gets to have their cake and eat it too yeah don't care for them i don't care for those government guys two thumbs down you know i'm a big fan i've always supported them I always will all uh, of them our, that's look, why we're such good our, friends. Oh, Opposite look, attract. Our overlords are looking out for our best interest, Taylor. So you better just bend the knee and get it over with. And let Officer Scruff fucking bend me over. And you're getting humped by a police dog and you try and push him <laughs> off. And it's like, stop resisting! Stop <laughs> resisting! It's like Christmas vacation. Best just let him finish up. <laughs> Officer Brutus gets horny this time of day. You gotta leave his nuts on or he can't run and he doesn't want to kill. 
I think they do leave their. Oh, it's coming to the time where it's time to 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 get my dog fixed. I think. Mm. Um, I got. I'm gonna see what the vet thinks. No, because that I told that, you my thoughts on circumcision. Don't circumcise your dog. I want my dog circumcised. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> he's a Jewish dog, <laughs> and, and he is going to observe. Look, he's going to observe the mitzvah, and that's all there is to it. I will not have a. Tr- a, a, a... <laughs> Which dog are we talking Toby. about? Toby. Toby. Puppy. He's six uh, months old. The one with the metal sticking out his leg. Is he uh, already neutered? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. the, 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 oh, he's the, unclipped, yeah, not holy. <laughs> <laughs> uh. When you go, when you take your dog in to get him fixed, if you do, inquire about a circumcision. <laughs> don't put your name on, no, they'll put your name on a list. I can't do that. I'm on enough of those. I can't. I, can't, I, can't do it. I, I uh, but I think it contr- it determines how aggressive and how big they get. Um, you know how soon you get them um, neutered. Too late. Your so. dog's already huge. We're getting big. He, Big old boy, um, but he's goofy as fuck. Like he's not too aggressive. Um, I don't know. He sees the neighbor dogs and loses his shit though, and tries to get them. I but, thought um, in a play way. Don't you wait till they're full grown to neuter them? Am I crazy? I think that that's kind of like. I think if you want them to be more docile and smaller, you can do it earlier because I think they charge by the pound. Huh. I didn't know that. You know, it's we like got our old. dog. So th- this dog. You can keep dog. the testicles. We always do. No, there was something like called. Bar waste not one. Right? I forget. There were people in RVs that had like a mobile dog neutering hospital who neuter your dog cheap. And I thought, like, I don't know about this situation, right? Like a fucking mobile hospital. I, I was a little sketch about the whole thing, dude. They were great. These guys just neuter like fifteen animals a day, all day, every day. They're the neutering clan. This is like a simple tax return to an accountant. Mm-hmm. And this dog came in. He had one nut. He had one nut. The other nut never descended. It was somewhere lost in his belly. And uh, they told me, maybe they're selling, but afterwards they're like, it's a good thing you came to us because, you know, like this surgery, it's not vanilla. It's a little bit Rocky Road. But since yeah, we fish do it this out. all day, every day, it, like we're the people for it. Yeah, I had, I had one of those. Picture, I had one of those undescended. Yeah, with the testicle that does go all the way down. They went in when I was like two, like pop that bitch out. Really? Yeah, put it back I don't think in. We've there. ever heard this story before. I can't yeah. tell if I'm being gullible. I, I didn't know they could I'm do that gullible. at two. Definitely told it before. Two. <laughs> <laughs> they noticed that yeah. two. They're yeah. like changing your diaper and they're like, Kyle's not. I think it was dog. like I think it was pretty obvious that, that like, like, like but it Mom's was like, like but I've got a scar um like on my belly, like like above where the pubic hair is on the right side, there's like this tiny little hairline scar. And I think in there is where my where my ball was. <laughs> and yeah. I had to like like, like go, go in and like pop it out and then like stick it back in my scrot or like however that works. Dude, that's a good cool place for a, a I bet, I bet a when unibar. girls give you head, they think like this guy is this guy is hard. I told him it was a knife fight. Yeah, <laughs> I hope he's hard. I thought it was a knife fight. Yeah. <laughs> I got in a knife fight and yeah. I barely <laughs> managed to molest. That's him. what I say about all my scars. <laughs> any, anytime, any, 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 if they ask about any of my scars, I always say knife fight. That's the correct answer, guys. Anytime a chick asks you about a scar, yeah. and if they if they want to hear more. I don't feel comfortable talking about yeah. it. It's personal. Uh, you should have seen the other guy. He's still in therapy. I hear you. I'm more of a shark attack guy. That's my shark story. attack. Mm-hmm. I remember you this the shark kid. attack. <laughs> Dude, so many. What <laughs> scars are you pawning off as shark attack? <laughs> I got two on my leg. They look kind of shark attacky. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> what is that? Shark ACL attack. surgery? No shark attack. No, you see that jagged there? It's not because the surgeon messed up. It's because it was a nurse <laughs> shark who nipped at me. There was this kid on my hockey team, and I was like. 12 or so and i guess something happened when he was born that like he, he something got stuck or like they pulled him too hard and like they really fucked up like this area i'm pointing to like my right shoulder in kind of a swoop and you can imagine like if a shark were to bite you here it would have that kind of swoop down shape of a scar and I, I guess he was embarrassed of that because, like, he had kind of a, a fucked up, you know, ridge here, like, like a lot of scar tissue. And he just told everyone that it was a shark bite. Mm-hmm. And everyone forever, like the entire time we were a team, like believed that he was attacked by a shark and survived because it looked so much scar. like a shark bite. Is that the coolest scar to have? Like, like if, it a, a noticeable cool. bite mark? Like, like let's. If you had like a noticeable like bite mark like that, like where teeth went in and like like not that whole thing where like, oh yeah, it took it took his calf. That's actually his bicep down there. Like not yeah. that. 
but like <laughs> It would depend on the creature. Like if it was like a, a vicious dog shark. or a shark bite. If it was like like a human woman's teeth, then maybe not. Not that. Yeah, oh, that's horrific. They, that yeah. to me, that screams like, <laughs> did you get tested after? Are you still getting tested? Because you know, like every six months you gotta go back after. <laughs> like mm -hmm. it's like you might as well have been exposed to HIV as like a fucking EMS yeah. worker or some shit. Well be another be human bites you Ohio. in the wild. I would so much rather get bitten by an animal than a person. There, I've heard like, that. Is that really most good? animal animals aren't full of diseases that that can that are that Cats. go into us. They don't have like tons of human diseases. They've got oh. bacteria that and you get a terrible infection, right? You could even get rabies. The thing is, we've got great treatments for all of that stuff. You can get shit from humans though that there are no cures for. Now you got Hep C. Enjoy popping for a new liver in twenty five. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. It's it, shit like that could happen. So I would take a dog bite over a human bite every day of the week. I would take literally like the dog attacks me every time I walk out the door. And I got to beat him off sexually. So Kyle, yeah. let, me and, put, let me pitch this as part of the decision making matrix. Yeah. Present company aside, most humans don't bite that hard. Yeah. But animals sometimes do. Are you sure you would take an animal? Like you wouldn't take a crocodile bite over a human bite. Well, no. I mean, I feel like I won't survive the crocodile bite. I'll be maimed. Yeah. Maimed, um, yeah. So like, like if you're talking about that situation, like you see at those petting zoos where that fucking hillbilly <laughs> sticks his hand in one's mouth for minimum wage and, and ends up losing <laughs> half his arm, uh, <laughs> then no. I, now, I will do his job, but I will not let it chomp down. That's what I would do. Like, th that's where the, the, the way is. I would much rather, like, do his gig for an afternoon in front of tourists once and not get bitten than have a human bite i'm just telling you, i'm really anti getting bitten by another human being you'd rat, rat you might yeah. as well let a random dude blow his load in your ass on the street like <laughs> you might as well yeah. be a bug chaser Except none never. of the fun once some wasn't bleeding enough. gum murphy come at you that's a deep <laughs> cut by the way <laughs> yeah. fucking takes a chomp out of you you don't know what you have you are getting tested bleeding every six murphy. weeks for years now at least a year or two i would i'd be terrified if a human yeah me. Oh. you can i don't think like like you can get infections you're right from dogs but like cats, you can get that toxoplasmosis Gandhi parasite from them, mm. and that That's like other shit though. No, from like scratches, bites, like really you can get it from that too. Apparently, and, I thought it was uh, just from eating their shit. No, no, you. Well, it's best not to eat cat shit. Um, <laughs> you tell not to talk to me. It's best not <laughs> to. I mean, you're not. Me they removed it, it from the choir, the man. I'll yeah. eat what I want to. All right. <laughs> but it's like, like it. That's like the crazy cat lady thing. Like that's why, and I, actually, I think it is mostly through like their feces and leavings and all that. Mm -hmm. But I think like cat scratch fever, like cat you can, you can. Fever. That's that's probably more than a song, I think. Oh, right? for sure. Yeah, yeah. it harkens like, back to the the olden days where people would eat cat poop because um, cats eat a lot. You know, cat cats eat catnip. That's a plant that grows wild. They eat it in such mm -hmm. concentrations that in their poop, it will have a hallucinogenic effect. So if you eat cat poop. You will get high out of your mind. But if you eat the cat poop of one of these cats has been infected by that, whatever you said, that yeah. parasite, then you're just going to get high. You're still getting high. <laughs> but, uh, no, but then you die. get even fucking more fucked up, dude. Not that's true. That's a good one. I, yeah. <laughs> what, what does catnip <laughs> do to cats? It's, it's supposed to like chill them out and make them feel really good, but I don't know the intensity of it. Like, I, I've never had a cat that I gave. Does cat it do into. nothing to people? Nothing to people. I've seen those videos where they uh, they use it on larger cats, like cougars, all sorts of like, you know, the bigger cats, bobcats, mm -hmm. lynxes, and shit, uh, with varying effects. I don't know exactly what the effects are. They seem to just love that shit, like it's like a drug to them, and and almost sexual the way that they're just like all the fuck over it, rubbing it down their face. It mimics feline sex hormones. Wow, I nailed it. All right, yeah, damn, right on the money. Yeah, they, they, I mean, they really seem to be into it. Uh -huh, and you can, you know? this says you can grow, MarthaStewart.com, you can grow your own catnip mm -hmm. if it's legal in your state. Why wouldn't it be legal in my state? I'm joking. I added, I added that part. Of the <laughs> <laughs> be sure to check with your local municipal police officer to see like, if Can I get fucked on catnip and nobody told me? I bet you could sell it to like retarded high schoolers that haven't smoked weed before. Yeah, for sure. Oh, that would be fun to go back Oregano. and do it. Yeah, with oregano or... I think I told this story before, but in my high school, there were narcs. Did you guys have narcs in your high school? I don't know what that like, is. Like people, like like students who ratted on... These students? are police officers who go to your high school every day pretending to be a student oh, and no. then bust all the drugs. 21 Jump Street? That's yeah. real? I, 
Oh yeah, absolutely. We had that in my high school. No joke. No like maybe. No, absolutely. This me your guy dick. went to our high school for like <laughs> half a year. Half a year. Got reassigned yeah. to a middle he school. He was so good to make him look younger. He wore Fucking like hockey jerseys and shit. shit. And he all, he he looked like one of those high schoolers who was like a little more mature than most yeah. high schoolers. But he also, I mean, he was probably 21 or something like he could. Yeah, he like fit. 18. Yeah. Ish. You know, and, and um, dude, the the charges that he got in the, at the time, I was like, whoa, this person selling fake cocaine, that person selling fake cocaine, this person selling real and fake marijuana, this person, dude, like 70 percent of what he caught was people selling um, baby formula as cocaine and oregano as pot that was like <laughs> rampant in my high school bag yeah that guy sucked, but not him but he doesn't That's suck like, nearly as much as the drug dealers at your school yeah. well, what's that guy? <laughs> one, if they i should found be that jail. out the new process <laughs> <That's> fraud. <laughs> Do you know how pissed i would be if i went to a drug dealer's house and, eat, and it smelled like pizza <laughs> like, I, would, I would be livid <laughs> could could i mean if you had never smoked pot before it could what people would do is they'd smoke the oregano and then not knowing what to expect or not having much pot experience that all act high, you know, cause you can people would it. smoke it. Yeah. And it's my understanding. I didn't, I didn't smoke. Pot, I, but. I would guess that they would realize they were burnt as soon as they got the baggie somewhere to open it and smell it mm -hmm. or take a decent look at it. Cause marijuana just look, if you know what weed looks like, you know what weed looks like. Doesn't oh, oregano smell. look just like it? No, fuck no. Yeah. It looks well, the thing it's, is it's like some a... green crumbly plant shit, but yeah. and if and if you don't know what weed looks like, then yeah, that's what weed looks like. It's green crumbly plant shit. But if you know what weeds looks like, you're like, man, that's oregano. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't fucking weed. Yeah. I know what weed it's looks like. It's like, hey, Woody. you're talking Nothing... to a guy that eats pizza 3 days a week. Yeah, like, <laughs> you couldn't go into the world of plant life, Woody, and find anything to get past me and tell me it's weed. <laughs> like, like, like and especially with it would oregano. cost you more to make fake weed than weed cost. <laughs> yeah, like, like think like, like, like weed has a very intense smell, and oregano has a very intense smell. Like if you're with anyone who's even been close to weed before, it'd be impossible to fall for it. It's, love smells are funny because I cannot describe almost any smells other than it smells like. Oranges. Yeah. <laughs> Do skunky, you know what that smell it's is? It's skunky and piney. It's those two things combined, and uh, and, and that's weed. W weed so is it, skunky and piney. Something about smells are just so identifying. But um, thank you, Zach. I'm with Kyle. I don't. Anyone who knows what pot is doesn't confuse those. And the same is true with the smell. But in high school, maybe you find people who don't know what they're doing. Well, see, you mm -hmm. just throw it in a bag, right? Well, I mean, yeah, like that picture is irrelevant because you know, like if you're buying something that. If you're buying something that looks like that, then again, I remember Jeremy bought me some weed one time. He was like, oh, I from I some guys over here that got some weed. You want me to pick you up from? I'm like, how much is it? And they're like, ah, oh, I said 80. I'm like, 80 for what? <laughs> <laughs> fucking tarred. He's like, an ounce. And I'm like, an ounce? Yeah, we'll get it. Because And I'm thinking like, <laughs> like, what is it, a brick of shitty Mexican? <laughs> he brought, he Ish. brought me this disgusting shit. <laughs> it was mostly sticks stems and seeds and like like i swear like that's all it was and trimming it, i was like i was like come here jeremy i'm gonna teach you an 80 dollar lesson here <laughs> <laughs> you see this this is shit the only way we can get high off this is by like cooking it which we're you know we're gonna do now <laughs> I said, did you make like can of butter out of it yeah i cooked it made it some cupcakes yeah. or i'm whatever. uneducated so that there is thc in it right yeah, yeah. But, but we're going to have to. Why is it bad for smoking? It's way, way lower concentration. Oh. And it's okay. like, so like rough. It's just not, it's not good. The good part of marijuana, the part that you, the flower that you prefer to, to smoke is the, is the flower, the bud itself. And it's like, you get all of the like sticks and stems and even the little bitty leaves out of there. You don't want any of that shit. And mm. even the inside of like, if you imagine weeds like broccoli, any of the stem that's in there in the florette, uh, you, you want all that gone and you want to smoke those like, those pollen carrying yeah, delicious little things with the, the nut on, on the on the end of the flower. But anything else is bad. Like if you're smoking sticks and stems and seeds, it's this it's more akin to like if you just got some shit off the ground, like some hay or yeah, something and smoke that. It's harsh and full of like you're probably I don't even know what. It's just nasty. You don't want to smoke that. To mm -hmm. like a random Plus it's weak. 
like pot dealer. I, I, I don't know how to describe a random one. Some kid in college. Plug. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> would there be like good weed or would it be a mix of stems and flowers? Um, I mean, when I was, yeah. I, like, like when I would buy weed from my dealer, uh, I knew like two or three guys that sold weed mm-hmm. and I had no, I had gotten to know them through girlfriends every time. And so like they had a guy like, like drug dealers are always trying to like use that to leverage into women because like every girl wants weed and they'll flirt with you enough to get some weed or a discount on some weed. And then the guys that are actually fucking these girls now have a drug dealer. So yeah. I would usually get my drug dealers like that. And uh, so these were like, it was always good stuff. It was always like, I would, there was this, I would have never gotten in trouble if I hadn't forgotten this guy's address that lived uh, like in the city in Atlanta. Cause you went to his place. First of all, he was Jew, which loved this man's got a future ahead of him. He ain't gonna fuck up. <laughs> and you'd go, hey, if we get caught, him. can you represent me? <laughs> yeah. Right. You knew his dad was going to like get us yeah. both out of this. <laughs> and like, like, Go up into his your, nice your name's ass, Jared. Like, Jer- Jared Baumgoldstein. Eh? Okay, all right. And, and like, like the, you got, go up into his very nice place and uh, and be like, so this is what you do. It's like, no, this is just for the ladies. And it's like, oh, he's just selling weed because it's a good social thing. It's a way to make connections and network. This mm-hmm. guy's like, he he's literally networking. was. He literally was in school to do like a cool thing. You know what I mean? Like a respectable career or whatever. That guy was, and and he was like, it was like Pulp Fiction or something, you know, where he's got like eight different kinds of like very nice weed. And then like after that, ended up with some jabroni that had his whole life falling apart, you know, that and he, but he was growing good weed in his basement. He yeah. was getting seeds from California Gentile. and growing like name. He's like, this is Skywalker OG. Here are the, here's the, here's the thing that the seeds came in. Here's the sticker. Here's what I paid for the seeds. These are my babies. And he's been growing them in his basement. So like, primo weed again but i have ran into those situations where usually it's someone else getting the stuff and they're like look what i got and it's like ah oh, that's so gross that's almost worse than nothing <laughs> it's like really because we're gonna have to smoke a lot of this like I, 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 I went through so many different drug dealers in college like there was this one dude who i like started talking about this reminded me of him this dude like insisted on his own nickname being kush Hell yeah. And it was like, at, for a while, he was the only guy who always had weed. And so we'd go over there, and he was one of those guys that, like, hell, he's the dude who, like, melted weed into cigarette carton wrappers to sell it to me. And it was like, it's actually more economical. And it's like, I don't want fucking burned plastic next to my weed, you dumb cunt. Like, that, yeah, same. you retard. And I don't want to sit and hang out with you and smoke out of your jet black opaque bong with water from years ago. That's despicable Dude, sounds, and disgusting. We had the same I dealer. hated it. And, and so many <laughs> dealers, like, it, it was so great to find, like, a good dealer. There was this one guy I had that he did not want to be friends or acquaintances or no. anything with people he sold weed to. Less and so more. I would just, oh, and yeah, less is more and bless his We're heart. Business here. Bless his heart for the way he did it. Because I would, he was one guy that I would, you know, text or reach out to. And I'd be like, hey, I want this much, you know, what can you do it for? And he'd tell me and he'd be like, what time can you be here? And I'd be like, this is, it. you know, I'd text him like 10 minutes before. And then he would like have it just sitting in his yard. Just, mm, just you pick like it on, up. like on his, and I would just like open the door, grab it, and then drive away. And no, it was I like that. Tremendous, tremendous. No, I like that. No, you do a dr- look, and like, that that keeps his ass clean, like like hundred percent. That's why he's doing it. You, on the other hand, still have that stigma. I'm sure as you're walking up to grab it, of like, hope they're not in the bushes or the trees or yeah. in the sky or. Nope, wherever. I'm just checking this guy's mail. <laughs> yeah, do you already have the lie in your head for when you get caught? No. No, because I, 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 I would have been like just dead to rights. It'd be like, what are you doing? And it's like, oh, you have buying to have drugs. <laughs> yeah. Like, like I would be thinking of like the lie, <laughs> like, like, all right. I could come up with a lie as long as I didn't have the weed in my car. Yet. Uh, like, I'm not sure the lie is the move. It's, I, it, well, I mean, yeah, like, you have to flee high caught, speed chase. It depends how caught caught you are, I guess. Like, like in my situation, I was just like, Probably should just shut up now. Huh? <laughs> yeah, like, Every doing? attorney I know. No. Here's the thing. When attorneys say, (laughs) shut up, don't say a word, right? Invoke the fifth. Don't say a word. Yeah. That's probably good advice for a lot of people. 
but is it good advice for a really smart guy? Like if it's Jordan Peterson, right? Here's a guy who speaks well, who's a smart guy. Uh, not everything he says is for me, but by and large, let's all agree that he's smart and he's well-spoken. Are you sure he couldn't do himself any favors when talking I, to the police? I, yeah, yeah. You're not going to like um, Picard your way out of this. You're, you're going to have, you might be able to influence your way out of it, legalize your way out of it, or good old boy your way out of it. But, but the problem is that everything's being recorded for the record anyway. So if it, he, there may come a time where he's like, look, you're already in the system, dude, even if I wanted to. That like that could come up these nowadays, but you're yeah, not going to yeah. be like no. See, the problem is with lobsters. That, that you see, you see, lobsters always want to go through red lights, and that's what I am. I live my life like a, you're not going to get out of this shit by talking about your serotonin levels or how like you know. Oh the, yeah, the, the, the cop doesn't. <laughs> you 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 have to. You could try a Jedi like you don't want to arrest me. <laughs> <laughs> I so don't it, smell like weed. But you could be like, are you Brendan? Aren't you Davy's brother, dude? No, I don't if know you, where I am. Can you help me out? <laughs> like, if you know, you can get your way out of that, out of it that way. You can just be real apologetic. Last time I got pulled over, um, I was going way too fast, and it was while I was on like double probation. Um, I didn't mean to be speeding, but it was just a road double where probation. Yeah, <laughs> it's, was... <laughs> uh, it's when like it's when there's like two eight. There's like two different groups like watching mm. over you to make sure you don't fuck up. Yeah. And, like, one of more, like one group's more strict than the other. <laughs> 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 like, one group will let you drink and the other won't even let you do that. Um, but one, yeah, like one... y- you mentioned traffic in a situation yeah. like that. People can and do talk their way out all the time. I always do. Um, or, or I mean, I usually do. And it's by being 100 percent honest. Um, it, like, uh, when he pulled me over, I was like, Hey, what'd I do? And I looked worried cause I was, and, uh, and he said, you were going 65 in a 25. I was like, why is this 25? It's a two lane highway in the middle. I, I was like, like, I'm like, there's no way this is 25. I was like, this looks like 55, right? Like, wouldn't you think this is 55? I said, look at my license. I just moved here. Kind of true. <laughs> a couple years ago. I mean, the license is out of date. That's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I just moved here. Come on, this is the first time I've ever been on this road. Would you have known? I, I didn't know. I'm so sorry. I'm going to drive on this thing going 20 from now and flash my lights at everybody if you cut me a break here, sir, because mm-hmm. I'm sorry. But I didn't know. Good God. I wouldn't be going 40 over. Like, I'm not in a hurry. I'm going to Chick fil A. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I said something like you, that. You play all dramatic. Like, oh, Lordy, Lordy. I, I, I did not believe was, I was violating was, the wall in was, such a way. He was black. He was black. Mm. <laughs> you didn't do that that was that's gonna I, get me a real beating if i go what police show. like to see is i did it i'm sorry i'd never do it again this was a one-time error in judgment the yeah. trouble is that doesn't get you at it like if it goes to court uh, <laughs> that's not helping you well it depends what you did and if you actually did it right in my situation mm. i was absolutely speeding i genuinely didn't mean to i, I meant to be going eight over and i was going like yeah. 40 over or something 40 <laughs> whatever it came to because i mm. I, I could uh, like, like if I if you went down this road, you would not. I mean, obviously, there's a sign somewhere that I didn't I believe see. it. But like, it's like a big, straight, open stretch of two lane road. And it's not houses up against it. It's mm-hmm. fields. And they're like, yeah, this is 25. It's like, I think y'all made this for tax revenue, dude, because this is also <laughs> the way to get around the interstate. Like, y'all are fucking with me right now. <laughs> but yeah, he cut oh, me slack. Well, yeah, there. they did. And uh, I don't know. I've been cut slack a few times with traffic stops. But like, I think trying to talk your way out of something where you did some shit is going to be slim to none. You should just shut the fuck up. If you if you've got a DUI or something or you've some, you got weed you in got, your hand. <laughs> you got weed in your hand or something like that and it's your weed legitimately like you're just going to have to up. shut up. I'll share this with you if we can keep it secret. I won't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, dude. Are you even cool? And he's like, "I'm it's cool." It's not even that cool. good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, it's shitty weed, officer. Smell it. Dude, I met this like super cool cop once, but works? you probably didn't even know him. <laughs> <laughs> a cool cop would let me go. <laughs> You're gonna well, fall into that trap. Well, hold on here, partner. I'm a pretty cool officer. <laughs> <laughs> a, 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 if you know a cop, he would he would probably let you go. Like like uh, for sure. Like, like, and if you impersonate a cop, let me know how it goes. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Um, I'd pretend I'd, I'd reach out for a secret handshake, and then when he didn't do it, I would call in a fake radio dispatch that there was a cop impersonator out arresting and hassling people. Just press your ear like there's something there. 
Yeah. Breaker, breaker. We've got a... Yeah, just, 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 <laughs> Make up the code. Yeah, have an 1810. Yeah. <laughs> we got a cop who's seriously uncool. Yeah. We got a cop who's <laughs> fucking laying the shit and he doesn't want to get high. <laughs> wow, you can't buy weed from this college. Well, I offered house. to share weed. He said no. <laughs> you know what, like, part about being able to buy legal weed now is, like, just so much better than, like, the whole dealer thing is I absolutely hated through my twenties, how like drug dealers stayed college age the whole time. So like when you were in college, it was like, you're buying drugs from some college age guy. And then when I was like 26, 27, I'm like texting my youngest brother, like, who do you buy drugs from now? And he's like, mm. hit up this guy. And so I reach out to him and be like, I'm so and so's much older brother. Do you have drugs I can buy? And then we're, I didn't like that. Were most of your dealers white or black? Um, mostly white. Yeah, me too. Me too. I don't know. And I think it was just because of like, you know, like social circles. Like, like I just didn't run into enough. Like, because that's also a thing where you got to build some trust, but you got to know a guy who knows the guy. You yeah. Know? I, I, I never had like a close friend that was like selling a bunch of weed or I just would have went to that person. Mm -hmm. But you're right. It was always friend of a friend, some friend of a friend of a friend, some ancillary person who you're like, huh. oh, I can I can smile at this person's disgusting apartment for 10 minutes, I suppose. I uh, we were uh, we were all in my truck one night. Um, it was like me, my girlfriend and two other girls like her, her friends. And uh, one of these girls is like really well to do. Like, like her, just, just it's like mm -hmm. you can do anything you want or nothing at all type type mm -hmm. situation oh, in yeah. life, and uh, and uh, I'd been to one of her houses, and like this girl's like twenty two or whatever, and she's like in the in back seat. And I stop at the gas station, I'm filling up, and I hop back in the car. I'm gonna I'm asking the girls in the back seat if they want anything, and when I go in, and she's like, "Hey, look, check this out. Look what uh, I won't say her name. Look, look what uh, Jane has, and Jane's got a pound of marijuana. <laughs> a <laughs> pound? I'm, she's got a." A pound is this fucking big. Yeah, dude. it's like a, it's like a, it's like a throw pillow. Never have I ever seen that much before or since. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, the fuck are you doing in my car? I think I may have called her the B word. <laughs> dude, I would be fucking livid. That's an amount of um, weed that like they'll be like, well, you can't have this much, sir. You can't yeah. have a pillowcase full of it. Like you were going and, trick or treating and, 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 like, in Colorado. And, 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 and I looked at my girlfriend. I was like, did you know this? And she's like, and and think, great girl. She immediately goes in on her. She doesn't even respond to me. She just goes in on Jane. The fuck are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> she's like, None of us want to be in here with that. You've yeah. got plutonium in the back seat in the middle of East How Atlanta. Is it a trash bag? No, no, no but it's big. like a purse. It's like a little, okay. it's like a girl's like purse full. I mean, it's full, a full. Ton. Like it, it is so much. It's an amount. Like if I had an ounce of weed, here, it. I would like, I would end up getting rid of a lot of it because I could not smoke through that faster than it all crisped up and got dry and like God, shitty. Vacuum seal it or something, maybe. All right, all right Taylor, you're in a hurry. You need to smoke a pound mm -hmm. of weed. How quickly can you get it done? Do I, do I have? Any other obligation? No, this is your only mission. <laughs> you need okay, then I do an out today. I do an no. out today, easy. No, you have to yeah. smoke it. You can't. No, no cooking it down into stuff. I'm gonna use smoke a bong. It. I'm gonna use a bong. I'm gonna use. You, a there bong. is no way. Give me you a can three gram ounce of weed in a day. And absolutely smoke an ounce of weed. There in a day. must that, be like, a wasteful fifteen process, blunts or something. Like, to put it all in a trash bag and. Dude, that's like in your head. Dude, that's. I mean, I know this is hot box. No, yeah, no, no we, we all watched um the squirrel in SpongeBob SquarePants. You need a system like that. I've never <laughs> seen that. I just... need it. <laughs> SpongeBob, Pinky, Pinky. <laughs> I do that just for the, the people out there who are like, God, I wish Kyle and Woody knew more about SpongeBob because I, dude, SpongeBob references. I will have people tweet me and be like, I liked that little Patrick <laughs> line you <laughs> included. Like, it's just a little difference in like that. That's a line. Between the like five years of difference between me and Kyle's age is you it's not, missed though. SpongeBob. No, no, no. I, I, I've told the story before, but that was my tenth grade prom. Um, I woke up and that was the <laughs> first time I ever. So when was I in tenth grade? That was like two thousand two. So how okay. old were you in two thousand two? Were you was that when was, you were into SpongeBob? Too? I was eleven. Yeah. Were you? Into, is that your? Is that yes, like time? I, I like SpongeBob a little so, younger than so, that up to like then. Yeah. So I was being exposed to it then, but my my first exposure to it was this: waking up, 
so fucking sick and from from over drinking as a 16 year old Oof. at a place I didn't want to be in with no ride home and 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 some dudes that I don't even like like are watching SpongeBob sitting there and they're like offering me a beer and I'm just like god I'm <laughs> sick I'm I, I I'm gross cuz I've been vomiting all night oh. uh, I ha I have this heartburn cuz I was drinking Mike's hard lemonade and vodka you know yeah, I'm 16 I don't know and throwing up and uh, and I don't have a way home, and I'm still wearing like half my prom clothes, which are like uncomfortable and like sticky-ish now. <laughs> like from you know, I've been sweating yeah. all night. I haven't had a fucking shower. Yeah, you're I the slept night, on though. a floor, like and there's SpongeBob playing. And hello, guys, I'm SpongeBob <laughs> Maggot Pants. Oh, I live under the sea. <laughs> and I'm just like somehow that show fused into the feeling right here of nausea, sadness. It also had gone terribly with my date. <laughs> She had went. She had, she had gotten mad at me because I made a, a joke about drunk driving. Her uncle had been killed by a drunk driver like five years before. I had no idea. My joke wasn't even mean. It was just like, yeah, man, he's a grown man. Have a beer. I don't care. He's driving. Like the limo driver wanted a beer. Yeah, just, just a little banter. You're trying to be funny. Yeah. Our grown ass limo driver wanted one of the beers that he had picked up for us, and I'm like, it's a grown ass man. It's a limo. Okay, we're not, we're not like zipping in our traffic here. He, we're going through country. Yeah, give him a fucking beer. He just got us all beer. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> and she's just, eh. and like, so I'm not getting any, I'm not even kissing. But, you know, there's nothing. <laughs> she's gone as soon as we get back to the party house. You know what I mean? So SpongeBob is forever like fused with that feeling the feeling of like fucking so up. Over. I thought losing the date, not getting laid, much, not even kissed, not even grabbing a titty, like nothing. Uh, also, nausea incredible heartburn all of the worst feelings are fused to spongebob square pants fucking anodized into it by a right. goddamn that... mountain troll <laughs> and he never forgave and he never forgot all right Dude, like it, it, now that you're Can't putting it. it like that i'm <laughs> thinking about what spongebob is and like spongebob's laugh that like nah like must have been so fucking grating like waking up just resonating in your ears Man, well, I'm sorry you couldn't enjoy SpongeBob because of you know your date not liking your joke and then abandoning you, not even giving you any any titty grab joke, action. Really, you really know, inappropriate. Just, you were just trying was, to help help out the the guy who bought you beer, the beer uh, that would cost I you a shitty that. morning the next morning. I stand by that, by the way. Like like I was a grown ass man. Like like he was 30s, 40s, or something like that. He had just explained. Oh, I know what it was. He told us a joke about doing a line of cocaine the, as long of his, as his arm and then driving Britney Spears from Atlanta to Miami. That that's cool. what it was. He, was this a joke or something he said he did? Something he said he did. He was telling us like the coolest stuff that had ever happened in that limo. And uh, he was talking about like, like sex parties. And um, he said he saw Britney Spears. And he said something about her ass being fake and, and as well as her tits or something like, like he had like all these like dirty things to tell us. But one <laughs> of them was about how he like did this huge line of cocaine and went from Atl Atlanta to Miami and like one stretch with some celebrity or something. And like she hated that story, I think. Whatever. Mm. Anyway, I don't yeah. like SpongeBob to this day. I, I've never given it a chance. I'm sure it's great. Y'all love it so much. You don't need me to like it for you to like it, though, do you? No, not you. Not. Not. <laughs> it is. It's just it's the opposite for me. Like, I just remember it as a silly, goofy, carefree, no stakes show that actually had some good jokes, like had mm. some funny, like, yeah. jokes about implication about like, you know, SpongeBob being gay with Patrick or like just just like some uh, some like adult jokes thrown in, which you didn't fully understand at the time, which I've I been following the King of Hill uh, reboot over on uh, H uh, um, Hulu and mm. uh and I saw two pitches. Initially, the pitch was to age them forward about 15 years or so. Ooh. And so Bobby would be kind of like he'd have a kid or like be struggling with that or something. And Hank and Peggy would be, you know, like like boomers, essentially. You know, they, they'd be getting on into their 50s and 60s or so. Um, but I think that didn't go over well. And the, mm -hmm. like they, they may have reversed course to just <clears throat> abide by the current timeline or maybe skip forward just a little bit. But some people are like, oh, but that takes the wind out of the final episode where Hank and Bobby find that kinship with uh, grilling meat or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, that's the point. We're rebooting the shit. We're doing it again. We're coming back. Like, like, like stop yeah. pretending like we're not. All right. I know y'all aren't going to allow that that white man to do the Korean voice anymore. Like, we're going to give you that one. Just 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 give me the show. They better the let back. Khan be the same voice. 
No, no of course they're not. I, I'm not going to like that. I'm not going to like that one bit. They Well, they're not going to fire him. He also does the voice of like either Jimbo or uh, Mr. Strickland. Mr. Strickland? Yeah, I mean, I would be pissed if they changed the voices. I like those voices. We'll see if they sound the same. I, um, South Park's new season just began over on HBO. I watched episode one. thought it was pretty good, but um, the voices are different. Noticeably different. I think maybe... Hmm. Maybe I'm like particularly good at like catching that, but I I noticed for sure Cartman's voice is very different, um, and Kyle and Stan have more differentiation. If that's the right word. Uh, huh. These days, they used to be almost indistinguishable at times, <laughs> and yeah. now there's this big difference between the two. And uh, Cartman's lost a little bit of that. <laughs> like a little bit of that was gone, and it was just that. more like that. and it was more like straightforward, like kind of just a break off of what Stan sounds like, but with a little bit of and like like just not as much i don't know there was a, a difference in the in the in the in the sound of the whole show it, it sometimes i get scared with animation like that like how far are they away from just using one of those ais and just completely phoning it in for the rest of their lives some somebody Dude, i'd watch a one, show made by that unleashed ai i'd want to see what it came up with um one of the guys in uh the the 50 dollar patron discord um sent me a thing earlier today or yesterday and it was him telling me that like he had followed my advice and he'd lost a tremendous amount of weight and gotten in shape. And That's he awesome. was going through, but he, but the way he did it was he used an AI program that sounds identical to me to tell all of that to me with audio. So I told myself all of the wonderful things that have happened to him and I'm listening to it. So befuddled, <laughs> so befuddled because I'm like, yeah, that's, that's exactly what I sound like. That's really? me. Yeah. That's oh, the, the more of your voice that's out there. So, like all three of us, you could come up with great ones for for I people. Imagine. Like anyone on radio or podcasting, you can do a pretty good one. I imagine it's tremendous. Um, I was, but, but um, good on him. Like I, I was almost distracted by his stats. I mean, he'd lost a tremendous amount of weight, like you know, dozens and dozens of pounds or something. But I was distracted because it was me telling me through that goddamn what was it, eleven or something like that. I think that might be the one. Hmm. That's the same. I think that's the same thing that Mitty's been using to do his David Attenborough uh, voices. David Attenborough. Yeah. Ninety six years young. Hmm. That guy. I Is wanted to talk about the uh, the fucking uh, the the U the UFOs the the balloons that we've been shooting down because it's it's super embarrassing and uh, and they even asked at the press conference. I love that someone asked the question. And this is like three days ago. They asked um, that black lady. Um, at, who does the press conferences now? The uh, um, we're gonna be embarrassed if it turns out that yeah. we're gonna be embarrassed if it turns out that we've been shooting sidewinder missiles and chasing uh, with F twenty twos with tankers in the air for for dozens of hours, and and what we were shooting down with civilian weather balloons and maybe even decorations. <laughs> um, well, uh, I say we're all proud of the military and everything they do. And he's just like pivoting and like won't even like deal with the question. And then it turns out, yeah, that's what we've been doing. Like what happened was, in case you weren't following along, is like we had that one Chinese balloon that flew over and mm -hmm. it was scary. So they were like, how did we not see it sooner? And so they 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 uh, they changed the radar to pick up objects moving slower than 80 knots or whatever. They turned that down, the speed detection, detection part. And suddenly the radar grid lights up and they're mm -hmm. like, Send the jets, send the F-22, send the F-16s. We've got to shoot Sidewinder missiles at all of these. And it, every time. They're, they're, Have we really been doing that? Yeah. That's, that's really whole, embarrassing. That's what the last week's been. It, and the fun part was when they shot at the one over, the, maybe the Great Lakes or Alaska, I don't remember which, but they missed with the first Sidewinder missile. Those are <laughs> it's a <head> balloon. <laughs> those are four. To be fair, they're not meant to hit balloons, but, but you know. They, they, oh, know, probably, it better be able to hit a balloon, man. Like. It's like they're 400 grand a piece or something like that. And everybody gets stuck on that number. They're like, we wasted a $400,000 missile. Mm -hmm. Do you know what it costs to fly an F-22 per hour? I think it's like $80,000 an hour if it's flying. Like, like, I do that think that, that argue, the, I, I, I like that point. It's like, yeah, so they wasted 400 k Do you have any idea the countless tens of billions they waste every few months? And it's like, yeah, because of you know things like this contribute to that, like just just doing whatever you want all mm -hmm. the time because there's infinite money for it. Like super embarrassing. Like something China I don't understand is like China has. Maybe you guys can tell me. Okay. Like China has satellites 
mm-hmm. which are better than balloons better at, at seeing what? things at on the ground. So they weren't trying to see Not on the ground. True. Yeah, you can zoom in with satellite. Like they have satellites. Like yeah, we do. true. Like, you it, can it, zoom in. You can see stuff way better than like a fucking balloon up there. Like it's just why would so they do a balloon? To, so they're not trying to see things. The the satellites are plenty good at seeing everything. Um, they're trying to pick up communications. It's it's it, they're trying to pick up communications as they fly over in all of North America. And we're not talking about your TV or your or your like short band radio. They're trying to pick up military communications. They flew right across where the ICBMs are. They flew across mis- the Missouri base where the the B twos are or are, uh, are at are at. They're, they're, they were scanning and picking up military signals, and also obviously getting aren't tons those of satellite information. done? Like our military no. communicates with satellites, right? And no, well, there's there's radio signaling on the ground going back and forth. That's how we like do all of that's that's how we communicate. It's just Satell- such a weird situation because it's like they. Uh- they were trying to get this information, mm-hmm. and it was so important that we allowed them to go across the entire continent long ways, unimpeded. The fun part was and like, all right, so there's an island where they bizarre. launched these. There's an island where they launch these balloons from, and so we watched them launch the balloon. We were balloon aware of its launch as soon as it. Yeah, I can't remember the name of it. I'm sorry, Shinshang Island. You call Baroon <laughs> Iron. <laughs> <laughs> but but they, they watched them. Uh, I watched a CNN um, reporting on this uh, that that dolt of a woman they've got on there she she was like so well yeah you know we watched them launch the balloon we understand but like eh, what what's the worst that could happen he's like well could we guarantee can congress guarantee can the joint staffs agree that we knew for sure there wasn't a nuclear weapon on that balloon he's like well that would be quite a feat launching a nuclear weapon from a balloon and it's like you dumb bitch he goes well you just drop it (laughs) (laughs) i'm glad he said that but i wish he'd expounded upon that and said like Actually, that's the easiest way to deliver a nuclear weapon. They just proved that they can deliver a nuclear weapon to the entire continental United States and detonate it above our cities. They just did it. All they had to do is strap one in there. There's no way. They proved they can go four miles an hour across all of Canada and the U.S. (laughs) And we (laughs) apparently miss missiles or or we go, this is a threat. We're going to talk about it for six days and do nothing. Well, then the other thing is, like, as China's sitting there, like, oh, they shot our one baroon. (laughs) <laughs> then they watch us freak out as we like yeah. shoot ghosts in the dark and start and start adding up a body count of Chinese <laughs> baroons and they're over like they're like uh general <laughs> <laughs> was it just one baroon or four baroons and he's like only one baroon general and, and he's like <laughs> and they laugh in Chinese at us because we're, they we're laugh in Chinese at us we're shooting in the dark at like we're like we're we're painting the sides of F-22s with balloons and UFOs over here. And re- in reality, <laughs> what we actually have done is shot down like News Channel 7 with Rick the Weatherman Stevens' is balloon. <laughs> or we shot down 7th grade science project's balloon. Some you poor hobbyist just balloon. trying to They're learn. helium balloons. <laughs> you can just sky. order them. Like, you can go <laughs> right now and buy the balloon they shot down. They, said it, the size of a, they said it was the size of a car. Those are sixty-five dollar balloons, I and mean, the helium's expensive. But you get where I'm coming from. Like, yeah. like we throw together a whole swarm of these. Well, that's ridiculous. That's and that's then paint advertising on the side of them. I didn't know we were shooting down random <laughs> fucking hobbyists' balloons. That's exactly and what we were doing. That's, we that's were chasing brilliant. them around across the entire fucking North America, the, the North, the Arctic. They're up. They're up near the North Pole <laughs> with with stealth fighters fighting weather balloons, and then they're like, "Oh, there's one over the Great Lakes too." All right, well, it's we're so good at doing this stuff. To be fair, like it's kind of cool that like a weather balloon flew over, and they send a tanker plane, Taylor, and then they send a a, a radar jamming plane above that one. And then they they have a whole swarm of like support planes and stealth fighters that are all there to kill whatever somebody saw on a radar. It's pretty cool. I mean, but you also said we're we're missing with sidewinder missiles. See, I don't think that's a big deal though. Like like those are meant to hit like planes, you know, that are hot probably. Planes notoriously more static than balloons. Planes notoriously faster than balloons. That's the problem. It's it's a lot harder to hit something that's that's sitting there not moving than it is. it would normally be able to track the thing over time, right? And then it ex- the way it the way it works is it explodes. It doesn't like fly through, you know, the targets. It explodes. I like thought it did. Grenade. No, it doesn't it move. That makes sense. Though, I think right? you're wrong. Yeah, because you <laughs> you know what the you know what the most guarded technology of World War II was as far as the United States was concerned. Wait, you might think you might think the Manhattan nuclear Project. submarines. You'd be close. Well, we no the World War II, Taylor. You got it. Oh, 
Uh, the, the spaceship. We're gonna watch the. History yeah, it channel. was truly closely watch. guarded. If you didn't even. The proximity. Yeah, yeah, you had no idea. It was <laughs> yeah, the space no. shuttle that was the most closely <laughs> yeah, guarded. Close to, guarded. <laughs> to this day, Kyle yeah. doesn't know about the space shuttle program <laughs> of 1937. <laughs> you do. Proximity you do. Fuse. <laughs> the proximity fuse, which allows anti-aircraft rounds to burst in the air when they get near enough to the plane. That way, you don't have to actually hit a plane in the air with a bullet that's flying real fast because that's mm. like impossible almost. But yeah. if you can shoot a bullet up there that pings with a little bit of radar, and when it gets a ping back, it explodes in the air and bursts that, you know, millimeters thin aircraft uh, fuselage. And you know, there's a guy in there who doesn't want to get hit with shit either. Um, but we would only use that technology over water um, ah, so for the know. entire war, so the enemy couldn't uh, yeah. acquire our. That our uh, proximity fuse technology. They did find it though, because the the device floats. They didn't realize. It's not true. It is. I just no, no, it it's up. not. No, it doesn't. doesn't sound true at all. Mm. No. <laughs> Misinformation is a powerful thing. You know, it, <laughs> not today. And I'm, and I'm trying to spread some. <laughs> <laughs> I won't have it. I won't have sometimes, it. Sometimes you just want to go online and spread misinformation. You know. I, I mean, every week around. Around this time is when I think we all <laughs> around excel at that. Around 8 p.m. I'd like to get on in here and get started on it. Yeah. That's such a funny thing with like doing a show like this is just like something will come up and it's like, all right, I, I need to have some kind of fucking take on this. <laughs> like Other than like, yeah, that's fine. Like, <laughs> right, or whatever. I, no, I, I have strong opinions about all these things. I usually like so, some, I won't always give my real opinion. I usually go to the opposite, but, uh, but, I, <laughs> but like I watch enough news throughout the day that, that I just actually get upset by it. Um, I, I didn't used to, I got to stop doing it. I got to yeah, get you away quit. from the you, news. You can't let that negativity run riot in you, man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta just focus on positive things. The They're NHL, also stupid. build orders for age of empires too. All Dude. sorts of things like that. Got two wins in the one v one ranked ladder. I'm an epic Dude, god of gaming get, now. How many losses? Act, I'm actually two and zero oh in one v ones. I've only Whoa. played two. <laughs> yeah, no, two wins. You need context for that. Really, yeah. <laughs> that could be terrible. <laughs> you got to play a only, game from this decade. Only four hundred tries. Would, it, it kills me, Kyle, because I know you'd have so much fun playing with us. Vovity's Are you loving it. Me? He's I getting downloaded into it. it. I've been playing all week. It sucks. No, you haven't. Jump of in with us. Of course I have. No. No, you haven't been playing. You you fibber. Yeah. <laughs> but I would mm -hmm. it'd be fun. I like the I like the Chinese with the um do you start with more villagers or fewer? You do start with balloons. God damn, mm -hmm. you actually did download it. Yeah, don't I think, I think the don't arms don't, give like plus fifty as well. Nope. He no, watched the video. Aztecs. He watched a video. He I watched 50 videos, yeah. Woody. Mm. That's the start. I'm trying to <laughs> keep you not downloading. Mean. That's how you should start. Oh, it's I, downloaded. I've got it. I've been playing. I, I'm still loving that if you are playing at all, Mike, then play with us. But like See, if I did that, I'd be rewarding bad behavior. It it you know, I can't do it. <laughs> Play a modern game. I will. Play a I will. Modern game. I'm gonna buy. I'm buying Warhammer 40k, and I'm gonna play that with you, and and I, I will have fun with that, and you'll have fun playing AOE 2 with us. You'll get. You're naturally good at games, dude. You'll pick it up quickly. Yeah, it, that's a bad one, though. That one's. It, that's, that's it is the one. most complicated just, RTS oh, out there. It's so. Scary. And that's why it's I, I want to play. I want to play a modern RTS. Like I, I, I didn't watch it, but a YouTube video got pushed to me yesterday, and it was like three amazing rts games for 2023 and i was like yeah exactly that's what i want to play i want to play the new thing i want to play like the cutting edge thing that like has a player base that hasn't been grinding for a decade too see that's the thing that i try to avoid as well is jumping no. into games with those battle hardened player bases xbox. jumping into call of duty uh it, it is is a little ridiculous these days xbox no it, I mean, aoe2 just released on xbox oh, I'm aware. so there they, is an enormous you know, influx right now of noobs that are playing Actually, and it's oh, did you ever get your did you ever get your pc it did yeah it arrived today i just got it i today I yeah <laughs> yeah it just showed up i'm look i haven't even un like, taken it out of the box i just well, got good it. for you good yeah. for you jesus it took months so it, long. Like, it took it took a literal month yeah glad good thing you yeah. paid for the no rush shipping <laughs> yeah i paid for the, the take your time shipping apparently the no they rush must, you do they pay you. you they pay you 150 dollars <laughs> yeah this is called fuck off shipping you know Jesus. and it you know you don't but get that's it cool age of empires is going to look so similar to how it does on your old one well see AO can play on anything <laughs> i just like it because i, I love play strength. anything i play on my phone yeah you can play on your phone you'll you'll dude you know what 
I I have been I playing like, like, yeah. a buddy of mine. Like that's yeah, yeah. Game. No, I ported it to a pregnancy test. And I play on that. <laughs> it doesn't take a lot of computational power. Dude, this this is like, you know, when when someone's like in those movies where it's like you're the, people are playing tennis and then the guy's like, maybe now I'll use my right hand, and then it's mm-hmm. like he was great at tennis the whole time. This Princess Bride. One one of my buddies, yeah, Princess Bride. One of my buddies who has been playing AOE with us is. Like has you know like everyone's been slowly getting better and better, but you know still not not as good as I am or anything. And just today, randomly, we have a chat where we were texting and talking about it. And he tells me he plays on a laptop, and he messages. He goes, "I'm going out today to buy a mouse. It's going to be easier to play with a mouse." And I was like, "Wait, you've been playing Age of Empires for the last month with us on a trackpad." And he was like, Pretty yes. Wild. And I'm like, you, I am beyond blown away that like you were able to play this game like that. I told him like, you're going to be like, you this is like Princess someone right at him. <laughs> you're like, oh, are you getting a mouse? I am going to stop using a guitar hero. Yeah. <laughs> you know, stop doing them. I'm sorry. pedals. My village. Uh, <laughs> put the dance pad away. Yeah, yeah. If you Dude. use a mouse, you think I'm still playing on a dance dance revolution pad? <laughs> you what fuck up? now. Just sweating. Oh, 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 I'm being attacked. Oh. <laughs> Just stepping. No, he's like what that guy in the Olympics from like ni- 1899 who was like throwing discus has made a tungsten like he's going to mm-hmm. be able to come and start competing in a real way that that blew you me, seen, my mind so so i will absolutely i will play a any i will play a ton of um warhammer with you if you ever want to play that warhammer three um or two if you have two and don't care to buy three i actually refunded three now to think about it i played it a little bit and i do this all the time if you play a game i'll figure out i like it but i'll be like yeah i don't want to play it right now so i'll refund it in case i just change my mind later I can always get it back, but I can't get the money back later, so yeah. I always refund right away. I just kind of want to taste. I want to. I want to sample, and the, and they just always give me the refund back because I've probably bought three thousand dollars worth of games from them over the years. <laughs> Fucking Steam, uh, Steam sale. I don't know. Um, anyway, I'll play any amount of that you want to play. And uh, the the game that's about to come out that a lot of people I think are hyped for. It's the number one on the Steam wish list uh, list right now. It's in it's in the most people's wish list is um, the Forest sequel. The, the the sons of son of the forest or children of the forest or whatever it is um that's the game the original is of course the forest and it's a game that i played a ton years ago with uh with midi and all the all the boys and it's like a co-op survival game and if and there's a storyline as well you know your son's been kidnapped by the by the this ghoul on the island that you've crash landed your plane onto and uh, you've got to kind of Minecraft your way up through ha- to, to the point where you've got some weapons and shit because, you you know, you're chopping trees down. It's like, all right, three branches makes a, a staff, mm-hmm. a staff plus a rock. Nah, that ain't going to work. You need some rope. Now, all right, now you got a spear like you're, you do a lot of crafting like that, like common sense crafting. But the fun part is you have to spelunk a lot down into these caves into the ground to acquire the various items that you'll utilize to get to end game where your son is being held. Like, let's just, your son's essentially in a castle. Well, you'll need a climbing axe for that wall. You're going to need uh, mm-hmm. some oxygen to for go under that water. You're going to need some fins to swim. It's, so you're, like, going on these little, like, uh, spelunking missions throughout this big island, acquiring those items, and you go down in that those fucking caves, dude. And it's drip, 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 pitch black. Your light is often a Bic lighter. So it'll be, it'll be like, you'll be like, Ch-. But you know how those things are. They get hot. <laughs> <laughs> so he'll be like, ah, ah. <laughs> and all of a sudden it's darkness again. And you hear, you're like, all right, well, fuck. I, I definitely heard it that time. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's Mon. monsters down there. Be more there. scared and of like, the monster than the heat. There's horrific monsters down there. And in the first game, when you're like, when you've played a ton of hours and you've got all of the gear, all of the gear means you've got a shitty gun with three bullets and a bunch of hand thrown spears. OK, the sequel looks not only like wildly better as far as the graphics go, like it looks slick. And they've got I've got a really well polished trailer that every I've seen the trailer 10 times. And every time I see it, I'm like, fuck you, yeah, that eight legged woman. I'd fuck her right in her three pussies. That's so hot. And nice. that, but there's like cannibal ghoulish um, genetic abominations of humans on, on this island. This time, it seems that you're going back with like the boys. You're fucking geared up, Tarkov style. Everybody's going and ready to rock and roll. <laughs> and instead of like, ch- I'm sure there'll be some like clacking of two rocks together early on. But it looks like eventually you're gonna have a 12 gauge and you're gonna be able to 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 purify that island of its 
of its evil. So I'm pumped for that game. That game looks great. The atmosphere that that provides, and the, the teamwork that we can all, and it's sort of this ongoing thing. So like me and you could play for three hours, build a, build a hut. We go down to the first cave. We both get our climbing axes. Woody could hop in. Like, all right, Woody, you can live in our house. And, and here, here's some sticks and shit. You want to go get that cave, climbing axe real quick? Or you want to run and get the compass? All right, come with us. We'll get the compass. And like, it's this ongoing yeah. like thing where he can pop out, new people can pop in, and it's this never in mean, the world fun. that one of like us something like that yeah it's a lot of fun um and and you know the what it's not like a cod or something where you gotta be clicking heads the mm-hmm. enemies come at you like ah and it's it's scary to fight them but it's not like mm-hmm. who can click on their heads the fastest it's more of like you're often hacking them up with a hatchet or something and and uh, mm-hmm. uh it, you'll like rub shit on your face so you look like them and they don't they don't recognize you there's lots of cool stuff you can do it's a fun game i'll check that out i'll give it a go which game I, is i'll that have again? to take advantage of my new God, PC's is it abilities. sons of the forest or son of the forest um or or like children of the forest one of those children it's not of the coming forest. to mind right sons of the forest yeah do you remember yeah. that article you were reading with the the best new oh, RTS games? It's not out yet. No, that's why I'm saying it's the number one thing oh, in people's wish list. So this is a sequel. Okay. So I described to you what the gameplay in the first game was <laughs> like. The, yeah, and the cool thing in the second one is like everything looks better. The first one was almost early access, and we almost I was like, come on, I don't know about mm-hmm. this or that. But the world looked good. The world looked fantastic, and it looks even better this time. And the crafting is kind of seamless. A lot of games when it's time to actually do a thing with your hands, they're like, ah, look away while we magic up something. Mm-hmm. This one, it's like, like, I don't know, you're clearing the the little sticks and stems off that branch and like crafting your shit up and wrapping stuff up with a, uh, with rope. And uh, I don't know. I, I dug the first one a, a lot. It's a, it's a, it's really fun to play with, with friends. Yeah. Ads Taylor. Yes. Uh, you wanted to do them before the guest came. Very smart. What's first. What's first. <gasps> freeze pipe freeze pipe is first you guys has your freeze pipes you could hold up well i felt like my freezer could, i felt like uh i didn't want to have a freeze pipe in my house so uh, <laughs> no no i don't <laughs> I, I was more mean than woody <laughs> just, yeah i can hold on it's back as here. much as i respect freeze pipe and i'm sure they're inqu- incredibly high quality just didn't seem like something i should possess as a as a form of marijuana fellow <laughs> no a current marijuana fellow and i guess that doesn't go away. That's like, that's, I got that stain on me. Yeah. Well, this episode of PKA is brought to you by Freeze Pipe. For the smoothest and coldest cannabis smoking experience, you need a glass piece from Freeze Pipe. Freeze Pipe makes a unique line of freezable pipes, bubblers, bongs, and more that cool smoke by over 300 degrees. If you're mm. tired of harsh smoke, throat burning, and coughing attacks, it's time to fight fire with ice and try the smoothest pipes and bongs ever made. The secret is freezable glycerin chambers that come on every piece. Pop one of these chambers in the freezer for just one hour, and as smoke passes through, it's instantly chilled for a dramatically smooth and icy experience. Picture larger clouds with zero chest and throat burn. Finally, no more coughing attacks and no more water chugging after every rip. Just an elegant smoking experience that'll change how you light up forever. Start smoking like royalty without paying a king's ransom. Shop now and enjoy free shipping at thefreezepipe.com and use code PKA for 10% off your entire order. That's freezepipe.com and code PKA for 10% off. Order today and say goodbye to harsh smoke forever. I have been smoking a large amount of weed out of that (laughs) bong over the last week and out of that little piece that you held up. and. They're both fucking tremendous. It is that thing, like, like it, it's not frozen right now. You can see, obviously, because, like, the, the glycerin, like, the air bubbles moving up bubbles. and down. Yeah, you can see it pretty clear. But it gets unbelievably cold. Like, it's, it's icy on your lips when you're taking a hit, which is nice. And it really, I got accidentally way higher than I meant to because I didn't realize how big of hits I was taking because of how cool it was. So I give a full cool and calm throated endorsement to the Mm. freeze pipe it's a great way to get stoned if you're saying hey i like getting fucked up on weed but i don't like coughing my god a a match made in heaven folks check out the freeze pipe uh shop now free shipping at thefreezepipe.com use code pka 10 percent off your entire order and there's a little black 
piece of plastic that Woody didn't have on there that it came with. And you, you, yeah, yeah. You slide that onto it after you've inserted the cold part and it locks it together so that then you don't, you can like obviously just grab the top of it. You don't have to grab the bottom and support it like you're, you know. I'm going to still grab it from the bottom though if I'm carrying that thing around. If yeah, it's a good have, habit. Support the balls. Yeah, just, I, like, you should include instructions because once I figured out that this wasn't a dildo, I stopped yeah. knowing how to use it. Really? It's just, it's just, <laughs> do you want? Do you want to? What he's like? The big problem with this is it stinks. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I used it once and now it stinks. <laughs> it broke right that, off. That, you guys got to use tougher glass. That, that little one, like you mm-hmm. wouldn't like when I got him at first. I was like, I'm kicking off with like the bong mostly because it's you know it's the bigger thing, and also I'm like more 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 size equals more cold. But like mm-hmm. that little one has that little like you know pigtail yeah. swirly q thing and mm-hmm. so the i've got the for after the show i've got the small one freezing in my my freezer right now and that thing's fucking awesome is it the is big great. one also in your freezer the big one is not i i it's still sitting out from last night so i'm gonna have to do a changing of the guard so to speak mm. after the show always keep one frozen so check out freeze pipe <laughs> high quality high quality smoking uh, this episode also brought to you by RealDBG.com. That's RealDBG.com. Happy New Year. Or wait. Happy Valentine's Day. No, fuck. What's next? President's Day. Happy President's Day. It's Black History from Month. DBG. Happy Black History Month from <laughs> DBG. Uh, we're excited to announce that our hardest hitting Delta A product is back on the market. It's all back on the market, folks. RealDBG.com. They've gone through a facelift and a rebrand. Now Real DBG instead of Death by Gummy Bears because there's a bunch of a bunch of naughty fellas out there selling shitty gummy bears under that old brand. So don't get that if you want the real stuff. You have to go to RealDBG.com. Make sure you get the real authentic Death by Gummies. They're unbelievably powerful. These ones are peach. I haven't opened them yet, but they'll fuck you up. They'll really fuck you up, folks. So check these out. 23% discount for all orders placed. Holy. PKA 23, PKA 23, 23% off. Check that out. That's an enormous, enormous discount. And also they just lowered the price on their gummies as well. So I think they lowered their, their price point by 20 bucks. Um, I think they, he told me to include that last week. I believe I did. So if it was just a little too high of a price point, that was your concern. It's just been cheaper. And now 23% off with code PKA23. You're going to be able to get high as shit on, on gummies. And um, HHC? Uh, I I have not yet. Uh, he sent me some, but I haven't got him yet. But he actually included. He Those sent are me, HHC. He sent me to talk about this, so he he told me to include this. They are coming out with HHC gummies, and they already have the HHC cards. And apparently, you know, the HHC gummies uh, have have a little bit of a little mustard to them. A little little power. So the Delta Eight ones had some <laughs> mustard to them, Taylor. <laughs> they don't fuck around here. They don't go. Oh, are you trying to get a little stoned? Well, then take a little nibble. Like I, <laughs> they play for keeps. I haven't tried it yet. I, they've been sitting here on my desk since they got here, and like I haven't had an evening that I was like, like I wanted to be present every evening this week. <laughs> essentially, like 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 you know, like I want to have conversations with the, with people. I want to be able to like enjoy the program I'm watching or whatever. But it, as soon as I'm ready to like forget an evening happened, I'm gonna eat one of these bitches and see what's up. And I'll, I'll have a review for next week. But yeah, in my experience, these H I've got a pile of them because it's all I smoke, um, more or less. HHC in general. Um, these yep. are so goddamn dopey strong. They, they they make me a stupider human being, which is what I'm going for, more or less. I'm just so goddamn yeah. smart, and I can't imagine <laughs> how stupid these are gonna make me feel. Oh yeah, you know? HHC is. A real deal, very strong cannabinoid. Apparently, it's like Art. the. It's quickly becoming. I think already now may be the most popular. That for me, like, a cannabinoid. Of the, like is, of the legal state weeds. Can like you tell it's burn. HHC by that packaging? Because I've been yeah. taking that every night for like a month now. No, it, the the packaging is identical. the The difference is going to be the HHC stamp right here. Uh, you're. That presumes that I read labels before I eat. Yeah, you'll need to read, <laughs> um, sir. Um, I might be in for a surprise. Like, I, I, yeah, I could totally see myself just dumping that one in because it looks like the others. <laughs> well, we don't know what it's yeah. uh, what the difference is yet. I will say that mm. there's a massive. It is difference more powerful between Delta Eight vapes, HHC vapes, but now we're talking about edibles, and that's always just. Uh, I'm gonna find out. I'll let y'all got. I'll let y'all know next yeah. week. Mm. I, I saw a few people um, in Discord got it. We were like exchanging pictures of these jars 
Um, it's just so much in one jar, man. It's 20. Yeah, there's 2,500 20 milligrams here. He, you know, the, you know, Cy, the guy, shout out, Cy, the guy I talked to from there, uh, Real DBG, he asked me, he was like, hey, go, like, go buy some edibles at, like, a dispensary, just, like, whatever their most popular ones are. Take some and, like, tell me, like, how they compare in power and, like, price point to what we do. market research. Um, I don't compare. It is an absolute... I, I tried some like like 10 milligram each edibles that you get like from the dispensary. You cannot go back from these like powerful ass gummies. Like these, these real, like real THC ones, these are a fucking joke. These are, I took, like I haven't taken a regular THC edible in a long time. I took 20 milligrams just to see, just to see what was up. I, I could only tell I was like getting high and like got high because I was like looking for it. Like that's how week it was in comparison to so so i guess i didn't message him this but yeah these are way fucking stronger and these this is 2500 milligrams and it was cheaper than the total 100 milligrams that like another i bought thing, at or that was the same price another thing i would mention about those gummies um in my experience that's kind of unique to them is they're faster acting than a traditional edible mm. um i always the two hour rule is always has always been so like precise for me when mm-hmm. eating edibles it, it's almost like magical it's like wow like two hours and two minutes or like an hour and 59 minutes that's when it kicked in weird mm-hmm. with these it's like i mean 20 minutes later i'm like feeling a little relaxed and a little something going on it's like that first beer buzz kind of thing going yeah. on and then you just kind of slide <laughs> and the next thing you know you're sitting there like holding your phone and it's died on you <laughs> dude i'll do that like i i, I was sitting watching that god awful show the other week banshee and which i re- retracted my endorsement of and i remember i was sitting down and i was like just stoned as shit and i went to pick up an empty an empty diet pepsi and like and i was like oh i'm out of diet pepsi oh i'm so thirsty and i just kept sitting there for like 30 more minutes i was so cooked out of my mind until i was like oh oh yeah uh thirsty thirst thirsty yeah i'll top up and get myself another soda it it puts you on the moon like you don't fuck around with them we're not joking about it to sell more gummies um take advantage of it make them last a long these if you have a low tolerance these will last you fucking forever so take advantage of that and I think that's it. That's oh, and lock, lock and load. load. Yeah. You know what you're gonna want to do when you're high as shit, smoking out of a freeze pipe and taking de- and real DBG and stir, just shake it on. You're Twitch. gonna want to come. You're gonna want to. Uh, you're gonna want to masturbate, and you want to you impress want to yourself. Yes, and so what you're gonna well, want you're gonna is wanna lock send and load. Those, those little everyone tributes. knows. Everyone knows that being high <laughs> makes your orgasm better. It's common knowledge. Everyone knows. When I want to bust a nut, I get stoned as shit. Ask anyone. Talk to anyone about it. It's and this is what well that's not uh, and with this voice then <laughs> who who who's my, hey i'm bill clinton and i smoke and i endorse uh, uh obama lock and lock. barack obama no. inhaled you go I, all the way I mean, what, does, mm. what does obama sound like uh don't really remember lock and load is uh, uh it's the finest cum pill uh, <laughs> you, you've, you've ever seen uh, people uh, people people talking about it people are saying wait wait is, is he lower is he down in you got to lose the vocal he? fry. Where the? I thought he had a. You know, you're right. You have to lose the vocal fry. It you depends to, who he's to, talking. To. See, there's fuck. multiple Obamas. Is it one of the things that makes Obama different is he slides into kind of a country slangy thing sometimes, like Bill Clinton would. But when he's when he's talking to white people, he does he loses the vocal fry entirely, and he's very crisp and well spoken, as Joe Biden likes to say. Articulate, maybe. But Anyone who knows me knows how much I like to come. <laughs> Lock and load is the official cum supplement of Barack Hussein Obama. And it is a... <laughs> I don't think, no, it's not. I don't think we can legally say that, so it is not. <laughs> he is in no way affiliated with, with this bad impression or this cum supplement. So check out lock and load, code PKA, code JIZ. Uh, bust like the 44th president of the United <laughs> States. Uh, lock and load. What was there's he? a non-zero yeah, chance Obama takes lock and load? That's true. <clears throat> yeah, you can't disprove that. No <laughs> if you would like some, the link is below. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the link is below. Obama, if you need it, you I'll never get tired of that little joke. <laughs> <laughs> so um, code PK code Jizz, and also pre workouts, protein, everything else oh, on Derek's yeah, site. Code PK oh. and code Jizz works for all of that stuff as well. 
Speaking of protein powder, um, mm. after uh, a couple weeks ago, the United States, of course, struck Turkey with their uh, seismic weapon um, mm-hmm. <laughs> to destabilize slash to destabilize the region and stabilize the world, which is our mission. As far as I'm concerned, that's oh, that you should say that on the side of every you know how the cops have protect and serve. But on the side of the naval like uh, aircraft carriers, it's just say to destabilize and and guard or some shit like that. That's all we fucking do. <laughs> and control. Um, to, to I lie control, and destroy. <laughs> to to influence and uh, and deceive. Yeah. So so after so I saw that two brothers survived nine days trapped in a crushed building on their urine and protein powder. Here's the question, Taylor. So, do you mix the urine with the protein powder and make a little shake? Or do you eat little handfuls of it and then power it down with a little bit of piss? I, the last thing you want to be doing is coughing in there. It's going to be dusty enough. So I would say use the That's piss to kind of get... That's a ridiculous reason. Well, you, you want to be trapped in rubble like this eating... <laughs> like you, you're tra- not going to be able to keep it down. You're okay, already remove that, remove that from the equation. We have a dust-free environment. I'm still going piss. Mixing. You're making yeah. a piss shake. Yeah, because I don't want to, like, I would rather drink a, a worse tasting vanilla or chocolate shake than just piss and eat powder. I'll tell you what I'd do. I'd mm. try the shake with you at first to see, like, how much of the piss taste the, the protein powder is able to disguise. I'm not sharing my piss with you. It'd be, you'd have to put no, some in also. W- no, no, no. What? We'll make separate piss shakes. Like, I'm. we don't yeah. need to share. There's two cups. We There's should probably shakers. drink each other's piss. I don't think you're supposed to drink your own piss. What how mad would you be if I had been if I straight from the tap? I've been drinking nothing but espressos and Coca Colas. <laughs> <laughs> and you're up there like you're on a cleanse or some shit. You're drinking the sunny water. You're you're oh. like unbelievably hungover or something like that. It's coming out like Fanta. Taylor, Taylor, orange. Taylor, Taylor, you don't need to mix in protein power if you drink my semen. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. You're pissed. You're pissed right, in the I'll take these two. It's like, <laughs> oh, it cost me more calories to beat you off than I got. <laughs> this was a horrible trade. One of the worst trade deals in the history of trade deals. I'm over here, Tom Sawyer. <laughs> like, you'll you love it. Your, it's fun. Yeah. You hand me your little cup of piss, and I have to like knock the head of it off like a beer. <laughs> <laughs> you just pick up a piece of debris and <laughs> the top of like, it. Like we're in an Irish pub. <laughs> like an Irish pub. <laughs> Just pretend we're in Dublin, just like cramp, drinking no, the smelly I, piss. Dude, I'd if Damn, I, weather okay. If I Derek should reach out to those guys and and, and like, like like I would want them like pimping my product like like yeah. on TikTok and like talking about how they survived thanks to that that protein powder. No, I or, thought that was knowing awesome. Derek, he'd be like Little known fact, ammonia present actually makes the protein less bioavailable. Let's go through. <laughs> and it's like, you know. <laughs> that earthquake's wild, dude. Um, hey, I've, the most interesting thing, maybe interesting is not the right word. The craziest thing is how they've been dealing with looters in, in the earthquake region. Now, just for context, accor- according to my research, these looters will do things like set up ambushes for the aid vehicles that are coming in. And they'll like take everything they've got, uh, maybe even assault and kill people, rob them of everything they got, and then turn around and sell the things that were there for as like humanitarian aid to the poor people who just had their homes yeah. uh, taken out. Lots of like raping and like sexual assault as well. But um, they talked about how they would cut fingers off to get to people's rings, dig gold out of people's teeth, things like that to bodies they'd found. Well, anyway. They do not take that shit kindly over there. I thought it was bad in Ukraine when they caught those looters last year and they were whipping their asses red in the mm-hmm. streets. They beat the dog shit out of you in Turkey. These get these grown men are on the ground trembling from like fear. And this guy, one of them, the guy's got a belt. I've seen like eight separate videos, but one he's got like a, he's taking his belt off and he is whipping these three men like down and up backstrokes and four strokes <laughs> wow 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 and these guys are just like trying to shield themselves and like that just makes them matter and then like i saw another one where they've got like batons that bend just a little just a little baton but, yeah, but they just look enough heavy. to not upset their wrists so they can keep it yeah in. Yeah, and they're beating them so mercilessly, like kicking them in the faces over and over and over. And these men are just beaten half conscious, and they're all screaming, half naked, bloody begging. And I'm just like, fuck around, find out. This is good stuff. Yeah, like, like, I've seen so looting. 
again, they were, you know, dead bodies and people's ruined homes and, you know, stealing from the uh, aid that's being delivered, that sort of thing. You know, the earthquake region in Turkey. Yeah, yeah. And Damn. Well, they take that pretty seriously. They seem to. I've seen so many sad stories. There was that dad, and he's like holding his dead daughter's hand that's like sticking out of the rubble, oh. you know, until they can dig her out. Um, and uh, I saw like set two different instances of fathers who had like shielded their children with their bodies, and one of them he died, and uh, the other one, it was like, when they dig them out, it's like, how are you alive? How are you alive at all? Because it's not like yeah. it's seemingly, it's not like they're in like a big like dome that exists mm-hmm. because this pillar landed like this or whatever, and there was a space. It's almost like they're just buried in a grave and they're yeah. just like digging. I've saw so many little fucking dogs get dug out of the rubble. It's uh, it's been sad to watch that footage, but you know, the United States needed to do something. Yeah. That's a, that's Kyle's little pup. <laughs> He's going to give her a, a, a dirty look. <laughs> I believe that's the little 28 year old Pomeranian who, uh, who's, who's struggling. Struggling. Uh, well, yeah, because uh, I thought Kyle said she had like dementia. Ah, could be. Maybe you know how dogs works. where they like forget where they are and what they're doing. It happens with people. It does. It's sadder <laughs> when it happens to people because it's like, damn, that person used to be able to like talk and like. Do you ever? Do you, you think that, I'm like, fine? <laughs> I'm enjoying my movies twice. <laughs> <laughs> do you like? Does that thought cross your head where like? you'll see someone in public, like an elderly person being like led around by a handler, like just at like the grocery store or something. And Mm -hmm. you think like, what? Like they, like that person 60 years ago was like having a fun, carefree conversation with friends, like after school or like in college or like, what were they like? What was he into? What was his thing? What was he Mm -hmm. known for in his social circle? Like, what's happened since then? Like it would you, if I asked him, would he be like, yeah, I had a great life or like, no, there's so much more to be done. I, every time I see like a really old person, I I'm fascinated by that. And I think I'm about fascinated it by it too. I, I'm equally fascinated by old footage, right? Like you yeah. see people from a hundred years ago. It's interesting now, like cameras have been around a long time by American standards, you know, what, what's yeah, old, 100 you know, the hundred miles. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, like, so it's like, well, there's good footage of 1923, 1923. Mm-hmm. There were video cameras rolling. You can see New York yeah. and, and movies back when like horses and cars were sharing the streets together. And like mm-hmm. that shit's, I don't know. Somehow it feels more recorded when it's recorded in video form than some sketch in a Western or something. For sure. And it humanizes them a lot. Like I went through a YouTube rabbit hole of like just trying to find the oldest interview I possibly could, like a film interview. And there was one from like 1913 where they Mm -hmm. were in in 1913. They were interviewing like a hundred and three year old man. And so, like, it was wild to see people from a century ago, like, baffled talking to someone a century prior. And they're like, so what do you think about these newfangled automobiles? And he's like, oh, when I was a kid, I I could have never imagined such a thing could ever be. And now it's, I I just don't know if I'll ever trust one as much as a horse. Like, that kind of level of stuff. And it's like, this is 40 years later, they went to the moon. Yeah, uh, 40 years later at the fucking moon. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to ask me anything that I think is kind of interesting. It, yes, it, it starts off wanting Kyle in particular. He's not here. But it says, you once talked about learning piano or code. Did you try it? And for all the guys, have you worked on any new skills recently? I thought, hi. Huh, like, Fuck. you're prone to that. Like, uh, the candles is the last new skill that I feel like you talked about on the show. Yeah, the can or archery. I did that last right. year for a while. I need to get back into that. That was a bunch of fun. I guess that's the most recent one. Like I got really into mm-hmm. um, smoking I'm, meats. Smoking meats. That's true. Yeah, I shitty weather for that. So I haven't I haven't done it at all since it got cold because that kind of ruins a bit of the fun of it. But I'm Does excited it? for spring. I feel like it could be cool to like go outside in the snow, have a smoker cooking in the snow. No, no, it probably is. It's like just that like hot tub in the snow effect. Yeah, I, I was, I, I really thought about buying a hot tub, but uh, oh, it's for this guy's question as far as like hobbies, no archery, candle making, fucking Age of Empires two, which is you know that's that's training me to be better at games from twenty three <laughs> years ago. So <laughs> that's something that you have to do. And I'll push back on Kyle while he's not here to defend himself. There's mm. nothing wrong with old games. 
nothing wrong with it. Sometimes they hit the nail on the head the first time. Do you take the claw and you pull it back out again? No, you, it's a flush nail. It's perfect. It's perfect. That's what Age of Empires 2 is. It's a perfectly flush nail. And he's mad because the graphics aren't good enough. I don't care for it. Also, guys, don't, th- don't talk about this part of the show in the comments. We need, this needs to be secret. <laughs> so, so, so Kyle doesn't know that I was, that I was arguing against his phantom here. Uh, I, uh, I also learned candle making. I'm not really an expert. I've burnt all my candles, so we need to make more. Um, I've gotten head over heels into reef keeping, keeping a fish tank. This is something that I did like a long time ago. I went to the fucking Reef Central and I found my login from 23 years ago. <laughs> I'm like, I have so much cred in this place now. <laughs> Dude, that's so fucking funny. Just pop it back into the forum and it says joined February of 99. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 2000, but yeah. That's, hilarious. <laughs> that's what it says. Dude, you are the oest of G's on, <laughs> on a website like that. I don't think keeping fish is an interesting show topic, so I don't tend to dominate with it or anything. But my wife, I, so this time along, last time my wife was a passenger at best. Maybe she'd tolerate me talking about it. Now she's researching all these corals on what can get along. So corals can be aggressive. There's the tentacles and they'll kill uh, corals if they're not similar to them if they're too close together yeah but we have a small tank so there's a lot of planning that goes involved in putting everything in the right spot which fish get along with each other etc and we are just well cycling the water right now there's no fish but just going over but we must spend six hours a day each of us combined like 12 hours combined thinking about how to do this right so that's my latest passion but i'm not sure it's great on the show topic but i ran through the reef go ahead I ran through the entire thought process of like jumping on your reef keeping bandwagon. I was like, well, maybe I'll get a little tank. And then I was like, well, no, nah, I want a big one. I know I'd go, you know, eventually go to the big one. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of, a lot of shit you'd have to do. Yeah, you're right. Maybe we'll get a fake one. What a fake fish cost. It looks to fake fish. <laughs> uh, they don't really make fake fish for that. And you got to light and you still got to keep that thing of water. Really maybe we get a, it and then I was like, maybe I get a TV screen and I pop that in there. Like I was talking about, make myself a fake aquarium that looks so real. It's like as good as better you know, than just, like, just yeah. like a sex doll, essentially. And uh, oh. for, 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 well, with fish, you can't, you can't fuck. I mean, I guess you could, you could, you could. anyway. And oh, and yeah. then, and and then I just was like, nah, I just don't want to do any of it, change my mind. But I think that yeah. might be the, the, the route to go if you want to be a reef keeper and like really flex on people is to just stick a 4K TV in an aquarium and like mount it on the wall in such a way that you can't tell and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, that's the uh, that's the Bulgarian Spitfire. Yeah, they bred it from me. And there's <laughs> only do, eight like, of um, them. A legit reefer. We call ourselves reefers. Like mm, they, do. they did they really? <laughs> reefers are reef keeper. Yeah. <laughs> a, reef, a real reefer is gonna see right through that little charade. No way. No, I, look, here's what I'm gonna They're a proud people. Here's what I want someone else to do for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, Buy I me a TV. Could, no, yeah, I, I bet you could make the, the fake fucking like 4K TV aquarium and like slide into the, the, the reefer subreddit over there and be like, Yeah, I'm I'm just starting. What do you what do you guys think? And like blow their minds with like three of the rarest fish in existence or something like that. Like I didn't know Samsung made. (laughs) Oh, they wouldn't know. They wouldn't know. I don't think. I don't think you tell. Sony Reef Company. It'd have to be really good not to tell. But oh, the um, question uh, we were answering it was an AMA, Kyle. And it's are you any new hobbies? Any new skills you're cultivating? Was what it was. Yes, skills. I couldn't think of any skills, and the ones I could think of are beyond useless. Archery. What the hell am I doing? No, that's a good one. If you ever, <clears throat> you should go hunting. I don't know why you haven't decided to like go kill a, an animal with that. It bus. does seem that... like something Taylor would like. I'm sorry to cut you off, but I'm no I'm... agree and amplify. I, I, dude, Taylor would love hunting. I just think he would. I, I could see him getting into it and re, regaling us with tales of sitting in the woods and not seeing anything for six <laughs> no, hours. Not seeing anything. <laughs> well, I brought my freeze pipe, so it was still. A good time. Yeah. <laughs> it was a blast. I, I, I haven't hunted in years. Like, I think it was like seven years ago I got a deer, and that was the last time I've hunted. So you have killed a deer. Yeah. Did you blood yourself like they do on Yellowstone? Blood myself? No, we went over so there fucking... and uh, and then cleaned it and then ate it. You, you didn't put it all over your face and eat the heart? Anybody who does that? The that's fu- a... who, they, who does that? That's every, a made up every Hollywood Every boy on shit. Yellowstone. Yeah, that's it's so hilarious what those people like who've never like been to a farm think yeah. like farm life is like. Here's here's what I, it's like 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 when you live in the country like people come there some and, and in any situation where people come they're like hey what's it like here there's all ton 
there's all kinds of ways to like fuck with newcomers. And this is another one of yeah. them. You send you on a like snipe hunt, or we send you to get a fucking left handed stapler, or we get you the, the fucking turn signal fluid or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cow like, tipping. Yeah, cow tipping. A made up thing. You know what a snipe hunt is? Eh? Yeah. The, I was convinced I'm out there looking for him, man. Like, like we're just running around through the woods. It's all fun. I once but... spent hours in the woods when my Boy Scout patrol sent me looking for a left-handed smoke shifter. The smoke was, it kept blowing into everyone's eyes and stuff. So they're like, Woody, see if any other campsites around here have a left-handed smoke shifter. I'm like, aye, aye. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> I just went for miles to place to place to what place. Some hadn't heard of it. Miles. <laughs> it wasn't until a trooper picked me up on I-10 and informed me that they oh, hoodwinked me and that so the choppers long. were in the air. Yeah. It wasn't until I was sitting cab with what I thought was a friendly trucker <laughs> taking me to a local supply depot. As they say in Milwaukee, cash grass or ass. <laughs> yeah. Cash grass. Cash grass or ass. You come Ugh. back with a left-handed smoke shifter and you're like, you better be fucking using this. You don't know what I did on the, the road. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> As I wipe the semen off my chin. Yeah, what so like the idea... since he brought that left-handed smoke shifter. <laughs> the idea of like putting that deer's blood on me is like like first of all, them things got ticks. Those ticks carry Lyme disease. I learned they... earlier in yeah. the show that animals don't have diseases that go to humans. And they they, they smell off well, I mean I not from their bites necessarily, but the Lyme disease that those ticks are carrying could like ruin your life. I don't know if, yeah. how much you know about Lyme disease, but it's really odd how it can, how it affects people differently. And it's this lifelong ailment that there's no cure for. It's like an autoimmune you, disease. Right? You end up, yeah, you end up with these issues with red meat and anemia, I believe as well. I could be making the anemia part of it. I know the red meat thing is a, is a, is a thing like you cannot eat it anymore and a lot of a lot of people have it and it's a lifelong thing you might as well have aids it's or something cute. now you've got no no yeah, it's treatable confidence. maybe that's what it is i thought there it's, was a cure yeah it's treatable it's uh it's yeah. pretty ridiculous so no i'm not fucking pa- and they smell like like a dead deer immediately starts smelling a little bit you know that you don't want to like be rubbing that thing's bodily fluids no. on your face are you sure there's no cure in there they're ripe yeah. with ticks. And Unless, I mean, maybe they cured bad. it like in the last five years or something. I'm I'm basing this on like the last time I saw a celebrity on Rogan talking about his lifelong battle with Lyme disease. Hmm. That sucks, <sighs> dude. I I get a little afraid of that every time I find a tick on me. Like after I've been outside <laughs> or in the woods or whatever, I'm always like, I hope this is one of the good ones. I think it's that the symptoms like go on forever, right? Like it just seemed like. I've I've about- also heard that it's uncurable. I heard that when I was younger. And I thought it's since been cured, and but I this is not my area of expertise. I don't know. Yeah, I'm rewatching um, um, the Boardwalk wire. Empire. I, oh, I Boardwalk Empire! Wire. I blew um, through the wire. That's that's quality entertainment. I I know you like those shows, and I also know that you're not alone. That, that most people consider them some of the best. Yeah, <sighs> not for you. I've seen the wire twice. I it's loved slow. the first season, and I liked the other seasons. I just don't put it there with the best of the best. Mm. I think it's the I, writing that pushes it over for me and like a couple of the characters in particular, like, like really do a great job. Mm-hmm. And um, no, I, I like it a lot, but it is very slow. And, and you have to, in season two, um, that Ziggy character is just so obnoxious. And even his cousin, the other white mm-hmm. guy, they're just, I feel like they're miscast or something. Like, I don't, I don't like those characters. They, they're, it's, it's not great. Um, boardwalk's great though. I hadn't seen that in a while. The only problem with Boardwalk is you got to somehow buy that Steve Buscemi's a tough guy. <laughs> it's like that's how bro, I feel about Joe Pesci. Uh, Joe Pesci's stocky, you know. Like, like I feel like he's no pushover. Like, like okay. I, I bet he hits hard. But Steve Buscemi is just like this wimp of a lily flower kind of guy. Like, like he's just a wisp of a man. I, if I had to guess, he's like below five nine, below one fifty, even in his prime. Like, he's a little bitty fellow. So the idea that he's going to conk some big galoot over the head and kick him in the ass, get out of my bar. Nah, that dude's going to scoop you up, dude. You better have your goons like surrounding you at all times because anybody in this room can throw you an ass whooping. He's just Hollywood so... does that with the mob so much, right? Like, like, oh, here's a guy who's a good 220 pounds overweight. Not 220 pounds, 220 pounds too fat. <laughs> But he's like a tough guy. You lock the door and, and he's like an, a 
Dude, you know how unathletic that person is? Here's Get another out. guy, Steve Buscemi. Here's another guy, Joe Pesci. Your whole crew is made is like the fucking island of misfit toys. And, See, and I disagree on this one. I think that big mm. man is a real problem. Like like th- that 400 pound man. Like I don't want wings pushing me into a corner. I feel like if I pull him towards me, he falls down. Like that guy know. is just a a, a tippy toppy balance. He out. He's like an um, upside down bowling pin. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's the difference between like an implied sort of um, um, scariness where like if Tony Soprano is threatening you, not only are you afraid because he's a big, scary man, but you also know that like, shit, even if I whoop Tony's ass, hell, if I kill him, even mm-hmm. it doesn't end well. They're not going to he's not going to go back like, yeah, Woody whooped my ass, boys. He's the boss now. It was or, a like, fair fight. Or, like, hey, let it go. Leave Woody alone. He. He he kicked my butt in, in honorable combat. He's gonna be like, I want you to go over tonight. I want you to go get Woody. Mm-hmm. I don't want you to go get Woody's family. And get that dog, that stupid fucking dog. That dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's gonna Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah like, no, so I'm shit. with you on that, but sometimes I feel like what? these are people who aren't afraid of the mob. And yeah. they still like their biker gang. Look, that biker gang would have kicked the fuck out of the out of the mob in that situation. They yeah, were all think- tougher guys. Yeah, I think that's just a casting problem more than mm-hmm. anything. And and like the way it's sort of displayed. Uh I, I don't know. I, I feel like if you look at the way like actual modern gangsters handle themselves, man, it's if somebody even it seems like if anyone disrespects you, they just come back and shoot them to death, right? Like like I like guess. that's what that's what most of that when you hear about like the gun violence in Chicago, it's a drug war that's happening. It's gangsters fighting over corners and territory to sell drugs and they're killing each other at and like, like oh. you, who was the guy um, in the NBA that um, um, Stephen A. Smith, not Stephen A. Smith, the other one, who the one that got the little lift? He he's me. an he announcer. But he's, no, is he in he the did. NBA? He's a, it, it's the big dude. We were, we were joking about him a couple. <laughs> Shut the this fucking dog. It's that um, it's the black guy who has the show with the older white guy. Uh, he's a former player. Right. Shannon Sharp is the one. Yeah. Talked yeah about. That oh, he's a football player, though. Yeah, he was just called. I remember he was calling some uh, an NBA player out for just being a gangster. And yeah, so Shannon Sharp was calling out John Morant. John Morant apparently is not really a gangster, but he's adopted that persona and just walks around on the court like, "Don't fuck with me." Meanwhile, I don't know how big he is, but I think he's smaller than most NBA players. Yeah, yeah. I guess what I was getting at is like, seems like the way modern gangsters do things is like, like they just shoot each other. There's no like mob boss that's on the streets who's talking a lot of shit because anybody who does that gets shot to death it would seem yeah i i guess i mean this isn't really my world but yeah i'm going off the wire mostly right like i thought like the wire is a pretty accurate representation of what's going on like uh, at street level drug sales right here's the situation that happens in movies a guy's from out of town he doesn't realize he's dealing with the mob but he like gets his ass kicked because this mobster's supposed to be tough, but he doesn't seem very tough to me. Or it, It's like, if I have the ability to win this fight and then leave town and never come back to that town, that's my move. Yet all these guys lose their fights. Why? Because Joe Pesci's so handy with his hands? You're going to have to give me some examples. And again, these are just issues with movies that you have more that, than like... That's what anything. I'm. That's the issue I'm making. Though. I'm not saying yeah. that like in real life, these gangsters are winning fights they shouldn't have. You know, I if you know. think about... Like, 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 I'm the the main one where Joe Pesci's like the the real tough guy is, is casino, like Casino, yeah. you know. And if you look at like all the instances where he's conducting himself as a tough guy, he never squares up with anybody. He stabs people in the face when they aren't looking, right? Or he gets his goons to hold you on a table and put your head in a vice. He wasn't like, "Hey, yous and yous, come at me." He never did anything like that. He never just threatened some. The only time he mm-hmm. like actually went at somebody, it was like that fat, older, overweight lawyer. That's the guy he grabbed and was like, what the fuck are you going to do this and that? Someone he could overpower. Everybody mm. else. Like, oh, you're not looking? Let me stab you in the ear. Dude, he yeah. stabbed you in the ear. I'm going to start crying, too. Don't stab me in the ear, Joe. <laughs> Don't stab me I didn't know. We- Dude, I thought an ass whooping was as bad as this could go. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. And I'm deaf as a leader. <laughs> like, like, we started off with deafness. I, like, I don't know. I'm afraid of Joe Pesci or anybody who's willing to stab me in the ear, even when yeah. it seems like things are okay now. It's because he's unpredictable and, and cruel. Did you step on my shoe? Yeah, sorry about that. And he turns away. Ah, no problem. But he's really going to stab me in the ear when I turn back to yeah. my drink. Like, I'm terrified of that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he's a... He's 
not going to arm wrestle me, Woody. <laughs> no. He's going to wait until you're not looking and stab you in the shoulder with a fork or something. Something worse, man. Uh, Probably something worse. That, that would actually be not too bad compared to what he did to most people. Yeah, I'm scared. And, and then, you know, and the classic one where Joe Pesci is scary is, when, you know, Home Alone. And if you're a child, Joe Pesci's terrifying, you know. Yeah, horrifying. Do you know what actually scared me in Home Alone? The uh, dangerous one. Escape from New York. Not Escape from New York. What what the fuck is it called? Escape from LA. Lost in New York. (laughs) No. (laughs) Home Home Alone Alone 2, Lost in New York. Lost in New York. (laughs) Yeah. I thought you said Boston, New York. And I'm like, I know that's not it. Lost in New York. There was like, as a kid, I remember watching that and I would like turn away every time Marv went to like get electrocuted in that warehouse because like him being like, "Ah!" And like seeing his skeleton and everything, that scared me as a mm-hmm. little kid. I didn't like it. I was like, oh, I know wow. he's the burglar, but I hope he's not too fucked up from that. So I wanted him to die. I was like, what? I was like, I hope- you wanted yeah, Marv I- to die? I wanted him to die in the first one. I was a huge fan of Home Alone. And I, I, I although, you know, I was always like, why don't he just get a real gun? <laughs> like, like, I was, I was like, I would just skip right to the gun, you know, if there were home intruders, I feel like. Yeah. It's as, like that, even that as a family child. guy, that old family guy sketch where it's like a realistic home alone. And like the, the guys come in immediately and he like throws a paint can down. Oh, look out for that shoot paint him can. in the head. Yeah. Look out for that paint can. Hey, there's some marbles on the floor. Oh yeah. Watch out. I could have, watch out. I could have stepped on them. And they just kill him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fucking dead. Yeah. That's what would happen. Like, like there's no amount yeah. of paint cans that are going to stop me from getting you, you little fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll kill that spider too. Oh, I, I've been. Oh, spider, I'm gonna make you eat this, you little piece of shit. Let me put you up. I'm a grown ass man. You think I'm afraid of a goddamn spider? I'm coming. I'm a robber. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a I'm a home invader, and Cat the trap burglar. Slow Get me over down. yourself. You think I'm scared of you and your spider. You're yeah. in some shit. I've been I'm, a, I'm moonlighting as a burglar. I'm a murderer. Like, that, yeah, that's what <laughs> <laughs> that was the that was how they like made sure you hated them right like that first house they robbed they 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 turned all the water the on bandits. the wet bandits they plug all the drains and learn all the water on and these people are oh, away from their homes why do you always turn the faucets on it's, like, it's our calling card for the wet <laughs> bandits it's like no one calls us that marv <laughs> the wet, it's such a horrific thing to do That's, to somebody I, like, that is the worst yeah. thing you could do to someone's house it'd be better to burn it down <laughs> At, at it, least it'd be it's the, like similar to different. At least you can walk away if you burn the motherfucker down. But if you, like God, you'd walk in and be like, "Oh, it's maybe it's not that bad. It's ruined. Yeah. You have nothing left." Hey, what's Nick, up, guys? how are you? Good, good. Hey. Thank you hey. for joining us. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Talking about nothing of consequence at all. Oh, we're talking about Home Alone. This is this is important. <laughs> stuff. We're talking about how awful it was that not only were they robbing the houses, but they were plugging the drains and turning all the water on. The wet bandits were ruining lives. Yeah, and I would bet that's probably illegal, isn't it, Nick? Winter in Chicago. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that would be uh, highly illegal. Yeah. Um, also stupid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they they find you pretty quickly. You know, a trail of wet houses all in the Chicago Gold Wait, Coast area. And you're getting charges you don't you don't need to get. You were there for like clock radios and stuff. It was ninety two. But don't you think that that get the you know, Teddy Ruxman, that family Marv. had money to spare? Toaster oh. ovens. So we, Nick, thank you we so were, much for joining us. Uh I was I was popping around your YouTube channel. I'm I'm familiar with, with you through uh through Dick Masterson, friend friend oh, of our yeah. show and all that. He's a very funny guy. I I was watching a video that you you you're apparently like playing around with the idea of doing a podcast with uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, like as a <laughs> as a as a co-host, like like I don't or know just about an that. interview. I I got him on for an interview. Finally, it took forever, um, which was great. No, I I wanted to uh, during the trial. What I wanted to do was get. Um, was be able to just coach him on his social media thing that would follow because I feel like I feel like he missed out on a million dollar opportunity to create a YouTube channel right at the mm-hmm. height of all of the attention uh, reviewing guns. I think that's what he should have done rather rather than per- be paraded around to like all of the traditional conservative media. Yeah, <laughs> like, what did yeah, everybody else? That? Yeah, exactly. That's a so, good point. I wonder if he would have done well at it or if he would have been made to look a fool. Right. He's a young guy. You put a camera on him and a mic in front of him. It won't take long before the yeah, people you put who a don't like him. The camera. That would yeah. Help. But the people who don't like him, you can. 
shucks this show alone i'm sure there's 90 seconds of me looking like an absolute ass they can no. do that to him repeatedly <laughs> no none of us, nah. none of us have oodles of clips of being retarded nah, you know you put a producer behind the camera that knows what they're doing right um and, and, you know welcome to straight shooters with kyle rittenhouse you know you can have some fun you come up with a I like it already. Shooters. Oh, my God. Of all the criticisms they leveled to him, it's not that he can't shoot straight. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, welcome you know, to the it's... Fuck Around and Find Out podcast with your host, Kyle Rittenhouse. Welcome <laughs> 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 to the map remover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can have tons of puns um, and then merch. And, and I always point out that it's incredibly tasteless, but I point out that person who was a friend of a friend of a friend or whatever who made all that money selling those Trayvon Martin targets. Mm. Um, they, they just sold like hotcakes. Yeah. Um, and tasteless as it was, he, he, I, I know that it was six or seven figures. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. selling those paper targets for a couple bucks a piece. Like, it's like all those companies that made shit tons of cash selling like fuck Trump and Trump rules hats, like on the same web page. Like, yeah, people will buy it just to piss off the other side. Like there would even if Rittenhouse sucked ass on the mic, which I don't know. I haven't watched a clip of him talk or anything. But if he was a horrible podcaster, I guarantee a bunch of gun people would still be like, where's your Patreon, brother? Like, mm -hmm. where can I support the cause? Like, and, and that would yeah. rake in money, too. Yeah. yeah. And. That would have been great uh, for him, I think. It, to, to answer your question about how he is on Mike, I mean, he's still what twenty. Like, oh, yeah, he's, he's not. Uh, he's not the best on Mike. the The hardest part for him, though, is that he's got this pending lawsuit, and everybody wants to interview him about like what happened, because mm -hmm. that's all anybody knows about him. That's all anybody kind of sure. wants to know about him. But the thing with building, you know, a YouTube channel or whatever, is you build your brand. Like, not someone else building their brand off of your story. Mm -hmm. And so he could have done that. He could have been like, yeah, you know me, I'm Kyle Rittenhouse. Uh, my hobby, though, is guns. And here's what I like to do. I like to go to the range. Let's go check out this gun and, and start shooting it, right? And yeah. that would have been an easy way for him to, to kind of mold the narrative. Stay away from all of that political stuff that uh, has potential interference with a lawsuit and just have fun and probably make a killing uh, on, on YouTube or whatever platform he yeah. chose. If he didn't get banned. I can right. see YouTube banning it. Oh, he needs a product too. Like, like, like I would immediately have um, yeah. tourniquets. No, I would immediately have a device that kept people from grabbing your rifle out of your hands. Like, look, look at this. It straps onto my arm and then onto my grip. Try to take the gun away from me. Yep, you're just going to. It's like, <laughs> no, off. no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, Art man. Art man. <laughs> like, wow, you were trying. <laughs> that's what i'm talking about that's how that's i mean that's how i would produce videos like, like it would have to be jokey right you, mm. if yeah. you can make people laugh it's hard for them to hate you um <laughs> at least at, at least like full-throatedly hate you um so mm -hmm. you know you, you got to do things in a funny kind of way but he is a polarizing figure i'll say that um i saw Whoa. <laughs> you know I, I'll, I'll scroll through reddit and i get it's something about um the civil suit against him popped up on my reddit feed the other day and i wrote i went through those comments Whew. Well, that's a yeah. That's an interesting place to go through. There, there's a lot of people in there that are just wanting you to describe a theme. Like what? Uh, said about why it? did he kill those three black men? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah you know, why did he kill those three black men in cold blood? Essentially, a lot of people are like really in disbelief. They're like, well, he's clearly like a racist murderer, and there was a there was some miscarriage of justice. That's sort of the narrative that a mm. lot of people just care. That's their truth, as if yeah. people can have different versions of of truth and. And it's in its own yeah. right. That's their truth is that Kyle Rittenhouse is like a, a guy who like got away. He's the he's an OJ. And it's like, man, they were all white. And y'all watched the video, right? Like I watched it. Like like I, I just call them like I that see they were it. all white as long as they're all people attacking him. Like <laughs> right. But, well, I know, mean, I mean, yeah. like, like, but the racist angle in general, like, like, like there there weren't any black people shot. He didn't shoot any black people. Well, actually, that's the most racist part. The one black guy who did jump kick him in the face, you know, and kick him while he was on the ground, he shot and missed that guy. Like, what, you can't see black people? What kind of horrific racist yeah. are you? What are you that's, why you need your, that's why you need the Kyle Rittenhouse tactilite, all right? Some, <laughs> target, some targets in the dead of night. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying which kinds of targets, but they're hard to see, okay? Um, <laughs> yeah, and all of his products, he could say, like, pedophiles all, give this two thumbs down. Oh, <laughs> because where do we get a pedophilia angle? Because one of the people he shot with, like, had had 
crimes. Oh, that's uh, right. Uh, that yeah, related to that right? horrific child yeah, rape. Nick, you know charges. more about that. Yeah. Jeez. Oh yeah, he was convicted. Uh, the Joseph Rosenbaum, the first guy who chased him, threw the bag at him, and grabbed for the gun. Uh, that guy was convicted of um, forcible sodomy of uh, of minors. Oh, no. um, Jesus! Oh, Christ. yikes! Yeah. I was going to ask what he really did because sometimes, especially something about the sexual assault charges, it's like, yeah, but what does that really mean? What does it? Translate? Well, even that one, we don't know what that means because sodomy under the law can be anal or oral forcible penetration. Right? This one was anal. Oh. Well, there we, we got it. Heard it here, folks. It was but the I understand was, the charges, and he was convicted. He was found guilty. Yeah, he spent uh, several years in prison down in Arizona, um, Ooh. and then he or New Mexico, one of those two. It was either Arizona, not one or of New those Mexico. Sheriff Joe Apio like places. I hope. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, yeah, then he he had been out for a little bit and went up to Kenosha to I guess to start over. It's like, well, everyone here knows what I did. Let's just go to Wisconsin where no one cares. Yeah, I'll keep a low profile. <laughs> six feet under oh oh um, did the child rapist get shot <laughs> oh did the child rapist get killed yeah that, that, i don't think anyone should give a fuck about that guy why why, why would you care that a of someone who sodomizes children was killed fuck them good how old was the victim well he didn't get killed uh, they were between it, wasn't he the guy that got his arm blown off no no no, no that guy's still first gage one. oh he yeah. killed the pedophile yeah. He the the two people he killed had the worst records, um, which is pretty interesting. Gage had kind of a checkered record, but but nothing like crazy, like uh, the Anthony Huber kid whose family is suing Kyle now. Um, he was the one who, uh, when he held his like, he he was charged with uh, attempted strangulation of a sibling, so a domestic assault charge. And he also held like his grandmother and sister at knife point because they wouldn't clean the house. All right. Well, I mean, a traditional winners. man through and through. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> clean the shit up, bitches. Yeah, a little uh, Sigma mindset. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we didn't. We didn't talk about how old the first victim was. The, they were. They were very the the kid the victims of, of Joseph said. Rosenbaum. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, they were. They were not like. This was not seventeen year olds. Like it okay. was they were that was young. my last uh, like I need to know, you know. Like it, you're always mm, like, yeah, you're always mm. like it's still gross, but it'd be like less bad if they were sixteen than if they're nine. Right. If they're like seventeen and consenting, but because he's twenty three, they're not able to consent. That's a yeah, different thing that. in my head. It wasn't that. It wasn't yeah. that. No, it was, yeah, it was there's bad. 30 there's 32 different flavors of awful sexual rape and crimes, but, but yeah. I, I kind of want to know which flavor we're talking about, I guess, to, so that I can kind of have a mindset when the guy gets his head blown off in the streets. Like, oh, Sounds like yeah, he straight yeah. up butt raped a young person. Yeah. No, not the flavor. <laughs> no <laughs> two ways like to see it. Oh, yeah, rum raisin, eh? Yeah. <laughs> rum raisin. Nick, we were talking before the show Statues about there. talking to police. and Don't do it, but yes. Oh, that's, uh, <laughs> every expert I have ever seen on YouTube or talked to in person gives that same advice. Say nothing. If they're colorful, they'll say, shut the fuck up. Right. That, that's the advice we always get. Right. Shut the fuck up Fridays from the Justice Brothers. I know them. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. But on the other hand, we've all had experiences where, you know, the cop pulls you over speeding and you're like, yes, I spilled the milk. I'm so sorry. I don't typically spill milk. I'm not a habitual milk spiller. This one exception. I, I made a mistake. And, you know, if you could see fit to let me off with a warning, I, I'm the sort of guy who deserves it. This isn't me. This is what I think police want to hear when they pull you over. I made a mistake. This isn't who I am. Can can we let it slide? If you just say I don't talk about my day. I don't like police. I don't answer questions. You're probably going to go to court. You're not going to talk your way out of it. Yeah, it uh, it kind of depends on the feel you get from the cop. Um, I've I've had I've had the I've run the gamut of of cop interactions. When I was driving home from law school one day, because I went to school at night, and I was driving home, and it was two hours away, so I was getting home. It's like that. one a.m. and uh, and I was so close to my house and the speed dropped from 65 to 55. And I just wasn't paying attention. I was dead mm -hmm. tired. And I was probably going like 70 or something. And the guy pulls me over and he's like, what, uh, what are you doing? I'm like, dude, I just got out of law school. I'm tired. I'm sorry. Right. And he's like, yeah, it's fine. You know, I know you just missed the signs. Like <laughs> I'm like barely alive. <laughs> just my <laughs> house is a mile and a half from here. Can I just please go home? 
To and, be honest, uh, officer, this is akin to drunk driving. I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, he's like, yeah, yeah, just get out of here. I just want to make sure people are staying safe. And that was fine. Like, and you could kind of tell from his demeanor that it was okay. Um, you know, but so people kind of take this advice. Don't talk to the cops really, really literally. And, and you should, I mean, if you really want to protect yourself from a ticket, um, not talking to the cops is the best way to protect yourself. But what you're talking about isn't protecting yourself, right? What you're talking about is, is basically being candid and just asking for a little bit of mercy. And that's, that's a way to do it. But on the other hand, I got pulled over by a really pissed off cop and I was definitely speeding. The problem was I thought it was on a different road. Cause I kind of spaced out Did that thing where like you get into hypnosis and I thought I had already yeah. exited onto the faster highway and so I, I was just driving like I was on the other. So I was speeding like 10 miles over the other limit. And so I'm yeah. like 15 over this one. Cop pulls me over. He goes, you know, I pulled you over. I was like, no. He says, do you know what the speed you were going? No. You know what the speed limit is? Nope. Do you know where you are? Not at all. <laughs> and then he gave me a warning. He's like, okay. Because he, he couldn't actually tag my words to pin me down to a ticket. And this guy was pissed, right? Like he was, he came up to the car. He was hot. He was angry. He's like kind of huffy. And, uh, and I was like, well, I just gotta, I guess I just gotta say no to literally everything he says. Um, mm -hmm. because otherwise what you get is you get an admission. Yeah. I, I know. I, was, I thought it was only five over or whatever. You're still speeding. That's still an admission mm -hmm. of guilt. And once they can write that down, that statement from you, they've got you in court. Like you're not going to go into court and win, but mm -hmm. if they have to go in and prove it, you know, maybe what you do is you go in there and you ask the calibrations, uh, you know, the calibration record of the machine. You check the weather. Was it really cold? Could that interfere with the radar gun? You start asking for all this stuff and it becomes really expensive for the cops to get $130 out of you. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they don't fight as much. So like for actual okay. legal protection, saying uh, for my advice on getting pulled over is just say no to anything. It's not illegal to not know how fast you're going. It's not illegal to not know what the speed limit is. And it's not illegal to not know what road you're on. So you can safely and, say no to all those things. Uh, you, your results may vary. <laughs> <laughs> but, I but feel for, like I'd be like, no. And he'd be like, here's your ticket. Fuck! When, uh, <laughs> when I got arrested, it was a long time before they asked me a question that I didn't feel comfortable, like, at least replying to. Because yeah. for a long time, like, like they, 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 there was no tr the sort of, like, Oh, do you think maybe this happened and that happened? They weren't, we weren't talking about what was happening. I was like, hey, right. can I get a smoke? First of all, I knew the cop, one of them. And I was like, Jimmy, can I get a smoke? He's like, yeah, come on, let's get in my car. Like, they're not handcuffing me yet. Like, like we're, we're gonna, we, I hung out in his car for half an hour while they got their warrant and smoked. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, but, but it was like an hour and a half later but when we were sitting at a desk somewhere. I was like, you know, I think that's where I stop ask, answering questions and start, you know, Sending it to my lawyer. Uh, yeah, exactly. Need to talk to him because uh, I don't, I don't know anything about any of that. Well, and that's you... the uh, that's the move, right? The, the, police are very, very good interviewers. They do it all the time, so they get very, very conversational with people. They get to know them. They're like, "Hey, we're just trying to help you out. What's your name? What's going on, man?" And they they encounter people who are usually in a rough spot in their life. Uh, lots of people, depending on the type of crime that they're encountering, but lots of people are encountering crime because they're in a, a bad place. Um, and so the, the cops get really good at sort of that diffusion, build rapport really quick, like a salesman and, and kind of get conversational. It also helps them get those answers that they're looking for. So, uh, that's, that's one thing to remember is that they're very good at this and you typically are not very good at mm -hmm. answering that type of stuff. Because you might only get arrested one time in your life if you, you know, uh, or for a lot of people, it's never. Um, some people get really good at it, right? <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah. live, you live in the right hood. But, but they've uh, got a script. Like, they've done it. They do it every day. Cops are yeah. cops and, like, uh, officers of various federal agencies have always been some of the more friendly and personable people that I've met. Um, and mm -hmm. it's like, man, there are different circumstances. I'd really like you, dude. Like... That I, I almost always walked away from like my dealings with cops, at least good cops, uh, and and uh, with thinking like, this seems like such a nice guy. I wish we weren't on the opposite ends of this one. <laughs> I, was, I wish I knew something about In those other world. Ones. We could have been friends. <laughs> <laughs> like like it, yeah, for real yeah. 
it serves their purposes really well too, because, you know, if they're approaching someone who's uh, in distress, they have a weapon, maybe they don't, they don't know what this person's up to, right? They don't know what they're capable of. They're coming into a situation. It's much better most of the time to lead with some kindness and, and be approachable rather than come in, you know, full force jackboot. Otherwise, uh, mm -hmm. they might get shot or stabbed. Uh, the person might, you know, might have some murder suicide intention. You never know what that person's up to. But if you if they can calmly approach them uh, safely, they don't see a weapon or whatever. That's that's a beneficial way to do things and to keep the situation cool before whatever happens next. And they they may have plans to arrest that guy in the most rough way possible. But mm -hmm. uh, it's always good to start off like, hey, what's going on, buddy? How you doing? Yeah. <laughs> what's going on with what's the, what are you doing with both of those guns? <laughs> Is one not enough? I like talking about this, like responding to cops made me want to ask, like, you must be very familiar with the sovereign citizen people who are like, <laughs> I am a boat and you cannot impede my naval tra tra traversing of this great naval I empire. I still like, do not understand how they say what is, they're not what is a person. That? Or is, something. That, is that just a section of YouTube videos where I've been had and it's little No, skit? no, these people are these people are very real. Uh, and, you know, a lot of cops perceive them as extremely dangerous. And the the problem with it, and I hate siding with the state on something like that, but they really are. I mean, they, they can be quite dangerous because they, they do not recognize any authority over them. I mean, they say that they live under the articles of confederation because the constitution wasn't properly ratified at the time or something like that. So they're, they're, you know, they're free citizens who live under the articles. Uh, they're just travelers on the land. They're never driving, right? They're always just navigating Traveling. their land boat. Or something. <laughs> and, uh, rock. <laughs> you should have a more boat looking car. <laughs> and and the the I'm not a person or like the, the separation mm. of the person and their corporate entity comes from this weird idea that so birth certificates tend to be printed in all caps for the names. Mm -hmm. And so they say that that is actually uh, a corporate person that's created as a legal fiction in the United States and that that's how the United States has jurisdiction over uh, the citizenry is through its corporate personhood. So they just deny their corporate personhood. That's not me. My name doesn't come in all caps. I don't recognize that name at all. So therefore you don't have authority over me. They'll st keep saying this as they're getting handcuffed, as they're going before a judge and as they're being locked away in prison, like they will swear to God that the U S has no jurisdiction. Um, I am the individual <laughs> known as Kyle, not the person Kyle. Or they'll, they'll say some nonsense gobbly yes. like that. And the, and the judge is like, well, I am locking up the person, the individual, the Holy Ghost, and everything else of Kyle. You're going to jail, sir. And if you would happen, you could go ahead and write a letter to the corporation from jail and get them to trade places with you, yeah. and that would be just fine. Yeah, you know. But uh, yeah, that's that's a real thing. And the most recent, like, really prominent instance of that was uh, Daryl Brooks, the w Waukesha parade uh, driver who ran over the like kid and the old ladies and stuff oh, yeah, like that. Yeah. He, um, he was a brand of sovereign citizen, uh, that, that made some of those arguments in court. I mean, the entire premise of his defense was where is the plaintiff, the plaintiff in the case he was alleging should be the state of Wisconsin, but the state of Wisconsin isn't a person that can show up. And to him, all lawsuits required two people, rather than having a representative agent of the state, which would be the district attorney who was prosecuting him the whole time. So he was making those arguments and trying to do the sovereign citizen thing uh, on national television after, after killing six people. It didn't work well for him though. I wouldn't imagine. So that's so. my question. Why does it, it, has it ever worked well for anyone? <laughs> There's like, that'd be interesting. The way it has worked is always has nothing to do with the sovereign citizen aspect of it. So like the way it'll work is they'll say, you don't have jurisdiction over me. And it turns out that they're being tried in the wrong district of federal mm. court, or they're in a state court where it should be a federal charge or something. And so like these little procedural victories that have happened throughout the years get used as bolstering evidence that if you just say the right magic words and incantations, that the hmm. judge will have to realize that they're wrong and drop the case against you. Yeah. But it's never practically worked, right? With like mm -hmm. a, it, we're we're talking where there's a real crime, felony level, and uh, and someone's like, no, you just don't have the authority over me. The plaintiff isn't present. You can't present him. The judge's like, you know what? Shoot, I I never thought of that. 
<laughs> I guess I, some I guess of that like Harry all. Potter magic, like <laughs> yeah. And because of this, I'm awarding you freedom. Like <laughs> <laughs> you'll be his butler. I saw. And I for saw bravely him. defying the laws of consent, I award Hufflepuff fifty points. <laughs> like <laughs> police activity. Police activity is one of the best YouTube channels out there. And I watched one the other day. One of these sovereign citizens was getting pulled over, and he had a rap sheet like something was going on maybe he was on a suspended license or, or no insurance it was like multiple things it's like hey you're coming with us kind of situation or at least right. you're not going any further and uh you're coming out of the car and he's like nope i'm a fucking sea captain i'm the admiral of the fifth <laughs> fleet of fucking horse shit and i'm you don't need it to board to get <laughs> to me mate <laughs> <laughs> and so he fucking set sail up i9 and they, <laughs> they got his ass and beat the shit out of him <laughs> you know they smash his windows pit maneuver whatever and drag him out of the fucking car and it's like all right admiral you're going in, you're going in matey <laughs> and I, it just never works and and but but they seem so adamant about it that i can only imagine that maybe in some little town somewhere they spoke fast enough and talked about the fifth fleet enough that somebody was like man i'm not taking you to the jail you're going to be more trouble oh. than you're worth and just let them continue sailing down the road yeah, like, like it must have, have the, worked sometime they have the I, confidence of the black israelites <laughs> who are out there just like not a shred great. of doubt they're like i am the jew and you are not and they're like not a not a shred of doubt they know in their minds they know that they're i guess both sides of the egyptian jewish slave thing Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how that part works. We enslaved but, ourselves. Yeah. That was power. Yeah, that was, uh, it, was a, it was a mishap. You know, those those pyramids were made by skilled laborers who were paid. Uh, that's uh, mm -hmm. how do you know that? Huh? He was there because yeah. um no 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 there's there's like records of like what their uh, their meals were there was like there's like menus preserved of like, that show like what they were what they were ordering and eating on the work sites like, did like it these look were good? like, like did I mean, it say what know, it was. Yeah. Did you yeah. read what it was? I read it. I, I I translated the hieroglyphics to Greek, and then I found a <laughs> cuneiform expert. He came in, looked at my tablets, and uh, I assume he, the article you read said like, and they unfortunately he was Korean, so I needed uh, I needed to further That's, translate the evidence. But yes, no, this all I mean, checks out. That's where Kyle got his scrolls. I, I mean, your evidence comes from the Bible. Um, so, and, 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 you know, mine came from that archaeologist man, that that black science man on the internet. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with him. I don't think Black Science Man does science anymore. He mostly just like he does Christmas, some science. Like every every Christmas, he's like <laughs> the summer solstice or the winter solstice hey. was was by the fucking Egyptians. And it's like Look, shut up, it, 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 they don't we, open presents. Don't dude. be mad at Black Science Man because he likes social media. When Bill Nye completely sold sold out and like like went crazy. Okay? Bill Nye's not it, even like, a real scientist. At least Neil is a real scientist. He knows about space. He knows the planets. Like uh, Bill Nye, he Bill fucked Nye. us out of Pluto, though. You know what? He can get wrecked. Dude, fuck that is un that. unacceptable. You know what would have been better? <laughs> Instead of going down to eight planets, how about we make it an even ten? Fine. Yeah. How about we make that other one out there one? The, well, exactly. Ceres, I think, is like mm -hmm. the thing that's like the size of Pluto out in the Oort cloud. But yeah. there's like the problem is like there's millions of little objects out there. But there's Pluto and then millions Ceres. of planets. Our solar system gets awesome right then. Like look <laughs> at how true. big it is. Can you imagine a, a kid today <laughs> putting together one of those little solar systems like we had to do with nine planets and there, there's just little dots everywhere. Just a yeah. bunch of table salt. <laughs> yeah. You got to glue it to the end of sticks. <laughs> Third oh, grade man. just got a lot harder, idiot. <laughs> <You> name them. <laughs> Name all seventy-eight thousand. Taylor, did you ever did you ever do like a cool science project? And even high school, maybe like like I always see the one on like Malcolm in the Middle where they make a volcano or whatever. Like like that's what they do on TV. Uh, yeah. Did you ever have one of those where you made yeah, a cool thing? In uh in sixth grade, we had to do a science project, and so I did the patterns and like damage level of different shells out of a twenty gauge at like twenty-five feet towards like plywood, and so it was like. This does this amount of damage. This does that. It was literally the only assignment was like, you need to use the scientific method to do something and then what grade? compare the results. What grade results. was this? What grade Six. was this? Yeah. Dude, can you imagine if a sixth grader came to school showing the power of his shotgun at various ranges? Dude, I had to. I was. Works I, in Missouri. I couldn't lift all the pieces. Hey, of Mrs. Card, Smith. Uh, uh, if you, if the target was where you are, ho ho. <laughs> Dude, I got an A, and that was, you know, that was, you know. Yeah. Late 90s, All early right. 2000 that, Missouri. It's still cool well, here to do stuff like that. That blows my fucking solar oven out of the water, dude. I can't even, I can't even continue.
Like, What's like, a like solar that? oven? I mean, I what's a solar, like oven. a solar oven? I've never built one. All right, so we had to build a solar oven in uh, like the fifth grade. That solar oven is something that utilizes the power of the sun to cook food. Um, and oh, I had to a every... solar oven. Yeah, what, yeah. <laughs> solar oven. He's fucking with you because we all instantly knew what a solar oven was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. Some of y'all uh, yeah. uses the power of what now? It's not. I had the thermal. only one that worked. Like I had the only planet? one that worked. Yeah. Everybody else had to put their bagel bites and the little cinnamon rolls and my shit to cook them because I had the glass lid. I had the aluminum foil. I had the, the insulation. with the. With, it you was know what this proves? Kyle had the most involved and competent father in the class. Mother. 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 Okay. Mother. Right. I always <laughs> say that. Like, like, like uh, when it came to school I should have thought of it the kitchen stuff, yeah. Yeah, um, I will say this in third grade. my um, We had this medieval sort of um, like thing and I could have, I could have either dressed up as like a fucking squire or we could come in with a project. And I was like, I ain't dressing up. Let's build a stockade. You know, like one of those medieval stockades. That's pretty cool, yeah. Right? Me and my dad go get the lumber from Home Depot, the hinges and everything. We make it. This little crippled bitch in my class with arthritis or some shit, her daddy's a dentist. He (sighs) builds her one. Must have taken this grown-ass man two weeks or something. He builds (laughs) a legitimate one, okay? With like thick like I don't know where you get that lumber. It looked like like movie set wood. Okay, you know what I mean? Like 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 yeah. like he went and got aged live edge lumber or something. We went to Home Depot because it's third grade. Yeah, <laughs> and this he wheel first he wheels her in, then he wheels her fucking project in, and there my dumb ass is sitting with my Home Depot stockade. Like hurt my feelings and forever like an more. asshole. Yeah. Oh, that little cunt. That little cunt with her rotten teeth. Your daddy's a dentist. What happened, bitch? <laughs> he was just saying anyway, up to anyway, do it all in one shift. You know what they say that they always, they always, the carpenter always builds someone else's house, but never builds their right. own. The cobbler's oh, children have the no shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Confucius. Yeah. Say. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Now that 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 still upsets me. I was eight. I bet, I bet your stockade was wonderful, man. It was fine. I mean, it worked and no, everything, no. but it was your made out of two by sixes like and and, and four by fours. Stockade, to oh, me. Woody, come on, listen up on his, I mean, his I stockade. Had, wasn't his fault. If I was to choose a stockade, I would definitely go to that crippled girl yeah. stockade. That's where I want people. Can you imagine how say, lame that solar oven say, was? Oh, oh my god, right. he's so proud of that. Solar a oven. bowl <laughs> in hot wet. Wow, you put a metal bowl in Atlanta in the driveway and it cooked an egg. <laughs> Oh my goodness! <laughs> I have a little <laughs> solar hood on my car. It'll cook it's 115. You could cook it on a fucking nonstick pan <laughs> in your living room if you have a skylight. <laughs> Kyle's taking notes for his murder list. <laughs> his murder what list. is it, Taylor or Taylor than Woody? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> fucking solar, <laughs> a solar oven in Atlanta. <laughs> Fuckers! You guys are gonna. No wake one up. else has worked. <laughs> you guys are gonna wake up after a party inside that solar oven just sweating the fucking so I'm like well, exactly. what's going on what's going oh, on yeah. already 112 112 <laughs> soon you'll be getting uncomfortable it's mm. only 8 in the morning yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that Japanese um, like game show competition where they put guys in a sauna and the last man standing like won a ton of money and this guy's flesh is like melting off their bodies you ever see that shit oh, what no yeah. uh, did they have to to like do activities in there because that sounds really no boring. no you just gotta bear it so what you may think oh it's just a sauna but like you know how your fingers get pruny if i take a shower for too long my fingers get pruny yeah like, yeah and i don't it's uncomfortable to me like expand that out over the course of like a day or so and they're, they're like they're getting steam cooked in there and there's there's their hands like the, the flesh is sloughing off it's really disgusting and they're just how much money the- are they winning like like eight thousand yen <laughs> it was no, 60 bucks. Even, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 60 Eight thousand yen. I think I paid thirty thousand yen for hair for breakfast. I was there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no all idea. about no, no. honor. They love honor. And they no hate idea. comfort. <laughs> With inflation and everything, there's, there's no telling. But uh, the, the answer is there's no amount of money worth getting steamed alive, though, right? I remember. Of course, uh, how are you going to use the money? I remember reading about the this guy, the guy who won like one of those competitions. This wasn't a Japanese one. He was like a proper Norseman or whatever, but he, uh, it was like 160 degrees that he was in this stupid sauna for a long time. And the second place guy died. <laughs> it was like, well, that's why he got second, I guess. Yeah. Um, he didn't but even it, win. And it's like, dude, I, why, I don't want to be in a sauna more than about five minutes anyway. Like it's, yeah. oh, it's just, yeah. and oh, they, they just sat there like, no, I'm good. I'm fine. I can do this. Like, it's not about like how tough you are, man. This is biology. Like you just die. Like, yeah, you're, you're there's nothing yourself. <laughs> there's not like, training for this. It's just like how that much water do you drink? 
230. He was in 230 degrees. I have smoked ribs at a well, lower temperature than that. I don't wait. I, 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 230 is not accurate. Like 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 110 that's... degrees Celsius. In the final stage of the event, it required contestants to sit in a 230 degree, 110 degree Celsius room as water was tossed onto a searing stove. Two, the, oh, 230 oh, degree sauna championship boiling, ends right. in tragic death. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm having a I'm hard tragic, time. Tragic, unexpected, really. <laughs> <laughs> Bullet catching competition goes awry. <laughs> but, like, what the fuck? Yeah, is I'm, I'm baffled by that. I, Danny, no fingers, loses again. I'm gonna link this. Look how hot this guy looks. <laughs> He's so hot. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know what I'm expecting. They're both hot. I didn't realize there were two in there with the reflection. Of course. He's like just sitting there trying to roll <laughs> your stuff. It's awful. Oh, it's awful. They're so red. Miserable. He's they so look hot. like the hot dogs at the gas station. <laughs> Kyle, <laughs> can you last longer in this sauna or an ice bath? In the ice sauna, bath. and and b- okay. because like like the ice bath was just going to kill you. Um, it, it, like like mm, tomato. Right, tomato. So they'll both kill you. But like like one hand. Yeah, I guess. Dozen. I guess my question is like describe the ice bath, you know, like like here's oh, the thing. Like a horse trough filled with lots of ice cubes. Am I is there another kind? Yeah, but like how much ice to water and like like you know what I mean? Like like it really matters how much the, how much ice is in there. If you pack me in ice, then I'm probably gonna like have I'm gonna lose fingers Burn. and toes in the next little bit, right? Like if you just packed me in ice and then added water yeah. to that, I think that right. kills me pretty fast. Like 20 minutes, I'm dead. And I think I last longer than that in there. But if you just throw me in like a traditional ice bath, like athletes would use that has, I don't know, maybe one quarter ice. And then the rest is water. They, they, they fill in. As long as you sit very still, you'll form this thermal barrier around your body where your skin is warming the, 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 the liquid that's touching you. Mm-hmm. Right. And that'll be slightly warmer than everything around you. I if you really that. want to like take it, when you see somebody sitting there and just not moving, they're not being hard. The guy who gets in there and thrashes, he's getting some effects. He wants to be cold. Uh, the guys <laughs> thrashing are doing it because they can't resist and they're hurting themselves without knowing. Oh, oh they're yeah. Weak. It's they, uh, they, it's the same with hot tubs. Um, I went to, yeah. I went to a hot spring in Colorado, and uh, one of the tubs was like 117 degrees. It was way too fucking hot. Mm-hmm. And I sat in there and I was like, if I don't move everything's okay but when you moved it was like ah yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh god it's hot you got to just sit perfectly still uh and it was fine but man i don't i don't want to i'm too old to sit in extreme heat or cold at all like what is the point of that anymore like i'm I could just There's sit on a couch. Sixty dollars at stake, dude. Sixty dollars. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're an elite athlete. Eight thousand yeah. and a date with Miss Toy- Toyota. Come on, let's go. <laughs> I always love that when, uh, like, when Ninja Warrior there. was still Japanese, like they didn't have the American Ninja Warrior, and you watch these guys like train for an entire year to do the most grueling course like you've ever seen requiring just massive amounts of grip strength and these physiques that are that like uh are impossible and they're like what do you win it's like they win their honor it's like what the fuck is that (laughs) (laughs) these guys they give up their whole lives and like start building these courses in their backyard to do finger pull-ups all day long and then what they win is just like you did it great yeah Cool. They're they're so honor focused over there. You must be great to be a game show producer where they're like, I did it. I ate every scorpion. And they're like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, what do I win? He's like, you win the honor of eating a whole scorpion. In, in, in you are the scorpion Japan. king. Oh, yeah, the scorpion king. All hell scorpion. You, uh, not, uh, you are not entitled to financial compensation. <laughs> Dude. Now go to the hospital. Yeah, now go to the <laughs> hospital, <laughs> retard. Uh, oh you held a more jerryfish than anyone before. And it's like, yeah, I have stings. a legal question because this keeps. Oh, it's not a good one, but anyway, here's the deal. <laughs> yeah. The police it's finally. Everybody listen, out. Well, he's got a question. Yeah, yeah. So the police finally found out about all my murders, right? And yeah. here I am being questioned, and I, I say, you know what? No more questions. Talk to my attorney. But low key. I don't have an attorney and I don't know how to choose one. I'm in the room. I have maybe one phone call. What do I do? Google Maps? Like, what? No, they'll bring you a phone book. 
And then you just use that to choose your attorney? Mm -hmm. Find one. <laughs> we just got to get out of the room, right? Like You just need a guy to get You just bail, turn right? to the Jewish names and, and hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> just don't go to the first one, because that guy's just there because his name starts with A. Yeah. Mm, he probably right. changed it to that. Uh, God, I got like fucked. That. I went with Aaron Aronson again. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, they'll, they'll, the, if you and if you can't get an attorney, you know they have to stop asking you questions, and they can you can petition for a court appointed attorney at that point too. Say, hey, I I don't have an attorney. I I need an attorney for this. I don't have an attorney. Um, you know you're under arrest. They can't just keep you, uh, without providing that. Uh, if you qualify, you can't just lie. Like, <laughs> I got a hundred grand in the bank. I can't afford an attorney though. They're like, okay, well, here's one. No, but if you you go through the same process that you would get for a public defender, and they'll they'll get an attorney for you if the, if you uh, if you need to. But otherwise, they'll bring you a phone book and say, here you go, call whoever you want out of this uh, out of this mm, thing. But that's what they um, do. The other thing, uh, cops, when you when you invoke your right to remain silent or your right to an attorney, um, they have to stop interrogating you. But the trick is not everything they do is an interrogation, right? They can start talking. And uh, the most common thing they'll do is talk to their friend next to you mm -hmm. uh, about whatever to try and coax you into saying something about like to correcting them. No, that's not what happened. And then the interrogation can continue because now you've injected yourself into the conversation. So that's the hardest thing for people to say, I, I'm shutting up. Talk to I want to talk to my attorney, nothing else. And then they just don't like they they sit there and they're like, no, I mean he had it coming. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, but uh, yeah, they they have to they have to give you the opportunity to get an attorney. You don't have to pre have an attorney, although you should. Like if you know, if you're a gun owner, for example, uh, you should have an attorney that you know deals with those types of things uh, that you know you can call if you get arrested for something, especially like a self defense shooting or something like that or your gun gets confiscated, you're at a bar, you're involved in a bar fight, and they, they're like, oh, you can't have this at the bar. Whatever it is, you should have an attorney who's familiar with those issues as a, as a gun owner because it will help you rather than calling up the guy in the phone book, right? Like, you don't want that guy. You want the guy who knows what he's doing. And it won't cost you a ton to just go to a guy's um, law office and, and get his card. You know, you don't have right. to have a gun retainer. You just have to figure out mm -hmm. who the guy is and have his business card in your wallet. It yep. seems like bullshit that public defenders aren't available for wealthy people. Like firemen are available for wealthy people. You don't, they don't say, you know what? You could afford a fireman. Therefore we're going to charge you. They don't say that about police. They don't have toll roads that ask for your 10 forties and say only wealthy people have to pay <laughs> these, these tolls that like, there are very few government services where they restrict them from you, where they say you can't have this because you could buy it privately. What do you, public defenders are the equivalent of welfare. It's like you can't get anyone here to speak for you. That's a strong like, like, point. It's bullshit that welfare is not available to wealthy people. I want some. I want to. <laughs> I heard Chicago's got that five hundred dollar universal income coming, and it's like mm -hmm. right off the top, huh? Five hundred <laughs> smackers. <laughs> five hundred smackers. I mean, every I mean, year. I hope <laughs> that, that'll no, get my heroin addiction going. It's fine. Uh, uh, five hundred a, a month. Uh, like, like that'll buy all my drugs. And they're legal there, so like, like we're getting somewhere already. Like mm -hmm. Chicago's scary. I, I would hate to to. I would. I love the food in Chicago, but every time I, uh, I don't know, look into the shootings there, it's 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 the wild west, and it just doesn't get reported. It's a scary place. You just gotta. You definitely gotta not go in. Like, there's a couple neighborhoods that you just stay away from as much as possible. Just hang out if, by rich people. They don't get shot you can, in Chicago. You can listen to the police scanners of anywhere in the country when there's there's websites that allow you to do this. I, I know because I remember when the Boston bombing happened, we were so plugged. I don't think there had ever been a news story that we were so personally injected in because we I had my laptop open with multiple police scanners going when they were going uh, when they were looking for the last guy, when they were having like the shootout and standoff or, or, or whatever, uh, where one of them died by getting ran over by his brother or whatever. There's our of guys. Um, yeah, and, and I'm listening to all the bands and they're like, yeah, we're going down Smith Street. Like you can listen to them coordinate and like move in on this shooting. And, and, and like it was it was so cool to be that far ahead. You do that and you tune into Chicago any night of the week. Holy shit. They're doing it's it's rough stuff. It's every couple minutes. There's something there's something. 
And like, if you're a cop, it's like, I don't know. I wouldn't want to be a cop period, but that's a war zone. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's terrifying. And when you see the, like you see the murder statistics coming out of Chicago, you have to realize like four times as many of that were actually shot. Like that's just the people who died from it. Like, it, cause when you, when you look at gun crime throughout the country and you look at the amount of gun murders versus the amount of like uh, gun assaults, it's, I mean, it's massively higher. And so you think about that and you're like, damn, <laughs> if you were just in South Chicago for the night, just with the mic out, all you just hear is pop, 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 pop. And every couple minutes. Ugh, what a mess. Is it that bad? Is, yeah. it, is the shooting in Chicago really that extreme? I, I, so many times I question what I'm seeing on the news and I don't know what the score is. Like you, you can watch Fox news and they'll tell you the city of Chicago, the city of New York, they smell like urine and poop. The, the subways in New York are covered with human excrement, that it's this big mess, that the whole thing is terrible. And like, that's, I've been to New York. It's not like that. I, th I think They're the U S is already at around 50 <clears throat> or it was either 55 or 65 mass shootings. You know, that's more than we've had days of the year. What's a mass a shooting? Exactly. Now, now look, I don't like it when they call any time. Do you know the exact criteria they use? It's because different. There's multiple definitions depending on the department and depending on the level of government. Like if you're talking state often, governments versus federal. I suppose the point is that oftentimes when you hear what's considered a mass shooting, mo most people in the public would go, like, that's not my definition. I would think maybe a little bit crazier than that. That being said, that is a real indication of the amount of multiple gun shootings there are out there. You know, this isn't an instance of like, the, uh, an accidental discharge or like a, a police related thing. This is like a, a gunfight or something happened, right? Yeah. Uh, so most mass shootings uh, that are talked about when they do that, where there's one, you know, one mass shooting a day or two a day or whatever it is, that's usually it's, it involves uh, a shooting with four or more victims uh, mm. of some sort. Uh, and it doesn't involve deaths necessarily, right? So um, lots of this is connected to gang and drug activities in inner cities uh, because you'll have multiple people who are, who are victimized by mass shooting. And I think under some of the definitions, if someone is injured by some other thing in the course yeah. of a shooting, it counts as one of the casualties uh, or injuries for a mass shooting. But um, I was looking. Makes a little looking, sense, you know. You you holding up three people. You hit one of them with the gun. You you kick another one in the stomach, and she miscarries, and then you shoot two people. Let's make. Let's say there were five victims to this mass shooting. You know, like like you've yeah. done crazy damage here. Let's say I'm in a bank. I shoot one guy, and then three more get hurt as they stampede out the door. Mass shooting. It depends. Now, now we're getting back to Heather Heyer, right? And my and my thoughts on that that whole fiasco. Oh shit. When, when she had That's... a heart attack because that man um, was committing that act of terrorism. <laughs> Be very careful how you talk about that one. <laughs> I phrased it pretty well, don't you think? Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Uh, James Fields. <laughs> I stay <laughs> safe. <laughs> yep. uh, to give you a... Okay, so I pulled up the crime stats from Chicago PD. Uh, this is February 6th through February 12th of this year. Uh, there were 46 <laughs> shooting incidents. Um, that well, that's week. a long time. In, in a week? <laughs> in a, week? <laughs> a whole week? <laughs> oh, is it a leap there? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> six a day. Six a day. It's a big town. That is that is a pretty bad stat. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. like Honduras levels of shooting, right? And he didn't like let, dig into the worst that, week in Chicago history. This is just last. This is week. last oh. week. Yeah, yeah. The, the last twenty eight days, it's one hundred and fifty two. Yeah, uh, which is down four percent over twenty twenty two. Yeah, <laughs> good job. There we go. <laughs> you know, small victories. I'm sure that's not a statistical anomaly, and it won't surge right back. You know, <laughs> it's, uh, what's the mayor there? Is, is she the Lightfoot lady? Yeah, or something Lightfoot. Yeah, she, yeah. Uh, I don't Lori like Lori Lightfoot. People, I don't like to give people a hard time about their their physical appearance, but yeah, absolutely, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> See, this, he gets it. I, I mean, goodness. Uh, it, she always like looks Don, so surprised. It's like Don King and Beetlejuice had a baby, and Zach, they can got. Please have a picture of this woman. Oh my goodness! And, and oh look, my god! I, and, and look, yeah. I'll be like the first a baby one with to, fetal alcohol syndrome. And I'll play both sides. <laughs> you can line up the 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 governor of Arkansas 
um, at Huckabee, um, uh, Huckabee's daughter, and that's a yeah. that's a rough looking lady. Always too. one eye on the prize, that lady. Always one eye on the prize. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, cool. She is. The hair is like. Was she late? Like so. She makes me feel better. No about one my goes life, out but... with like, with their hair like that and is like, yeah, this is this is what I was going for. She was late, but you think it's today. It was actually to the genetic lottery. <laughs> <laughs> she lost the hairline lottery. Well, with, that's uh, a handsome looking fella right there. Uh, well, that, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> she is not. It's like one of those her. lizards who's looking in multiple directions at the same time. Yeah. Like their eyes are just kind of oh, going. Maybe she didn't know she was going out when they took it's... this picture. She's holding a microphone. <laughs> she a Maybe she thought she was playing a microphone. She's holding a microphone. I love that. Oh, uh, yeah. I bet they I bet they surprised her taking her garbage out. She's holding a microphone with an American flag behind her. That was her best look. They were, they were like, all right, Miss Lightfoot, let's, spin, let's get you looking right. And they, they spent time, and that's what they came up with. Anyway, just just a hard person to, to look at. I don't I don't really Brutal. know anything about her policies other than they seem to be ineffective. Or maybe I'm wrong, and without her there, it would have literally turned into mm-hmm. one of those like, um, like remember Man. Escape no, from you were New right York the first time where they where they just turned New York Manhattan Island into like a prison. <laughs> that is true because like, when she took charge of the city, like crime dropped dramatically. Did it, Taylor? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually gone up a bit. Well. I don't know much Has about it? it. You live, you live kind of near there. Do you? Uh, if I were you, yeah. I'd be like wandering into Chicago for a pizza. Like I would drive to Chicago and get a pizza. Well, I mean, like, it's it five more... hours from St. Louis. Like that's, that's nothing saying. for a Missourian. That's what I'm saying. It's within like that is. It's nothing for a Missourian. I'll pop to the beach and back. You know, okay, nice so... little day trip to South Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> I do five hours for pizza. For I don't pizza. like deep dish that much. I do. All right, so uh, Lori Lightfoot serves since uh, 2019, right, as the mayor of Chicago. Okay. So uh, this crime statistics page, um, it has the percentage change over the past, uh, two, you know, last year, two years ago, three years ago, four years ago. So she takes office four years ago. Cr- gun Shooting incidents in Chicago are up only 58% since then. Just the 58% though. Just 58. <laughs> That's like an F. It's not that bad. It's not like 100%. You know, that would be an A plus in failure. You'd think like, she would have found a way to like, View the stats from a different angle or something like cook the, not exactly cook the books but maybe just redefine certain crimes as other crimes and like cook Total, the stats a little i think they already do that right at, maybe they're doing that and still there's a 50 percent uptick i don't know it's scary um like, total really crime is up 66 percent. the best one though is motor vehicle theft which is up only 283 percent since she took office jesus christ <laughs> <laughs> is she like Holding like stay in your homes, everyone. It's criminal party hour. Like I was your top say, three- you guys are looking at this from the wrong angle. Is it is the cuck liberal in the group here? You're forgetting how many free cars are in Chicago now, right? You're not you're looking at like a victim. Man up, get yourself a car. Just steal one. <laughs> just right there. It's like those uh scooters. It's that new city scooter program. You just, yeah. you just open a car and you turn it on, you take it. And you leave it where you go. Bingo, Use someone bingo. else's credit card to pay for it. Put it in the slot. Mm-hmm. That's the future of commerce. All stealing. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is stealing. <laughs> and you'll be just, your, your wealth will be decided by agility and speed rather than, <laughs> than, than, than hard like work and stick Yeah, like the old days of, of the cavemen. Whoever threw exactly. the rock the best probably got the most pussy. You think so? Yeah, because he would have killed this competition with his good rock throwing. And the women would be unconscious. You ever well, see, they uh, would have been so impressed by it. Like they would have wanted to get the best yeah, jeans, the best rock throwing jeans, so that their guy, their sons could, you know. Yeah, your way doesn't need an attorney. No, <laughs> my way doesn't need an attorney. <laughs> well, it probably still does. There's I love how like within just there's just a little bit of having Nick on, he's like, Oh, I, you just have like a stats page pulled up. The way we do things here is like that doesn't sound right, but uh buddy. <laughs> hey, I'm giving that the old sniff test. No, I'm not gonna no, I'm not looking into it. No, I won't Google I, it. Yeah, there's a, there's another monitor right that. here. I will not Google it. <laughs> but it doesn't sound right to me. Uh, I wanted to see ask the, like, uh, uh, what tips, I guess, other than the don't talk to cops thing. Is there anything that like a layman, non-attorney should know that we all don't? Like one of those that, you know, how professions are a plumber knows all those tricks, like anything we should know about. Uh, yeah, I mean, most attorneys don't know shit about most law. 
There you go. That's that's one. Uh, most Ooh, attorneys, okay. uh, you know the most about law uh, when you take the bar, when you take the bar exam. And then after that, your general knowledge of law goes straight off a cliff and you start to find the things that you do uh, and and get paid for. And you start to focus on those things. And you can become very, very good in those specialized areas. But that's why you you like oh my my brother's an attorney and he's like a tax attorney or yeah. like a a corporate uh, in house counsel for press like it's like okay well that guy's gonna be useless if you're getting a divorce like you don't want that uh -huh. guy at all you want to go to your specialization I think people really underestimate how broad law gets and and the the amount of reading and research that you need to do to become extremely competent in a field is is way out there i mean uh mm -hmm. i i know we're recording this but tonight i'm going live i'm being sued right now oh shit um, what's going on uh <laughs> it's a long story but we it involves time. this it involves this weirdo named montagraph um who's yeah. been uh kind of plague plaguing my channel for what well, was like three years ago, I did an interview with Mr. Mediger, Mediker because uh, Montagraph was suing this other guy named Jake Morfinos for defamation. Mm -hmm. And um, so we were just laughing at his lawsuit. And then I get a phone call from this Montagraph guy like to talk to me about my interview with Mediker. And he was really pissed off. And so I was like, OK, you're stupid. Huh. And I didn't think anything of it. Well, then he starts like making memes about me. <laughs> and he's like, I'm part of the sweaty sausage squad or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I. I don't know, man. He's a weird guy. And uh, he does this. And so I started looking into him and um, Medica had been talking to me about it. He's like, he was an independent film producer and he produced this one uh, movie called the umbrella man. And um, not to be confused with that umbrella guy, but uh, the umbrella man was, it was like a, is a fictional snuff film um, involving like a minor girl and, and all this stuff. And then he, he had this other video where he was like sexually assaulting a melon, uh, which is weird. He redid the two girls, one cup video with a Barbie and a big pile of that. chocolate yogurt and stuff. And it's this really strange guy. Okay. And he was like, uh, like throwing all these memes and making videos. He's like, I'm going to make you famous, Nikki. And I'm like, Oh, okay, all right. Like I'm on YouTube. Let's make it happen. That's what I'm going for. <laughs> yeah. You're looking for views. And then he just disappeared after a while. I was like, okay, well then uh, come to October of last year, I get kicked off of YouTube completely. My channel gets deleted for three days and he pops up in my rumble chat talking about how he's the reason I got canceled and all this stuff, which wasn't true. Uh, I could tell you exactly why it was, uh, it was a, an activist who I'd pissed off who got me uh, canceled from YouTube. Um, but he was take, like claiming victory for it and all this stuff. And so I just started making fun of him. And now I'm being sued for making fun of him live on air when he came to my chat to like talk a bunch of shit. <laughs> I was talking shit right back. So, so what what is the point of like a kind of lawsuit like that? Because as just a layman, it doesn't seem like like that would go yeah. anywhere. Like you seem to just be laughing at it. Like, Oh, well it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, it's a defamation suit and intentional infliction of emotional distress. There's all sorts of problems with the emotional distress claims in Minnesota. Like he, to prove those out, you have to go get like therapy. You have to get actual mental uh -huh. health damage. You can't just say, well, I was distressed. Uh, I missed a day of work. Like that doesn't, that's not how you prove that out. Sure. And he doesn't seem to have anything like that. Uh, I guess that could change as the suit if the suit goes on. But the defamation claims, you know, it's loss of reputation. Typically, that's associated with loss of income, like you get fired from a job or you miss out on a contract that you would have otherwise gotten. He hasn't really alleged anything like that. He just alleges generally lost income. But hypothetically, if uh, if me saying, "Hey, this guy was on uh, YouTube having sex with a honeydew melon." And that caused him to not get a job with like a produce company or something. I guess <laughs> he could he could claim damages that way. But the the reason I bring up this thing in this subject very specifically is not just shameless self promotion. But um, I you know I could have fought this thing on my own. Like I know how to fight a defamation case, but it's I'm not like a specialist. I'm just an asshole. And mm -hmm. so I I hired Mark Randaza, who's one of the premier defamation defense attorneys in the country. And he, like we, he filed his, uh, our motion to dismiss yesterday and I'll be talking about it tonight. And when you read this motion to dismiss, 
it has extremely elaborate and intricate legal arguments. I would add no concept of making like the amount mm -hmm. of research I would have to do to get to what their basic plan seems to be is monumental. It would have taken me, you know, uh, dozens and dozens of hours well, to I'm even sure come up with how many plan. hours it took. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and he, he attorneys are great the, about that. He sent me the bill for it. And it's not little, it's not little at all. No, uh, best in the country. I bet that's a premium. <laughs> <laughs> it's not cheap, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, the the crazy thing is the funny thing to me is that now Montegraff's lawyer is because uh, I I have a feeling he's never done a defamation case, and if he has done one, it's not like this. I know his lawyer actually. He's a lawyer in my town that oh. he hired, and I know him, and and th they they typically do workers' comp claims, but um the legal argument that just got dropped in his lap that he's going to have to research is going to cost Montegraff a fortune, which yeah. is hilarious to me. Uh, it's great. It's like, okay, let's see you pay for that one, Monty, because my lawyer like had that idea, I think, because he knows this area of law so well. Mm -hmm. Your lawyer doesn't practice multi-state defamation law and now he's going to have to go into like conflict of laws uh, questions between because Montegraff's from Colorado and I'm in Minnesota and he's suing me in Minnesota, probably to avoid the anti-slap statute in Colorado because we don't have one. However, like the conflict of laws arguments says that Minnesota courts should apply the Colorado anti-slap to him because his damage would have been suffered in Colorado. What damage would this idiot suffer in Minnesota? He doesn't have like a Minnesota business. Oh, okay. So he's he's clearly forum shopping. And so the there's there's a very good argument that the laws of Colorado should be applied to him. And now his attorney, who's a Minnesota attorney, is going to be trying to argue conflict of laws and that Minnesota state law should apply to keep the lawsuit even alive at this point. Otherwise, it'll get dismissed and I'll get awarded fees. And that would be catastrophic for, you know, Montegraff. But, um, you know, if you yeah. just hire some guy out of the book uh, here in Minnesota, if I would have just gone to anybody who doesn't do specialize in, in defamation cases and specifically like nationwide defamation cases, I'd just get a bog standard defense on defamation. The same thing I could type up. Right. Yeah. As opposed it, to it what, makes sense, what this guy's done. It, you know, yeah. it's the same thing with with uh, with, with medicine. Right. Like like. like Mm -hmm. I bet doctors get annoyed all the time. They're at a party and someone's, hey, can you look at this? Can you look at this thing right here? And it's like, dude, I'm, I'm not a that kind of fucking doctor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I'm like, a podiatrist. Like, which is true, but at the same time, there's a no. little, as a I'm layman, a I'm like, like, like <laughs> as a layman, you're like, yeah, but you know what a fucking staph infection is. So stop being a little bitch yeah. about, about which school you went to for how long and look at this boil or whatever. Tell me, tell me what it is. And the same right. thing with a lawyer. I'd want to be like, hey, will you, will you look over this contract? I don't do contract law. Yeah, but you'd notice if somebody misspelled something. Like, like, come on, take a fucking look, dude. Like, right. give me a break. And there's a huge difference between needing someone to just take a peek at something and, yeah, and give you kind of a general idea. And most contracts, like, honestly, most contracts in most people's lives don't need that much work. Like, they're, they're basic agreements that go through. Now, when you get into commercial contracts, like, you're going to lease out a space from a giant uh, chain of commercial property owners – not like the guy in town who owns a building, but like this massive multinational place that owns buildings in every major city. And you get, you're like, I just want my thousand feet of square feet of retail. And then they give you the contract and it's 75 pages. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, yeah, you want a lawyer to look over that because you're going to get screwed if you don't go through and redline out a bunch of stupid stuff. But yes. um, no, go ahead. Do you, do you often or have you ever had good examples of where, you're because you are a lawyer, you're able to be very annoying and sort of a malicious compliance kind of way in little middling disputes with people that normally <laughs> it would make no sense to contact and hire a lawyer. But here you are a lawyer yourself. So I just I'm thinking I, of like in the Sopranos that Tony wants to buy a house from the guy and the guy's already sold to someone else. But they're, they're, the funds are a little held up. And Tony's like, I can come with cash now. And he's he's like, look, Mr. Chang. You're out, all right. I can torch you into the poorhouse, okay? You're out. That's it. You want and then and he's like, yeah, he's, he is the lawyer. Like this isn't going to cost him anything but his time to like make this guy's life a living hell. Mm -hmm. Has there ever been a time where you get get got, had to? You could do that. Oh, or have I done. do that. I do that all the time when uh, <laughs> related to the 
related yeah. to my YouTube channel. Cause like I'll get, I'll get copyright claims. Right. And mm -hmm. so, you know what you have to put into the copyright dispute stuff to, to comply with, with the copyright safe Harbor uh, provisions and, and make sure you're filing your counter notification properly. But you also know like how many times you can say, fuck you in that thing to the person <laughs> and know that there's some corporate attorney who has to read the response that you get where you're like calling NBC a bunch of sodomites or whatever. Like you could just <laughs> because there's nothing they can do about you saying that. They just have to sit there and go, God sucks. And uh and then and then they're you're ultimately gonna win your counterclaim because YouTube doesn't decide copyright issues, yeah. they just follow the DMCA process. So there's that. And then I will get uh my favorite is getting cease and desist from lawyers on subjects that I'm talking about. Like if I'm talking about someone and their lawyer sends me a cease and desist because I said something that was offensive or I released a document that I can only get these damn documents from a public website anyway, but yeah. they're like, you mm -hmm. released a document that you shouldn't have had. And it's like, <laughs> shut up. And so like, <laughs> I just respond back to their cease and desist in the most belligerent way possible. Um, <laughs> and then the, the I guess I the you're going to like, Build a, build a fence next to your neighbor or something. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh... Oh, your innocent, naive perspective. No, <laughs> it's more intense. No, I don't like messing around with that stuff because you don't want to mess with people. When people get in property disputes with their neighbors, it's like, do you really want this? Like every day of your life, you're going to have to wake up and deal with the asshole that you may have helped create. Like that's, those are the types of disputes you should try mm -hmm. as hard as you can and not have a lawyer uh, come into it. Cause once you do, they're, they're done. Like they're, they're not going to talk to you. Uh, you know, your, your mail is going to get left in the snow. Like they're going to just walk by your mailbox. Like, oops, just tip it out into the <laughs> yeah. snow. Your mailman screwed up. Uh, yeah. they'll plow their driveway and just leave a big pile in front of yours. And, you know, you or, don't want to mess with yeah, that shit. You just brought up like the, the impetus to one of the scarier shootings we've ever seen. You, you yeah, might know. that was awful. It was, I know it was, it, we've all seen the clip here. Oh, we watched yeah, it on the yeah. show. It's so hard to watch, but, but it, essentially neighbor had been piling their snow up, shoveling their own driveway out oh. into the other guys like drive and the the offending party and his wife are out there screaming at this guy guy goes back in the house gets a gun and he long story short he kills them both he kills them both in the street over that and it was snow it was not quick and it was not like it was not like clean and pretty it was not just like blam blam yeah it was, it was rough uh, that's a hard video to watch, man. I, yeah. I hate watching if that If I shit. recall that video, like, after he murdered them, he, like, went back in his house like he'd just taken trash out. Like, yep. not even, like, I gotta get inside. Like, just, just kind of walk back inside. He said so. I think he's... Oh, I, hope like, I, didn't, he, I hope I didn't want, you know, was, miss more than the commercial like, break. He kept mm -hmm. saying, she'll leave... She should have kept fucking with me. You should have kept fucking with me. Yeah. Like, 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 several times, and it's, it's like, god damn. Yeah, because she was still alive. For a while, like the the woman was still yeah. alive for a bit, and he had to go like get a second gun. I he think. went and got a different gun. He started with yeah. a handgun, and and um he went back and got a rifle and finished them both off with a rifle. Uh, you see him put, basically put the rifle to her face uh, by the end. Um, yeah, that's uh, yeah. a that's a horrifying video. Foolish. Yeah, yeah. Like I can uh, watch a lot of bullshit, but it's it's like when you your see snow. Him, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> shovel your snow, people. That's the lesson here. Shovel your snow, assholes. Shit. What was it's the one... fight about? Why? Why did he shoot him? They had you, TP'd his house. They were, they, they mm. shoveled their driveway snow into his. Oh, okay. into his driveway. Yeah, yeah. Which is rude. It's very like, rude. You, you can't be doing stuff like that. But also in that video, I didn't see a big giant pile of snow in front there. It looked just as much like the guy who was driving by there doing was the so pusher. Much history. Made there was that, so much yeah. history yeah, they, there. They, they, like, they, like, that wasn't their first bickering. Yeah, there was hmm. so much history. No, I agree with you so much about like, you can't have like a neighbor that you're in a dispute with. We got to solve this. If you take the L, take the L and yep. then bake cookies, dude. Like, like you're going to need that guy to pick up a package or to fucking call it. it who, he's gonna be the one that watches your house burn down, right? Like, like he's gonna be the yeah. one to not drink call the, in the fire <laughs> match in his hand. <laughs> oh, let's say, hey, honey, look, look, uh, his house is burning to the ground. What? <laughs> Taylor, Taylor's house is burning to the ground. Look, oh yeah. no way! And they just he's like out in his like burn. yard. He's the first one to know. He's like, help! help. He's, he's spraying his own lawn <laughs> with a hose to make sure that it doesn't get scorched. <laughs> like that's all he's doing.
They, what are you doing? I'm on Ash fuck. Watch just in case they float over. Yeah, just in case yeah. they float on Ash Watch. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you want to be friends with that guy. Yeah, that's the guy you need to do your favor every now and then, right? I, yeah. I've never had a dispute with a neighbor at all. Mm. Like the the only thing I could possibly think of, I did think about this the other day, is the neighbor on one of my sides in my like all my neighbors are in their fifties. So like I feel weird like talking to them like I don't know. Like, like neighbors. It feels bizarre. Oh, uh, you don't feel it, like you're their peer. I don't feel like I'm a real adult because I'm the youngest. I'm, I'm like, I live near a bunch of boomers for the most part, but they have yeah. a tree hmm. that is looming over my sunroom, like from their yard, kind of like, like that. And I was mm-hmm. thinking just the other day, because I just paid a bunch of my trees removed. I'm like, what do I even do? Like, do I go over there and say like, hey, your tree is looming over my house. Could you take care of that? And then they'll probably say, no. And I'll go, okay. Like, what? Do you mind next, if I, I take do? care of that? Yes, tell is me the what's follow up. up. Um, yeah, trees. So, t- tree law is actually a specific piece of law <laughs> that exists. <laughs> you need, and, uh, is, he bullied by the, the is he bullied by the other attorneys? <laughs> you need a, dude, <laughs> so I specialize he, in bird law. <laughs> yeah. No, he looks like a brawny man. He's got fucking big beard and an axe thrown over his shoulder. Yeah, well, here's I want to know about tree law. Here's the thing with tree law. Uh, okay, so a, a tree is a piece of property, and some people really like their trees, right? So let's say you go to your neighbor's property, and you just, like, it's blocking your view of the lake, and you're like, fuck this tree. This Let's, let's say it's a 120-year-old oak tree. So you mm-hmm. just and chop that down. Don't even ask any questions. You go back inside. You say, shouldn't have done that, right? And uh, mm-hmm. And then they're like, they sue you. What happens now is that you lose because you didn't have permission to fuck with their tree. It's clearly on their property. All the facts are in their favor. So you lose that case. Now you have to replace a 120-year-old oak tree. Mm -hmm. You don't replace a 120-year-old oak tree with a new oak tree. Mm -mm. You have to get yourself a 120-year-old oak tree or you have to come up with the financial compensation for it. Do you know how much that fucking costs? I can't to imagine. Get, <laughs> to get a 120-year-old tree. There's a guy who that, evaluates that. <laughs> just scoop it out and put it back scoop in the out, yard. Bring it on a truck because it's not in the same Doesn't town as take. you. <laughs> and yeah, you got to bury it. And then in Minnesota, if that happens, you get triple damages on it too. So, I mean, you're talking cutting down a tree like that. You're You're in a like a quarter million dollar proposition on damages wow. that you end up paying. You know what the most famous case Jesus. of that has to be? Um, that thing with Alabama and Auburn, right? Where um, where the guy, uh, I, I want to say an Auburn fan goes on like Auburn fan radio down there, you know, good old boys radio. And he's like, oh, they think it's funny, huh? They think it's funny to make fun of the Auburn Bulldog, or whatever they are. Well, I'll tell you what I did. I went up there the other day and I poisoned the red oak tree. And they've got oh, some sort shit. of like ancient old oak tree that's like Alabama's tree. I went up there and I poisoned it. And the guy on the radio is like, you killed the tree? Well, it ain't dead yet, but it will be. And, it's, <laughs> and, and sure enough, like, I don't remember exactly what he'd done, but he like drilled holes into this tree and introduced poison or something. And he killed this <laughs> What an ancient... asshole. Dude, it's ruined his life because they found him, of course. Yeah. And he's like, he just denied, denied it. He's like, I said that. But I did not poison that tree. <laughs> I did not have sex with that tree. Not a single time. Didn't do it. I think there's like it. 30 Why? for 30 about this shit. It's, it's, it, it's ridiculous, the drama that went down over the tree. But I could, dude, you can't replace that. It, it, I mean, I guess you can, like you described, but that's incredibly costly. It, it really is. Yeah. Tens and tens of thousands of dollars. It oh, has to be. so much. Like, but, but what would happen, so... But if like a storm came through and knocked their tree onto my house, they would have to because it's their property. That's their fucking problem, right? Potentially, yeah. I mean, it gets it, it always gets complicated, um, and it's going to be different state by state. And so you, this is this is why that specialty is important because in one state you might have a duty to prune the tree above your own house just to the property line, right? Like so, you can't. You can't chop down their tree, but you might have to cut the branch that's looming over your house that poses a danger. Um, in another state, you might not be able to do that. You might have to uh, ask them permission to do it, or they might have a duty to do it. So you really got to kind of get into, uh, on a state-by-state basis, <clears throat> who has to do this. 
uh, or not. But that's why you always want to check with a competent lawyer in the field of uh, in the field of law in your jurisdiction. Of course, the stupid lawyer caveat, but uh, but there's a reason for it. And it's because it's different place mm-hmm. to place in Minnesota. Triple damages on chopping down a tree. Um, in another state, you might not get triple damages. Uh, you might it might just be single. In a different state, damages may be calculated differently. It might not have to replace it with an another tree. You might you might have to replace it with some I don't know some comparably aged uh, tree, but it doesn't have to be the same thing or whatever. So I just need to look up Missouri tree law. Growing up, growing mm-hmm. up, I had uh, my dad had two neighbors that hated each other. These were next door neighbor farmers. So we're not just talking about adjoining quarter acre lots we're talking about adjoining property lines that extend for a couple miles of walking if you're doing a straight line around a whole property the way it it adjoins 100 acre properties that adjoin one guy's dogs that apparently chased the other guy's livestock exhausting and killing it thereby he felt like he was owed restitution for these dead calves the other guy's telling him to go fuck himself so now we hate each other and there's like thousands of dollars on the ground burnt essentially as far as one guy's concerned. And so the other guy, he's like, yeah, he sneaks over here at night. I think he steals the pins out of my tractors because <laughs> they <laughs> like little things go missing around his farm that are like little pins on your tractors. Like, what do you do now? Go to the John Deere store. Like we can't work today. Like it would be a problem if you took <laughs> all the pins out of somebody's tractor who needed to do work. Yeah, and and, this, it, and okay. so, and so like, and then, like, my cousin worked for Levi, the man who kept losing the pens to his tractors. And there came a day where he's like, yeah, spray the, um, you know, all the weeds with Roundup, you know, kill all of that over there. And, uh, and and Scott's like, well, what what about over there when I get next to Calvin's place? He's like, put it on full blast and kill everything that you can reach over that property line. If you can hit it with that, kill it. And he's just <laughs> killing 12 feet over the property line. It's dead. <laughs> Like what a douchebag. The, the littlest anything they could do, anything they could do back and forth to like, like if you could dump a pile of shit onto the other guy's property mm-hmm. or like uh. in, you know, anything. You know, if you're gonna cut a tree down, they had that property line redrawn by various experts who used varying techniques from multiple times. It's like, no, no, this guy's bringing the fucking laser in. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you know the title of that f- property, the title search on it, it's a, like it's like, uh, well, uh, fourteen feet away from the old fence that runs down perpendicular to the creek. Uh, Walk until you hear the bees. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you look at some of these things that that happened with my my wife's grandpa out here owns this. Uh, he, he owned the their family farm, which it. Like they didn't farm it, but it was, it was an old farm site. And like the deed to this thing was written in fucking Aramaic or whatever. And so they, <laughs> they're like, they're talking about these reference points that don't exist. Yeah. And so they had to go find a guy like to solve a property dispute. This guy is like 89 years old and he remembers when they wrote it and he's like, yeah, that's the fence that we used to climb and kids. It was right around here between this tree and this tree. It's like, oh, Jesus, like this is what you're relying on. This is how you're drawing property lines. With but an those, elderly man. <laughs> yeah, those old farm properties are like that, though, because they typically stick around, you know, passed down for generations. A lot and, of metal pins. Yeah. <laughs> like, 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 like down here, like like if, when I would walk through the woods hunting and stuff, in particular mm-hmm. around property lines that maybe didn't even exist anymore, you'd find those pins in the ground sometimes. Yeah. Um, and also um, like, like alien, um, not alien, uh, Indian uh, 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 burial sites. We would, we would find that every now and then stuff like hmm. that. You ever find anything like that, Taylor? An Indian burial site? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Unless it's I was just, just walking over it on, in the woods and I didn't know. Yeah. Remember we, we, played, never, we played Tomb we Raider. Might, we put our my, like my short <laughs> shorts on and we get in there. We dig them up. Yeah, my friend Dan, we had him on PKA with the divorce story. Kyle, you remember? He found yeah. five uh, grave sites in a row on his property. They were slaves. They just buried them. Yeah. And, How did he find? Oh, they were like. Did he when he got them out, did he make them start working again? <laughs> How did he find <laughs> They were just unmarked yeah, headstones, you know? like this big. In like, and obviously they were placed there by a person. And uh, I don't know how he knew knew, but like he looked into it or something. Did he get him tested? They were like genetically, were well, they, they like, didn't this dig is an African person from. No, they didn't uh, dig him up. From they just, like they cleared the area and they found the head, the head 
tombstone is that what it's called yeah but it's yeah. not much of a tombstone it's like, it's an like damn i don't think it said like the rock. race on the head even back then we were decent enough not to put your race on the headstone yeah it was mostly like, crosses and such yeah they throw your religion up there was there, nothing guess. but a little square rock type thing with no okay like a no marker name on it anything. or anything yeah marker is yeah. a better term yeah i don't think you're allowed to go Can you guys feel sad for the aside. for the shitty headstones at uh at cemeteries so, like the, sometimes where you'll like see a really you'll see Here's an incredible one with like an angel on it or like something so, and then you'll mm -hmm. see one that's like oh man like you died in like 2018 man like there should be something else here so you might not know this but elberton georgia is the granite capital of the planet there's a place in like virginia or i think that might like occasionally like oh we got production up this year coming. No, don't anyway. even give them that dude you have such a lead so it's real cheap <laughs> here is what i'm getting at so the graveyards get ridiculous uh, for 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 cheap uh, on the cheap here because they're digging it out. But are they gaudy? Forty five, yeah, like forty five minutes from where like I live. That's where the planet supply of granite is. So it's it's a little cheaper. So yeah, if you see somebody that's just got like that little, it's like, dude, my dog's got one of those. Like, you know, like like when my dog, <laughs> like, like when dad's like favorite Jack Russell died. It's like we gotta get Hank a fucking stone, man. We gotta get him a little, you know, like like you know, some shape like this, yeah. fucking engrave his name Hank. and shit. Go out there, hit it with a pressure washer every year. Make sure we remember. You know, he was a good boy. He killed I want a lot to of go rats. in the other That's direction. Sweet. You know how they have family cemeteries. People with some land might have a family cemetery. Yellowstone, they do one. Sure. Let's do a family urn, right? Where you just pile all <laughs> the ashes <laughs> in a big in. mason jar. Just, you know, oh, and, and we carry it around like the Heisman. <laughs> <laughs> They got a generation in, we get a bigger jar, you know. They gotta color it. the they gotta color the ashes too, like dye the ashes. So it's like oh, those yeah. fucking sand art <laughs> that you made as a kid. Yeah, Just yeah. pile up the layers. Like there's dad right there. He's the orange one. Forget it. We're doing this now. That's the now way. someone fucking shook the family urn. <laughs> <laughs> someone now it's it brown. Over. Now it's just sand. <laughs> the moving I guy just fucked everything up. Point. As much as I like that idea. What you can actually have done now is have the ashes compressed into a fucking diamond. Do you know about yeah. this? I've heard. Yeah, like, I've heard about that. That's and cool. then, and then it's it's now you're making enough. money on your loved one's debts. No, 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 no. Like, like stick with oh. me here. Like, then you can launch that diamond into space for like affordable. Like, like, like it's like two thousand dollars a, a kilo some or proof something. It's now. in space. Dude, oh, oh Elon, I'll take care of you. I run a, oh, right. I run, a, I run an ashes. You don't trust I, Elon? I, no. guys, I, I run. I happen. This is so funny, Kyle. I run. Yeah, space I shipped all the company. diamonds to space, Woody. Don't worry. It's <laughs> it's it's only six grand at my service, Kyle. I will send anything you give me up to space, guaranteed. I'll show you a picture of it in space. <laughs> guaranteed. Guaranteed. I'm gonna take the picture. Guaranteed. <laughs> you were you let the tech guys in the in the lab worry about that one. <laughs> <laughs> you you, you the let the boys in the lab. Station. <laughs> you let some guy on Fiverr handle that. Sorry, and yeah. job. <laughs> you let your ass shoe I found on Fiverr handle that. <laughs> you see that floating Russian astronaut with a DSLR camera sitting at the little <laughs> porthole in the space station? He's taking my pictures right now of all the shit that I sent into space. That's what's going yeah. on. Mm -hmm. no, I would like that though, like compressed into the diamond and everything. I think if you know one of my dogs passes away, I think that's what I'm gonna do to him. I'm gonna make a little you know diamond if you out of him. If you have one of those asshole neighbors that you end up killing over a snow dispute, Jeez. you have their ashes pressed into a diamond and then you pawn that shit. Yeah. And you keep I don't diamond, think it's a valuable diamond, diamond I... in your ass <laughs> disrespectfully. I don't I don't think we can make a butt plug out of it, one of those. Oh, you don't have to get a lot of money trick. for it to be funny. Yeah, and if it's not a real diamond, I don't I don't want that anyway. Like, well, that, I mean, it's no, I mean, it's the blood and suffering diamond. that makes it special, Kyle. Well, it would kind be of blood an actual diamond. Like, the ashes blood are so like idea, like the actual like cremation makes a ton of sense, but the part where they like give you the ashes afterward is fucking weird. Like, yeah, it, it's like, what, what do I what do I do with this? It, like, it this, came like, in a bag. box that looked like uh, yeah, it comes uh, in a Chinese food. It's like it's like the biggest order of family size kung pao chicken you've ever gotten. It's like one of those folding boxes. Um, yeah, and, I'm, and there's more ashes grand... than you think there are gonna be. Um, Way yeah. more. Yeah, it's like it's like grandma weighs like seven pounds now. She's so fucking skinny. It, it, it like like I didn't know what we did with it then. I'm and I'm holding. I'm like looking around yeah. for like who's in charge. And they're like you are. And I'm like oh no. Isn't it like pulverized <laughs> bones <laughs> mostly the ashes? Like uh, because like I cremation mean, doesn't like. Or like turn your bones into ash. I think they need to like yeah. smash no, no, those does. up and everything afterward, right? No, it turns your bones to ash. It gets 
For some reason, yeah. I thought there was some they, smashing shit they did after. I think they, have to, they might have to do a little grinding on some of them because there's like they they break down quite a bit, but I think there's still some chunks that get kind of ground up. Yeah, I think? think that's right. It'd be interesting, like because Woody's going to have like hardware that falls out, thinking, right? What is the melting like, point of all that shit I have in me? Oh, titanium. No thanks. Yeah. Like 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 yeah. two thousand degrees Celsius or something stupid. Like, like they remove like, women's implants melt. before they do it. <laughs> I I read about oh like, the stink alone. Yeah, apparently they remove implants before they cremate. They, sound, they just like why is that? Cut them out. I yeah. don't know. And it they was something I read online, like probably in a very non-reputable place. And I'm paranoid. Yeah, if it's a Reddit but, comment, you know it's true. No, you got to recover. It's probably a Twitter. You can, you can better oh, than I was, I was on. I was on poll. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> just... <laughs> oh, yeah well, the good fun. thing about uh, all the shit that's in you, Woody, is they can just recycle that and put it in someone else. That's yeah. good thinking. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can, can be like, if you get hope into like stock car racing, you can be her shifter, that metal thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And then I'm she not... can be like, I'm going to need your help here, Dad, like in a movie. And then she wins the race. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's so awful. This, this is, is my a favorite future. Movie. No, this is great. <laughs> I'm gonna have to fill in the gaps for like all of it, but the end. But, <laughs> but trust me, there's gonna be a triumphant moment. Uh, like, <laughs> I think the opening scene is where I break another leg. Yeah, the opening scene <laughs> breaking another leg. Ah, this metal thing will never be used to win the Indy 500. <laughs> a little foreshadowing. <laughs> what a horrible movie. <laughs> I like what do we call like crankshaft? Something. Like, Ooh, that's what do they do off. with like, 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 like? I saw you talking about like removing the pacemakers and and uh, those auto defibrillators and stuff like that. That shit is expensive as hell. I just feel like on the used market should be able to get something back, right? Like, like that should go to those African doctors who do the charity work. Like, it's like that's mm -hmm. what we should do. We should be donating those things. or to a veterinary hospital at least. Like, like let's Pace make one dog be long. able to 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 you know cross that rainbow road a little later. All right, yeah, I don't want a haunted one though. I want a new one. No, like, I, if I have want to get a pacemaker. I don't want. I don't want the one that some other guy. He's dead. It didn't work oh, that well. One hundred machine. Yeah, I want to be ashamed one. of its failure and it would try extra hard. For me. <laughs> <laughs> the machine spirit. Only yeah. if it was properly anointed with the uh, incense and oils, right, and prayed to the Omnesiah. That's right. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Do pacemakers I, usually? I thought that was a, a little space marine behind you. Is that a salamander oh, or something? This is all Warhammer books. That's all yeah. this is. Oh, you got to talk shelf. to Kyle about that. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I are, are, you, are you playing Warhammer 40k, the new game, the Dark Tide? top down RTS? Oh, uh, the uh, Total War, Total War Warhammer. No, no, no. I'm. I haven't played a, a video game since the Johnny Depp trial. I like <laughs> outside of like, I spent like. An, an hour like two days between then and now playing i just have not had time um i liked total war one and two i ha I never bought three because they didn't come out with the the stupid crazy special editions that they had for one and two they're like 200 bucks and they came with all this shit like a dwarven drinking horn and a brood ring where it has like a d6 dice around the ring that you can spin and shit that's cool they, but they didn't do that for number three, so I never got around to buying it. And since I haven't played it, I haven't bought it. But um, I did pre-order uh, Rogue Trader, which was made by the guys who did Pathfinder Kingmaker. And it's um, it's a top-down RPG, like party-based RPG, like a D&D &D game. But it's it's uh, under the Rogue Trader rules. Um, and that looks, that looks really fucking cool. Hmm. So I'm looking forward to that shit. Yeah, um, I've gotten super into 40K in maybe the last couple of years, but um, I'm a big fan of Dark Tide. I liked Vermintide before it. I'm not happy with the current state of Dark Tide. I'll go back to it when they have improved it some. But we've been heard. talking about playing some RTS, and that that um, Warhammer um, um, is Total, really good. I, Total I War is great, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I've played a ton of that. Um, the second one, like, man, I don't know, a thousand. I, we, I game a lot, so like, like when I say a ton, mm -hmm. I mean like a thousand hours or more. Oh, um, shit. And um, but but uh, I like that game and I, I love the 40k stuff. I, I'm excited to see Henry Cavill take that on. I, I'm going to trust Amazon not to do a good job and maybe just let him do his thing. Uh, it's going to be cool to see because The Last of Us is killing it right now. Um, or Woody doesn't like it because he 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 felt like it was too slow. You didn't like enjoy the, the emotional one character more than development. The previous one, two two episodes ago, Agreed. was not that good. But the last one, I mean, I liked it. I liked it. And they definitely moved the plot along. So good. Yeah, I like that they only spent two episodes in the city. 
mm -hmm. um, and uh, and moved on. But but yeah, I'm hoping that Amazon is able to 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 one up HBO and and do a do, do 40k justice, or at least do some small part of 40k justice. Taylor, did you finish reading the book? Did you? Yeah, finish I finished Krieg. Oh, Which one? Wonderful. Krieg. Krieg. Oh, okay. I enjoyed I don't it. Think and I've I, read that one. Now that you've it's got interesting, all those books. it's it, it shows the the it gives you the simultaneously it tells the complete history of the Krieg, why they are what they are and how they got that way, while telling a current tale of how they are influencing a, uh, a a war on a planet. So it's 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 pretty strong and it's not that thick. And I think that awesome. guy wrote. I don't remember the guy's name who wrote it. He's written a lot. Steve of, Lyons. Uh, Steve Lyons. That's who it is. He's written a ton of that. Lyons with a Y, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Lyons with a y. Yeah. He's got a Y. I. Uh, I, my I, the one the big hope I have for the Amazon uh, series is I believe the rumor mill is that it's they're doing Eisenhorn, um, which I don't be, know that. Oh, dude, uh, that's so that's where I started my 40k journey, like actually getting into it. Uh, it was probably it was damn near ten years ago, I guess. Um, I was working and I I would just walk to Barnes and Noble on my lunch breaks through the skyways in Minneapolis, and I just went to the sci-fi section, picked up the book with like the hardest looking motherfucker on the cover, and it's it's <laughs> uh, Gregor Eisenhorn, and um, he's an inquisitor, and it's it's a it's a three part book series written by Dan Abnett, and th there's now. I mean, so then there's a spinoff series of Gideon Ravenor, who was like his apprentice. And then uh, there's another series that follows. So the, now their total series of Eisenhorn is like 12 books. Mm. And they're all just bangers. Abnett's like okay. a really intense writer. He mm. writes, uh, he wrote a lot of um, the good, one, some, one of the good runs of Iron Man. Uh, he oh, wrote. Okay. And uh, yeah, see, he's great. I, I I got introduced to it uh, through YouTube initially. I had, I had never heard of the universe before. If I had, I didn't understand what I was like seeing. Yeah. Um, and I was then and still am really drawn to the broader timeline. Well, the complete timeline, like the prehistory. Yeah. Um, 30K is more interesting to me than 40K. And, uh, and, and you know, what I, I, I'm always like, yeah, but what's happening right now? Like right now, and like like, what's the new That's thing going on, on the cutting edge? Is is what I always want because I want big changes. Like I want the emperor to like do a thing. We well, know that's ha that's happening right now. They're writing mm. those books because uh, Gilliman is back. Yes. Um. And and that's the new thing. And the the speculation is that the lion is coming back because I think that's one of the books coming out. So like the lion is going to come back uh, because he's been sleeping and um. And that's that's the big fucking change. Uh, Angron just came back because he was banished uh, by by what's his face, um, Caldor Drago, who's fucking hilarious, by the way. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Angron just came back, and so now there's and and apparently is not going to be able to be banished again to the warp. So it's going to be Fun. just a disaster. Yeah, see, I like that stuff. I like the broader timeline, and like like I'm really fascinated with the 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 emperor and like the thunder warriors and like and mm -hmm. and and all of that stuff and like the deep deep lore. Um, I really enjoy it. And uh, there's so many good YouTubers that that just do a fantastic job with their voice work. That um, there's a series about the 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 Ogren, um, that I love so much that made me fucking cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that, um, that's a really good one. We have it's to we have to get back to that or you have to get back to that guy about us doing uh, voice acting in one of those episodes. I would love yeah, to. Yeah, Zach, Zach, send me his email again. There, there's a there's a YouTuber who wanted us to do some voice work for him. And, and who is it? Do you know, um, it's the one who did the the Ogren story, right? It, it might be, the one it, that had the old Ogren story. Yeah, like he himself is an amazing voice actor. Uh, yeah, he, sure. So. That part where he's like, "Mama told me someone's being bullied. It's an Ogren job to stop him." Yep. And that's true, because mama can't lie. And it's like... <laughs> he, just, he had this Forrest Gump thing where he kept saying, and mama don't lie. Yeah. And it's yeah. like mama's been dead mama because her plant, because she was on Warrior Warriors here? Yeah, it's um like, like, like he talks about... It, it's, it's You're getting a, a gigantic galactic story that's epic as fuck, but from the point of view of an ogre. And so it's a very simpleton kind of view of it which at times is charming and other times it's really um, uniquely painful to listen to because he doesn't quite understand that like someone's daughter is dead because Katie has been destroyed. He doesn't quite understand. He just knows that 
they're, he can't see them anymore. And like, there's lots of sad stuff like that. Um, and it's real, real good because his voice, his voice acting is tremendous. Um, I, really, really I, I enjoy that guy quite a bit. But yeah, yeah, I, I got there. it pulled up here. Warrior Tear is the guy's name. I'll I'll check this out. I haven't seen him before. I I get drawn yeah, into. I'm the, not the as familiar shorts. as Kyle to this universe, but like this guy does a tremendous job of getting you invested in it. The shorts are quite good if you if you just click the shorts on his channel because mm-hmm. like they're these little like very digestible little instances that will get you so intrigued about a broader story, and, and that's what you need, right? Because it's such dense mm-hmm. material to plow into if you don't know where to start. Uh, it, it can be overwhelming and you can like check out and you're like, I don't know what a fucking this, that, or the other is. And uh, you just get confused, but yeah, it's uh, a good place to start. The, it's um, like one of those things that's so well done that as you're like getting emotional over it, you're like, you have the cognitive like thought to be like, I shouldn't be getting like this emotional over a big fat fake guy who misses his Momo. Like, <laughs> but it's, yeah, he's great. I love the 40 K universe. I, I, I want to read more books of it. Like I, I need to find more good stuff. I I strongly suggest the Eisenhorn trilogy. The first one, Xenos, Malleus, and Hereticus. And the reason I tend to to do that is a lot of 40k books del- like just kind of devolve into bolter porn. It's very much like <laughs> chain swords and bolters and space marines saving the day, which and which is cool, like mm-hmm. when you're into it. But if you're not into it, it's like okay, but like where's <clears> the where's the story and where's the plot moving? Um Xenos, uh, so the he's an inquisitor and it makes it into like a detective story. And it's a his whole arc is like a detective noir story where he goes, he goes like deep into the he gets labeled a heretic and and some people like like him, some people hate him, but he's he's talking about like dealing with this galactic fucking power uh who's threatening everything called the king in yellow. And I won't reveal who it is, but the end of the most recent book that mentioned who the king in yellow probably is it's like one of the biggest fucking reveals that they've ever had (laughs) it's like it can't be this this cannot be the answer because this throws everything into question so that's going to be awesome uh but yeah the the eisenhorn books are really good abnett's great writer and it it brings in enough like well here's some space marines here's some eldar here's some of this here's some of that like sprinkled throughout the story where you're not being overwhelmed by this is just space Marines versus orcs in one of the battle novels, uh, which Mm -hmm. I love those too, but uh, this one's, it's a lot more intricate and kind of eases you into the universe in my opinion, really well. Yeah. I'm, I'm a lot more interested in the lore and the history of like all the different factions and everything than I am. in just like, I guess what you call the fight novel, yeah, and that was what was good about Krieg is that there was I mean, there's a fuck ton of fighting in these books, but like mm-hmm. it was equally about like, you know, kind of the A.B. storyline of like you got the origin of the Krieg. You got kind of the what they're doing. The origin now. of the Krieg is so cool. I, I I love that story that that ruthless sort of like just well, you develop you cost. develop infantry or not infantry. You develop a lot of empathy for the like infantry Krieg guys throughout it because they kind Do of you? start. I mean, I kept feeling bad for them. They felt like, fucking, that's used, a like, fucking like like shitty life. Death is a blessing, right? It's it's like yeah. every time one of them would die. You not feel bad for, for someone who thinks that death is like a blessing. Well, I mean, I guess their world is fucking. They never take horrid. that fucking mask off again. They're, they're never going home. They need their breath bad. Home. Oh, their breath. They have to be so much acne. Like, like, you don't get to <laughs> yeah. take that shit off, dude. <laughs> like like what when you're when you're sixteen, you fucking like eat a greasy potato chip. Your mouth breaks out. He's been wearing that mask his whole goddamn life. Oh and now God. it's too late. It's like when you wear a coat over your t-shirt and you wear it inside too long and now you've sweat and you can't mm. take your coat off or people are going to see you sweat on your t-shirt and so the decision's been made. You have to take off that coat quicker. You know how, yep. how like that... Uh, I, I, that I can't... Re- I, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't relate to being, you know, all sweaty. Yeah, well, sometimes like sometimes your weight fluctuates wildly. And sometimes... <laughs> sometimes sometimes you eat pizza four <laughs> times a week. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you, you binge eat every night. <laughs> no. no. I've been good do on Do not that. do that. Not doing it. No. Well, sometimes I do, but I'm fucking way better at it than I was. I, I, Dude, for I me, really... it's when I'm when I'm doing the live streaming of the trials. Like I've been doing one now for the past like three weeks, and uh, you sit there for like ten hours a day just watching this boring ass trial, and there's there's nothing to do. So you're just like, well, give me a bag of chips or something. Yeah. <laughs> like so I'm I'm fucking bored, but I'm stuck here waiting for anything to happen. Just mm-hmm. oh god, it's the worst. 
You ever uh, eat so many salty snacks that your mouth starts to hurt, but you keep eating? What the fuck? Yeah. Or like you like you like make your tongue raw from the amount of like Cheez Its or Goldfish or chips, but like you, you just keep compulsively uh, eating them. I get that. Lots from of people nerds, empathize. Nerds and sweet tarts and and like uh and fucking Smarties and stuff. It's like oh, you get like a bunch of those little rolls of Smarties, like unroll all of them and you're <laughs> eating, and then your mouth is just shredded from all the fucking sugar. <laughs> it sucks all the water out of your mouth. It's that oh. acid. It's the it's the yeah. uh, it's the yeah, citric it's acid that's in there making those things sour. I was yeah. I loved those uh the warheads uh candies as a oh, kid. Yeah. Those little, <laughs> those little uh sour fucking things. They were so I, I can my mouth is like puckering up now thinking about eating. What was the best yep. color? Oh, I don't know. I probably yellow or yeah, something. Yeah. I, I, Correct. I'm I, it's been a long time. <laughs> we were obsessed with these um these lollipops that were like gourmet lollipops and they came in like 80 flavors, but they came in like strawberry cheesecake and stuff and they would come to school and do these fundraisers and sell for 50 cheese. cents. Oh, I know those things. Yeah, I remember <laughs> Dude, those. You could make a such a goddamn kill and sell those things cuz we were just emptying our pockets. I was like going through my dad's change to to like buy lollipops at school because they were so fucking good. They're they like were, 50 cents a piece back yeah. in the 90s. 95. 1995. <laughs> 50 cents a sucker. Yeah. Be like the eight dollars a Give piece me seven. <laughs> 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 I remember exactly because the Braves just had won the fucking World Series and we were outside Mrs. Davis's music class and uh, she was hawking those, uh, those lollipops, that bitch. <laughs> that bit, well, it sounds like he liked the lollipops. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I mean, she could have cut us a deal. Sold them you know what? Here's the, had happy here's the best, customers, bitch. Here's yeah. the best hustle I ever saw. Here's the best hustle I ever saw. Um, this kid would sell cinnamon toothpicks in elementary mm. school. And I don't know how you make them, but I think you just soak toothpicks in like a cinnamon water sort of like mixture, and they turn sort of red, and they taste like um, big red know, gum. like cinnamon, big red gum, exactly, yeah. and. What do you want? A quarter piece? Let's go. That's <laughs> quarter a quarter piece. Right there, man. Fucking toothpick. Yeah, your kids at the snack line, right? So, like, that's the minimum. There ain't no 10 cent snacks. Wait, they... I mean, I guess maybe there were. Yeah, maybe back then there were. We'd have bake sales too. I'm remembering elementary school now where, like, every, like maybe one day a week, there'd be this huge bake sale where um, they just, like, ring all the kids out for all their pocket money selling brownies and shit. Every uh, just week you had a bake sale? Not every week, but like maybe every month, every six weeks or something. Oh, they, I, I can remember they'd line tables up outside full of like homemade <laughs> baked goods and candies and, and, and stuff. And and we would just gorge ourselves on however many brownies we could buy. Cookies Dude, for, or whatever, cake. For <laughs> us, is, it was the, uh, the, the special education, the special needs education kids would uh, – Every Tuesday, they would bake chocolate chip cookies and sell them at the mid-morning break in high school. So you go to your first class and then your second class. And then instead of having five minutes between classes, your second and third, you had 15. And it was, I swear, it was just so the special needs kid could sell fucking cookies. And they come out with these trays of these gooey, soft chocolate chip cookies. And they people just line up and buy them. It's like, God, this is brilliant. <laughs> like this right when you're the hungriest kids and you know that lunch is two hours away you're fucked you just it, mm. like remembering all this stuff from school and like the the bake sale reminds me of when i was a junior in high school there was this like they had this like bullshit like cult like if you were in spanish or spanish two or whatever it was like culture day and it was meant to be one of those things where like an easy grade boost where they're like, all right, we're going to, you, you get assigned a South American country and you have to bring like a dish from that or something. And everyone just did like boilerplate bullshit, like Mexican tortilla chips and Mexican street corn, like tacos, like all of it was very normal stuff. And there was this one bit of a, a weirdo. He was a senior, a year older than me. And he was a very popular, like he was a popular kid. Like, like state champion wrestler, like, or, or like in the top couple, like very, very good, like very popular. Like, and so you wouldn't have expected this from him. And he got assigned Peru or Brazil or something. And this motherfucker went to Petco and bought a guinea pig. No, because in Peru, they eat guinea pigs and he <laughs> murdered skinned and cleaned and then brought a guinea pig dish to school to feed his <laughs> classmates this doesn't happen in New and Jersey. as soon as it like got wind 
that like because he was telling people laughing he's like yeah i got a guinea pig and i remember people being like <laughs> did you fucking hear what jared did <laughs> he went to fucking petco and killed the guinea pig for this and we were like dude this is be like I get he's like, it's kind of funny, but this is fucked up, dude. Like, <laughs> I can't believe like, he slaughtered a guinea pig. He slaughtered a guinea pig as soon as Miss, uh, who was Miss Johnson or whoever it was, like, heard about that. She, like, came in, confiscated the food. So the death was in vain. And, Bitch. <laughs> uh, and, and, like, if anything, let the people eat the food. Like, so his death wasn't in vain. But yeah, he, he did get mm-hmm. in trouble for, I guess, I guess it's illegal to go to Petco and buy something for the purpose of slaughtering it and creating food. Uh, are you going to call the FDA? Fucking yeah, mistake. what are you going to do, How is that illegal? Yeah, well, I don't when know. I bought it, I wasn't you know going to eat it. I, this asshole. is perfect. We have an attorney here. This was some <laughs> bullshit some teacher told me, and I've been buying it. Yeah, of right? course it's not illegal to buy a guinea pig and eat it. I'm we have the <laughs> FBI running DNA tests on the poo bandit right now. You believe everything those fucks tell you? <laughs> uh, I'm a true fool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't, like, why well, you can't go to, you can't go to PetSmart and buy a buy an animal to eat why the fuck not like it could be animal just... cruelty he killed it with a shovel <laughs> oh yeah that one. i mean i don't even I know mean, how are, what's the proper method yeah how how it, did he shovel thing. it to death did he I, smash I it this, with a shovel you, you strangle it while you look in its so, eyes so so when you when you read um the the proper methods <laughs> they, they use a very they, they use a bit of legalese to describe hitting something in the head hard or removing mm-hmm. the head from the body like, yeah oh, or they'll also use um, oftentimes um, CO two um, is, is a is a fair way to 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 neutralize livestock for those it. purposes. So if you if you did any of that stuff, you get around it. I know I know I've seen some of that paperwork, and it's like, yeah, <laughs> I'm looking at pictures. Yeah, we of this just hit dish. them in the head. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys seen this shit? It's amazing. It's a little fried guinea pig. It's the whole damn thing, but it looks like a piece yeah. of chicken. It's like they love it in Peru. I just checked. It's <laughs> Peru. How do you yeah, eat it? It's called like, kui. You... It's deep fried. Yeah. Oh. Or roasted. I did uh, not try any. They still I kind of wanted like Chinese there. food, like little pieces of meat, like in Chinese, like a stir fry, you know, some veggies and peanuts or something in there too. Yeah. He he didn't Cashews. leave it on the body. He made it. <laughs> oh, fuck off. <laughs> oh, That's fuck how that. it looks. That is not how it looks. That, that has not... ears. That's that has every ears. Picture. That's, That's every ears. picture. I'm not even joking. <laughs> Bro, it has That's ears. That's uh, big. Its last thought was, ah! Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> is this fucking for real? I thought it was a joke. Okay, that, that, one, Taylor, Taylor, that one's real. This is not okay, a joke. Taylor, no, Taylor, this, this, is, this actually like. does not look like a joke. But like, what he he did not cook it like this. He like did almost like like pulled chickenish kind of looking stuff. That's why oh, that's they so didn't immediately. Better. They didn't immediately know. That he used, well, of course uh, you don't just bring pig. the carcass in like until he bragged kind of, about it. Look, look, I, I don't want a dog on it. Peru was it? Peru, yeah, yeah. Mm. That they're gonna have to work on that one. They're gonna, it's I mean, almost I mean, as bad it, as look, eating. If dogs. you're national, I'm okay with your national dish being rat, but y'all got to figure out a better way to prepare that shit. That is fucking disgusting. It's, it's got teeth. They've stick. all got teeth. You, what would you feel better if they pulled the teeth out, Taylor? Yes, they cut the heads off and turn it into chicken and make something nice. Dude, oh, who gets my rat head then? I'm not pay- paying full price. Dude, I'll trade you my rat head any day of the week. Who's the scoundrel running off with my rat head? I'm over here paying 89 euro or whatever. You know that there's some, like, old grandfather in Peru who, like, swears I, that the teeth the are the best part. Yeah. Get the heads! The same way, like, like my grandpa, who was fucking in poverty on a farm, like, he still maintains that, like, pig feet are so, so delicious. Which I mean, is, I don't the, want to try that. I'm sure it's I mean, fine. Look, all, it's that, all that connected tissue when you put it down with is very savory. Guinea pig. <laughs> That's a restaurant. <laughs> yeah, it's a restaurant in Peru. Everything Dude, they're guinea pig. It's Can't even bother to like Photoshop the hat. Well, <laughs> no, it's like one of those Andes mountain caps. Like, like, oh man. Dude, there is a very specific but somehow difficult to articulate aesthetic to south american photoshopped ads <laughs> do you know what i mean there's something about it if i were playing geo guesser and there was a south american ad i it's because they're still really ah, into i can tell you tried medium yeah he's trying <laughs> <laughs> that shit is so, so gross bad. you should not eat guinea pigs uh, I, I wouldn't mind eating that at all uh you I, go I to honestly... yeah go to the the Go down to Peru and you can just get it. It's all over the place. It's apparently very good. That's what everybody says. Yeah. I bet it's good I bet for it you. Is good, but as long as there's not like, like, come on, get take the fucking teeth out of there. Well, you don't eat the teeth. Then get rid of them. Look, uh, uh, 
what if someone said that about crab? Like, Jesus, get it out of that fucking big cockroach first Damn, and put it on a platter for me. All right, check check in, mate. You're true. You're right. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, the way, a lot of the ways I'm seeing is they shove a stick through the mouth of the guinea pig and they roast it mm-hmm. on the stick. So that you know, you just like yeah. that's how I would like an ear of corn. It. Yeah, yeah, you eat like an ear of corn. Ear of corn. Ah, I got spine. You know, ah. you know, you know that like dudes are like, how many you want? Two or three. You know that's the kind. Of, it's like chili dogs. There, they're like, Obviously, like how many? You wouldn't just eat one if you're going to eat it. And I bet there's a restaurant that 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 has their own little spin where it's like, ah, we cook the little ones. You get a sack full. That's how we get them. Like like instead of crystal or yeah. uh, or uh, Jack in the Box, they say it's like like, like the rats. veal version. They oh, just that's hold. It. <laughs> little jalapeno rat poppers, but it's the little pink rats that you have just been, hold like, a pregnant guinea pig over a vat of grease and squeeze. All right, well, just, I hate that idea. Like fifty-five, oh, you know, milliseconds of now. life before you fall in. Well, I don't want to eat. I, I think I'd eat it. I think I'd be okay with it. I don't mind. I, I'm I'm up for most things. Would um, you eat I, I don't... Uh, b- that that Filipino thing balut where they let the no, the the, the chick oh, start gross, to develop man. in the egg? It's a duck embryo yes yeah yeah that's yeah. that's disgusting you know when you see like cultures with delicacies like that and you can objectively say like that's wrong that's not good there's no way that's really? tasty they just didn't figure out better flavored eggs they, they could have done anything whole. Else. that's the thing that like bothers me it's got like, little like, bones in it there's little yeah, bones crunch in through there. it but they're um they're i hear they're like cartilage the bones like they don't yeah hurt. but still woody you know like, like it's, it's skull and it's brains and it's, it's got eyeballs, a it's got a little like... beak that's like barely chewable i bet just chewable enough that you know exactly oh, when you bite it can you beak. imagine some glutton with a little with a whole pile of baby duck beaks on his plate <laughs> <laughs> like you walk i walk by to take that away as a server and i stab him in the throat with a serving knife <laughs> like, this guy's i gotta get you off the earth you abominable monster you hitler of ducks you rip them out of that, like... hitler of ducks. <laughs> i'm <laughs> reading about this uh, I'm reading about this kui, which is the, the guinea pig dish mm-hmm. from this person. I think they may be a serial killer. So it says, uh, <laughs> inside the kui, incredibly, it's not like pork either. I can only think of something super juicy and rich like quail. It's obvious this is not your average fattened farm meat flavor. Finally, getting into the parts slightly further from the belly, the skin is more chewy, and you have to really pull hard to rip off pieces. It's fun. All right, he does make it sound fun. <laughs> it's, it's fun is where you go with that. That's it's kind of like crab. I enjoy eating crab like that. We gotta but take a look at that if, guy. if crab had like emotive mm-hmm. eyes, like if I knew what color a crab's eyes were, I, it would be harder to do that. The guy who wrote that has a scar across his eyes. Like, like he's got one of those James Bond <laughs> was, stars <laughs> and a milky eye. He looks like Mads Mikkelsen, <laughs> fucking fucking sitting there with a Nazi hairdo, talking about how much fun it is to eat. What, Jacking what off. Oh my god, that sounds so awful. Oh, speaking of, well, not of jacking off. I was just thinking of um, Bill Cosby. You know, <laughs> well, right. let's stick oh, to you're jacking off. Bill Cosby yeah, and jacking you're off. Right That's nice. You know, he has started his comedy tour. I heard. I, I, I like. Ooh. I think he's going like, I think he's touring and doing stand up comedy. I, I think I have that right. I'm gonna go. Is he? Does he do a <laughs> bit? Does he have a bit about like him going to prison? He. I guarantee he has a bit about going to prison. Um, I don't know, but I'm fascinated and I do want to see it. Even if I just see a recording of it, I, I won't be satisfied until I do see it. You know who's on the other end of that spectrum? Fucking Roseanne Barr just released a, uh, a little, her, her like comeback special or she's, it's the most. I've never watched her comedy. I I don't know anything about her. I never what happened with her was kind of a bum rap, right? Because, because you know, she, she tweeted out that racist shit that she shouldn't have tweeted um, after um, some Ambien, I think maybe was her uh, her excuse on that one. That one didn't fly. Mm-hmm. And then they fired her from her own goddamn show, from the like, highest like, rated show on Netflix at the time. My, I, I don't think it was. It was the comedy. No, it was it was, was enormous. Netflix. Is that this is a Netflix show though, right? That's oh, like ABC like or CBS, CBS, I think. Yeah, yeah, I it's, it it's on one of those two. Too. I, anyway, um, and, and you know that's her thing though. It 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 that's her thing, and Stand for them up. the. No, that show, The Connors, oh, the, the remake show that's based on Roseanne. Um, she shouldn't have said that shit, but I never like it. I didn't like that they yeah, took the shit. She shouldn't have been fired kept, for that. That's like, they're still making that show is, what I, is, is the problem. Like, like, I feel bad that they're still making that show, um, but I saw some of her like stand-up comedy, and it's real bad. It's real bad. Yeah. She's like, She's got some like bit about like how the liberals don't know what a woman is, and she's like, I'm a woman. A woman is me. 
and it's like jesus it's like my grandma's yelling at me from the grave it's like you gotta be funny the points are a lot less important that's the worst part about stand-up comedy now pick a random special on stand-up or on netflix and just start watching it borderline 100 percent of these people now listen to the audience and what percentage are laughs compared to claps because you watch a special from 12 years ago and there aren't big clap breaks where it's like, I agree, but this isn't funny. Like now there's so much of that shit where they'll be like telling a joke as a way to like, as an aside, isn't this fucking crazy? Eh? Like, and it's like, shut the fuck up. Like stop playing for applause breaks. Stop saying things that just try and get the audience to agree with you. Like stand up fucking sucks now. It does. You know, it's I hadn't terrible. thought about that, but I, I feel like you're right. Like you're onto yeah. something now. Now people are just, they're excited about the part where the comedian says something that they think too. Yeah. yeah. And it's like the way they carefully hedge now, like I'm sure you guys have noticed in comedy, like the way these edgy comedians, they used to go, women be like women doing this. Now it's all very carefully white women, white women do this, white women. Do, and it's like, stop pretending like you're being edgy with this shit. You're talking about women, but you're prefacing the statement by saying white women. So in case people come after you, you can go, no, no, no. I was making fun of white people. It's okay. It's like, just, just tell your joke. Stop hedging. Just that like little, it's impossible not to notice shit like that. The mm. only good, and I hate giving them any praise at all, but there is a segment on Saturday night live right now. That's oh, actually so pretty funny. You know what I'm talking about? It's where oh, the, yeah, of it's course. the black guy and the white guy write each other's jokes. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. And they get away with the worst shit. It is <laughs> a good so idea. Fucking funny. He's like, yeah, Warner brothers is creating a new, uh, show, a new Superman movie. And where Superman is black. It's called <laughs> man of steel spelled S T E A L. It's like, Oh Jesus. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's, uh, that's a great line. Like, yeah. Yeah. And it's I, like that. I, yeah. You used to be able to just tell that joke, but now you have to cage it with the black guy wrote it and smirks at the white guy who is uncomfortable saying it. But it is still a funny segment like that. Yeah. That segment would have been funny 20 years ago when you didn't need to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's still funny now. I do. I do got to give him credit for it because I, I watch those pop up in like my shorts feed all the time and I will watch the shit out of those. Yeah, I like those, too. They're very good. Uh, weekend update has always been one of their stronger, like, like, uh, I, it's not man. really a skit. It's just a, it's just a good uh, segment, a good, good way to to set things up. It's it's made for uh for funny. I've always liked it. Going back to like Chevy Chase, yeah, I, I remember that one with uh, you can, and Jane. Uh, what's her name? Did they always put their strongest people on it too? Because I, I can hardly remember a host that I thought really sucked in a weekend update. I. I don't know how they like got, gave that job to people like like I, you would think it would be something that was either you'd have to want that and like be like yeah could, would you consider me to do the weekend update like I don't know I don't think everybody wants that gig that's a very specific thing hmm. yeah I've always liked it though you guys want to call it a show yeah, yeah. I think so uh, yeah yeah I gotta run Nick where can everybody find every piece of your content <laughs> wherever you are just type in Ricada Law. If you're on Twitch, I'm there. If you're on YouTube, I'm there. I'm on Rumble the most. Uh, I have a Locals page as well. You can technically find me on Patreon, I think. I don't do anything over there. But I guess if you want to just give me money that exists, don't. Don't go to Patreon. It's, it's there, but don't go. Yes. Um, but yeah, any any platform, Twitter uh, as well. Um, What's Rumble? Just there. Rumble is, uh, it, well, it's, it's a live streaming and video platform like YouTube. Uh, oh, okay. That is, that is out there started by a whole bunch of people. I don't know. And uh, it's a nice place where there's free speech. You can say I like, I, I like even, it's made by a whole bunch of people. I don't know anything about them. Probably good yeah. people. Who not, Who's to say, though, you know, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and uh, well, I don't want to say the wrong people. You know, it's like, yeah. I don't know. It's made by the Jews. I, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> no, you can you can say basically whatever you want over there. It's it's one of the last places where there is truly free speech. Uh well, uh, within within as much limit as there is on the internet. My observation is they all start free, and then the rules creep in because they one problem after another prevents it. My hope for Rumble is uh, when they started, they were a Canadian company, and because Canada put the rules uh, around transgender um, transgender related speech, uh, they decided to move to Florida. Uh, they moved the entire operation to Florida. Actually, I think they've got uh, they're opening their 
their home office in Florida in just uh, about a week here. And so they said, we have to move somewhere where we can respect free speech more because they had to have rules against transgender hate speech on the platform per the Canadian government to exist as a business. So they said, we're moving, we're moving operations. And then uh, the people who wrote their new terms of service are the lawyers uh, Viva Fry and Robert Barnes. Some people may know them. If you like hover around in, in my legal circles, you'll have met them. They're, they're guys who believe in the constitution, believe in freedom uh, and really, really are, are strong on, on things like the first amendment. So um, I have hope for the platform, but Woody, you're not wrong. That's what usually <laughs> happens is it's, it's like, Oh, it's free. Well, until the advertisers come in and then it's not as free anymore. But um so mm -hmm. far, I've said all sorts of horrifically offensive shit, and they haven't even batted an eye. So, uh, Good. All my, uh, every video <laughs> is monetized, gonna, and I've never been talked to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, YouTube, I guess, with the free speech, but I was also thinking along. You could put music to your shit. You could real songs like ACDC, didn't matter whatever was current, Drake. You could just upload. We'll start doing the show over yeah. there. We'll just have like a low playing Beatles track. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, right. What I, care. Now they care a lot. what I really like is a lot of times I go through a video or you go through something and you're going to do a ton of commentary on it. Like it's going to be clearly transformative, fair use. But on YouTube, their algorithm is going to flag it and take it down anyway. It's going to knock you mm -hmm. out for like. It's going to knock your video out for the, the critical first 48 hours or 72 hours. And then you, oh, it comes back later and then nobody watches it. None of that stuff happens on Rumble. Um, you can just freely do stuff. I mean, copyright law still applies, but they have to do it the old fashioned way, the real way that copyright law is supposed to work. That you don't get this preemptive <clears throat> strike on your, uh, on your content because there was a robot that listened to it. So I, that's what I like. On one, I know it's time to wrap. On one hand, it really frustrates me that YouTube doesn't have humans making like more rational decisions. It's just bots that you try to trick or whatever. On the other hand, I know YouTube doesn't make money and they have to automate as much as they can. And I've heard stats about like the ridiculous, like five years of content every minute gets uploaded to YouTube. I just made that up, but it's probably close-ish. Yeah, it's a ton. So uh, they need bots to do this. They oh, can't. yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I think I actually read 48 <clears throat> hours a minute. Wow. Yeah, so that's a lot to watch. All right. Well, buy our cum pills and uh, yeah. um, have a, have <laughs> check a out Nick's stuff. PKA 635. In the... <laughs>